It is 8 p.m. in New York. Freaking Wayne's World over there. I know. 8 p.m. in New York. This is the 25 hours of the 24 hours of Le Mans live stream a thon here on the Drive Network, youtube.com slash drive, as well as the front page of YouTube for the next seven hours, I do believe. Um, if you want to contact us, we have a chat, as well as uh, Twitter, twitter.com slash drive, or on Facebook, facebook.com slash drive TV. <sighs> I'm Jeff Musial, Leo Parente. We are going through the night at Le Mans. It's, uh, and we have Mike Musto. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Yeah, we've got Mike Musto on the line. Mike, say hi for the fans. Yo, how's everybody doing? Uh, I so wish we, I was there, not in California for once. <laughs> we, uh, we just witnessed the number 73 Corvette in the wall. Let's go through a rundown of everything that's happened in the race. I think it's time for that time. I think it's time for that time. And, and I'm going to uh, start with the easy one. With cor with uh, start. You want to start with the Toyota crash at the top? One. Oh, we're, we're going to recap the whole thing. Start there. I can't believe the vets. We got. We got nothing wow. but time to burn right now. Wow. So. Okay. So, LMP one. Toyota versus Audi. Yep. Four cars versus two. Yep. Two hybrids versus two hybrid Toyotas. And it looked like a heads up battle. Uh, the lap times were showing competition. They were all running in that top three, four. Mm -hmm. And then in the six-hour mark, Anthony Davison in the Toyota Hybrid. Yep. Molson straightaway, high speed, coming to the kink before the brake zone for the hairpin, tangled with a slower GT Ferrari. Very similar to last year's Rockefeller scenario where the two cars came together as they were at full chat. And this time, it, um, it was a big enough impact that it separated one of the tires from Davison's Toyota, mm -hmm. the rear tire. But it turned the car enough that fins and aerodynamic holes over the fenders are not. The car went airborne, flipped, did a full rotation, landed back on its wheels, and impacted the tire wall slash armco, armco barrier. Yep. They both hit. But Davidson went in pretty much front three quarters, a little bit of side impact at a very, very high speed. Definitely 100 plus, 120, 150 maybe, maybe. miles per hour. Side impact, no less. Yeah. Um, the Ferrari hit and did a, uh, a rotation like McNish did last year yep. and landed on its roof. Both drivers eventually got out of their cars. The Ferrari drivers seemed to be more okay. They took Davidson to the hospital for a checkup. He had complained of some pain and then as it turns out, Mike found that the, the Twitter feed that showed that he was saying he has a broken back. And very similar, unfortunately, to the testing accident we saw with Audi at Sebring, yeah. where Timo? Timo Bernhard went in and, uh, very hard at turn 17 after a wheel dislodged from the side of the cross. Same thing. So the, uh, the car protects the driver, but to, to only some extent. That reduced Toyota's challenge to one car. But then mechanical problems for the remaining number seven Toyota yep. turned this into a, uh, a showcase for, for Audi. Yeah. They're running one, two, three. Well, before that, the, the, the seven car actually was involved in another incident with the Delta Wing. Oh, uh, oh, yes. And, uh, Sorry, the, you're right. That was the incident that put the Delta Wing out of the race. So if we, if we segue to that, on the restart uh, from Davidson's crash, all yep. the cars were grouped. Yep. The two Audis were leading, e-tron and an ultra, chased very close, right behind by the Toyota. They were working their way through traffic, GT traffic, and as it turns out, Delta traffic. And the last part of the Porsche curves, as they're getting toward the start finish, the Toyota was being very aggressive, appropriately aggressive, to make a move that was there for the second place and the Audi against the Audi, but did not see apparently the Delta hit the Delta. It basically dodgeballed off the track, hit mm -hmm. the tire wall, mm -hmm. hit the hard wall, and uh, the driver Moriyama, if I'm pronouncing that yeah, right, I think so. Yeah, was apparently from reports working very very hard to repair the car to get it back to pit lane. Suspension front and rear was damaged, and that led to the retirement of the Delta. And then we had uh, the Flying Lizard car, the number 80 Pro car, uh, went off as well. And they're out of the race at this point? Lizards have had a tough time. The yeah. amateur car was in one of the Mulsanne chicanes, and one of the earlier Audis came up on it and almost felt it was brake checked, fell off into the marbles, and went into the tire wall, and the yeah. driver of one of the drivers of the day yeah. was uh, getting out of the car. Romain Dumas. Romain Dumas, and he was karate kicking the fenders of the R18 off the car. Yep. 
to get the car rolling again and back to pit lane for it's awesome. repair. It's awesome. Um, one of the suspension sides was, was damaged, so he basically the kicked the car apart to yeah, get it rolling. for you guys when you get a moment. So, yeah, one second, Mike. Drove it with half the steering and got back and is back in competition. I don't think it's one of the uh, top three cars, but it is uh, four Audis is still running. Yep, and I just got word that the number 24 Morgan is gone. Oh. DNF. DNF. It looked like in the he night went, it went into the tire wall. Yeah, the tire wall did it. Did it did him in. Um, Musto, what were you going to say? So, really quick, it, it, is there, you know, when these guys run on Le Mans, you've got so many different classes between the, you know, the LMP1 to, uh, you know, and the GT classes. Is there any animosity between the guys and, say, the prototype cars and the LMP1 cars against the slower drivers, or do they find it difficult to get around them, or, or how does that generally work? It, it becomes an individual thing. Everyone recognizes the sport having the different classes, but if a driver repeatedly uh, violates the code of what a slower car should be doing, or violates the code as a faster car being too aggressive and too arrogant, you remember that. But it's not so much the fact that we're racing together or the class or a team. Uh, it becomes driver to driver. Uh, watching the number 51 Ferrari 458 Italia Fisichella in the AF Corsa leading long run on tires right now. They've only pitted nine times. It's the least amount in the entire category. Really pushing the limits of that car. The best lap time is a 56, 356.9. Um, only comparable time would be the 73 Corvette in third position, um, which is running uh, relatively the same lap times. That's a good observation there. They're, they're clearly doing something with their pit strategy to try to maintain the lead. It looks like someone just went off in the first chicane. It looked like a Ferrari 458. Uh, a lot of smoke. A lot of smoke. Oh, that was into Mulsan. Looks like maybe just a brake lockup from uh, one of the Ferraris in front of the R18 right there. Uh, oh, no, that's an Aston Martin. Okay, I think we recapped everything we could. Uh, I'm going to go to sleep. No, I'm just now, kidding. guys, max speed. Are they, are they nudging the 200 mile an hour barrier here? Yeah, it looks straight? like the, the R18s are most certainly nudging 200 at the end of the Mulsanne. 51 is in the pits. Uh, just went in the pits quickly. Yeah, I, I, I should look. I'd be shocked if they're not over 200. Very interesting to see everything going on right now. Um, Aston Martin was really strong out of the gate, now down to fourth. Uh, only about two laps down in GT, which is not that bad when you consider everything. Uh, just saw one of the LMP2 cars go off in the, uh, right, right after uh, the Ford corner. Well, it's night, no rain. That's a change for Lamar. I've been, from that standpoint, we've been, <laughs> look at the lights on that. Yeah. We've been lucky this, this race so far. Yeah. Well, we had rain at the top of the, uh, top of the, the first hour during the start, but now it looks all good. Oh, man, I wish I was there. That was cool. The I night. You, I wish you were there, too. Uh, thank you, Alex. Alex, you want to get up here? Sure. Uh, Am I on camera? <laughs> Do they see that? Uh, I so, love the look you just gave so me. So now paybacks are going to be up. <laughs> <laughs> Telemetry is showing 318 kilometers an hour, 197 miles an hour, Musto. Um, looks like they're, they're topping uh, 200 sometimes. But I think the gearing limits that a little bit. Gotcha. Okay. So. Bless you. So which, car, which Corvette racing is this in the pits where they're working on the air restrictors? I'm not too sure. If anyone wants to follow on what we're doing, the official ACO feed is no, live. Question. How many speed trainees are they running? Sorry, what was that, Musto? How many gears are they running? How many, what's the, how many speeds in the trainees? Uh, in the R18s? Yeah. 
I do believe it is a six speed. Six speed. Gotcha. Um, if you want to follow along, live.lamont-tv.com. You've got the feed, uh, as well as live timing and scoring. Alex, got a lav on? No, I brought the lav. Catching up on the comments, uh, I'm not sure what you mean, we do see it, Leo. I wonder what that was. Um, no, Ford does not have any cars in this race. No private entries. Nothing to my, to my I think knowledge. the 74 is in the garage now. 74 uh, Corvette. Corvette. Yeah. I would hate to see that race fall apart for them, but. They're running strong. Very strong. So that must be the car they're working on, the restrictors. Yeah. And then someone said a, a Ferrari crashed. Wouldn't it be cool if it was just an actual 73 Corvette? <laughs> I know you love that. You I know, know. In the comments, it was stated that Musto will obviously ask whether you can enter vintage cars. <laughs> it's all you. Are you letting me sit here now? Yeah. I, did you put a lava? Not yet, but I need one. But you'll notice I brought a girth concealment shirt. There's no girth involved. It's a two-layer it gets on camera. process, much like the you know, the outfits worn in the race. So um, you're going to have to translate to Mike because he can't hear me. But so if you two had your choice of driving a car at Le Mans, which cars would each of you pick to race at Le Mans? Uh, Mike. Yeah, yeah, you, no, have you have to, to tell him. Into the what? I can hear you, but you're breaking up. Put the oh. lava on. Can I have a lava, please? Yes, yeah, I, I just put it in front of you. All right. Hold on a second. Hold on a moment. <laughs> well, what's happening here? What's we're, happening? Wait, we're waiting on you. Okay. I mean, if I could drive any car, it would probably be the VET or the, uh, the Delta Wing. <laughs> no. And if you, you had any chance to drive anything of any generation, forget competitiveness or not, how far back would you go? What would you drive? What would you like? Oh, pro probably one of the Ferraris from back in the early 60s, I think. Wow, Michael, you, you, you surprised me. I, I didn't know you'd go that, uh, that direction with the whole Ferrari thing. You know, I, I like old school cars, man. I like cars that have like six moving parts. <laughs> All right, Mike, can you hear me now? Yeah, but you've got such a delay, JF, and I'm, I'm literally catching every third word. Yeah, go ahead. Mustard, can you hear me now? Now I can hear you. Okay. I'm getting like I'm getting like four words, and then I'm getting. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question. And I'm gonna hang, and then I'm putting you back on speaker so you can answer it. Okay. I'd love it. All right. Uh, if you were a real man, why would you not be driving, say, a Porsche 908 or 917? Speaker because phone. It, also, thank God you're not here to break my arm. Here we go. <laughs> because it's 6'4", 250 pounds. There's no way my big ass would fit in that car. I see. Um, Does that work? Yeah, I guess that answers it. I'd have to say I would definitely pick a Porsche 917 over anything else. Steve McQueen drove it. That means men drove it. And everything else is a lady boy car. <laughs> I, I, I know that what you just said, and, and I couldn't hear you just us. said, um, I just broke your arm. <laughs> I would never say that to you. Come on, bud. What a sweet guy. He said he would never say that to me. Um, uh, how, how, what's the best way to do this? Ask him a question. Put the phone on speaker. <laughs> All right, what's the question? I'm going to ask. Well, if you're not going to respond, then... Because I'm actually I I'm know. seeing you in a time delay by like 12 okay, seconds. Okay, so here's, uh, here's my question. All right, hang on. I'm going to give you Leo's question. Shoot, you got okay. it. Okay, so Delta Wing only has 300 horsepower. <laughs> a Delta Wing only has 300 horsepower, but hold your thought on arm braking. <laughs> Can you have a big muscle car with low horsepower like the Delta. 
how do you reconcile wanting to drive a big horsepower car with a low horsepower lady car like the Delta Wing? I didn't Hold say lady car. Speakerphone. It's just power to weight like anything else, man. You could put a 250 horsepower motor and, and something like Miata go out on the track and have a blast all day long. Thank you. Man enough to tell the truth. I like what I'm hearing from Musto. Musto, but let's talk. This, I feel like I'm on a submarine. It's like I can't see <laughs> yeah. the engine room. And the engine room Musto is always the guy who answers. <laughs> engine room Musto speaking. <laughs> In fact, you got to rename your show Engine Room. Nice. <laughs> engine Room, we hit an iceberg. What do we do now? <laughs> it's okay. We can survive the iceberg as long as we got the power rate ratio. So let's set that just right. That's um, all right. As long as we'll, do it, we'll do a joint episode between that and Roadfinger. So <laughs> he wants to do a joint episode between that and Roadfinger. <laughs> now, Musto, here's my question to you. All right, this Delta Wing thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, no matter how, how cool it, it looks and theory is, don't you think that it's not the best looking Delta Wing a Delta Wing could be? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'd love to see something. I mean, it looks just like something out of Battlestar Galactica. But it's... I like it because it gives, it'll give everybody out there ideas, and it'll start sparking imagination. It'll be cool, you know? Okay, wait a second. You just raised a really interesting issue, because it does look like a Colonial Viper, but Absolutely. somewhere like between Gen 1 and Gen 2. But the, but if we're going to go down this road, all right? Oh, boy. And there was a book that recently came out called Area 51, where they were discussing all the different, you know, uh, theoretical... Um, flying vehicles you could have. And I read an article uh, with Gordon Murray talking about how if he was starting with a clean sheet design, it would look something like a train, but would be articulated like a caterpillar. And if it wasn't that, it would look like a flying saucer with just wheels, two in the one wheel in the back, and two in the back and one in the front about to take off. So is what you're really saying that a Cylon Raider is like the, the next generation competitor to the um, Delta Wing? Absolutely. In fact, if they brought the Delta Wing back and painted it like a Cylon Raider, it'd be the greatest thing ever. <laughs> Mike Musto, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else you want to ask the master? No, I, I think this is great. <laughs> Anyone else? Any questions? Alex, yeah. Alex, I just want to point out that they can hear him. Oh. No, but Leo <laughs> can. No, but when you... When you but <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure that Leo can hear what's happening. Which, I'm wearing my, my engine room naval great. shirt. I think it's great. I think this is perfect. Okay. Carry Anything on. else to ask Musto? I know you must have one more question. No, I don't. I need to relax and figure out what's going on for two hours. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, to be to be clear, oh. engine room. Um, I I had to go home and get um, uh, headphones and a pedal set for the Forza setup, and. Um, because you know what? That's my that's my value add. Okay. We well, flies. if you've got headphones, I've got a headphone. What's your name on Forza? Because I might have to chime in there. Oh well, are we friends? Are we? He wants to connect. He has he has Forza account. He wants to go head to head. There you go. So um, I'm um, Polizai Space A Roy. Um, so send me a friend request. And um, what's your handle? I can't. We shouldn't answer. It's key sensitive though, isn't it? It's it's real simple. It's the real with the angry. <laughs> okay. Hang on a second. Is that um? One, one uh, uppercase, lowercase, it's case sensitive, isn't it? I don't know what it is. I'm not even logged on to it yet. Okay. Well, then let me give you mine, because it's, mine's easier. All right. Shoot. It's capitalized, the word Pulitzer, all capitalized. Space, capital A, capital R, lowercase wow. O-Y. All right. When are you going on? When, when am I going to I'm logged in now. Um, so, uh, if you send me a friend request, I'll okay it, and then uh, I'll call you back and we can go head to head. This is going to be so disappointing for you. Okay, no problem. <laughs> <He just, laughs> I cannot believe what I was just told. Engine Room says, <laughs> Mike Engine Room Musto said, this will be so disappointing for me. <laughs> it's okay, I haven't played in a while, but that's not an excuse. I'll talk what are to you driving? Uh, well, I'm going to drive an Audi R18. Oh. Well, what did you think I was going to drive? I don't know. I thought maybe it'd be an M5 or something fun like no, that. No, no, we're, we're doing Le Mans. We're doing Le Mans, and we're sticking to Le Mans rules and the whole thing. Uh, all right, that's not fun. <laughs> okay, bye. There's a right, huge bye. delay. Good job. New segment. The segment's engine room. <laughs> that really is a great name. I love it. No one's used I love that it. before. I think my new, my new outfit has 
giving me a new lease on Lamont Coverage Life. That started to feel like Adam Carolla Love Line. <laughs> you don't like my shirt? I like your shirt. Yeah, you stay here. I'm going to drive your car in a minute. Okay. You, you don't expect me to cover this alone. I have no idea what's happening. Doing, I don't know anything about racing. Uh, yes, you do. That's BS. That's BS. Only what I learned from Shakedown. Here's apparently what you... I know. Here's what you need to know about racing. They're changing a lot of parts right about now. I, yeah. A ton of cars are coming in and out of the garage. A ton of repairs. The uh, There may not be rain at Lamar. There certainly seems to be mistakes happening in the dark. Tell me what happened with a Morgan car. But there's two Morgan cars. There's two Morgan cars. Let's let's check. One of them went into the tire wall and ended up resulting in a DNF even after it got back to the pips. And I may have lost the whole... No, here it is. Let's see if we got it. Maybe I'm going to grab this iPad cable. Sure. Oh, Mike is back. Hey, hi. I'm hi, back. Mike. Yeah, I had to close down Ford Man Boobs. Jay, why? What happened? Z zoning issues. Zoning issues. <laughs> but I'm sure you've got another. You know, you're getting very creative here today. I, you know, I, I'm, I, um, I really just need to defend this this area because I mean, there's nobody left over here. I mean, unless Alex comes happened? back. What happened? Everyone. No, I, I, you know, anyone is is can sit down here. I'm I'm fine with it. So, the uh, P2 class is having a ton of turnaround. Because now we've got a Honda in P1, same lap, followed by a Nissan. Am I talking too you, you, loud? No, the, echo, joke the echo is back, and the reason is don't that uh, something just happened. I don't know what the reason is. And suddenly all the Judds have fallen off the radar here. I know, um, especially Ashley. And all the more... <laughs> no, she's a, she's a camera hound. I'm surprised she's fallen off anything. Um, and I just the, lost who my... Who's the uh, sister? Yeah, I, you know, for the longest time, I didn't realize Ashley was part of the Judge singing family. I know she's the she's the non embarrassment. Are you serious? I swear to God, I didn't, you know, didn't that. know that. I did not. I kind of don't follow the Judd family. But you followed her um, in the Sarah Connor movie with Morgan Freeman, right? Which oh, it's fantastic. Which movie? Uh, all the, about the girl, uh, the girls. Uh, kiss the girls. Kiss the girls. Kiss the girls. Right? Kiss the girls. Yes, that's what it was. And what was the one where her husband is framed for murder? That's a dirty one. Uh, my husband is framed for murder, and I'm... Who framed Roger Rabbit? Who framed <laughs> I can't find a Morgan here on the, on the list. Are they no longer running? Wow, Echo really is becoming a problem. Is that what they said? Uh, it sounds fine. Um, no, now it's fine. Now it's fine. Yeah, I, uh, I, A... If anyone knows what happened to the Morgans, the second Morgan is either Morgan. I'm Wait a minute, Morgan Freeman and Ashley Judd? What a coincidence. Hmm. Oh. That was bad, that was bad. Look how long it took me to catch up. I'm just saying, I think, there's, I think there's a movie there. Oh, I th no, I thought you were talking about the car. I was. Morgan Judd. That's right. Okay. Kiss the girls. We were there. I'm oh, sorry. I, <laughs> Alex was already there. No, I've been. I'm sorry. I've been away too long in, in Fort Man boobs. I, I you stop bringing have it you up. Been, I haven't been with you people. Stop bringing long up like Nixon have, have you been monitoring? Happen. Have you been monitoring the comments? And do they want to talk about anything? Not what he just brought up. Well, let's put it this way. <laughs> uh, they. There's no chocolate in this. Have nothing. Well, they. Um, let me see here. By the way, well, that's the thing with, with, with something pieces. We can't say it, by the way. We can't say it because oh, it's really? a brand. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the something pieces, uh, you would think that it had chocolate and peanut butter. But that's always been the case. They're just peanut butter. So they're just sort of... This is not good. Well, there's no... Because you eat them with... You're supposed to eat them with M&Ms. Really? And then they're, then they're... You're supposed to mix them? Yeah. And by the way, isn't M&M a brand name? Didn't you just screw up? Well, we don't... We're not showing it here. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. And M&M's have become kind of generalized, They're like, like aspirin. Kleenex. Or aspirin. Like aspirin is a like generic. Like bare aspirin. Bare yeah. aspirin. Kleenex Alex, brand how much Kleenex. for that shirt? Uh, a lot of people are asking. Uh, we used to sell 22nd beer. place for Morgan, sorry. It's okay. I mean, uh, dare I say the shirt would be expensive. Alex, your four is a for real. It's working? Public? Public? Yeah. Yeah, just created it as a price. Did you create it as a public price? All right, guys, we're just minutes away from me testing the Forza setup. I would sell, you know, would you pay 50 bucks for this shirt? Let me know. 
in the comments now. <laughs> <laughs> Keep trying to dig up money for a dinner? Um, these shirts, by the way, I am... Um, do you have a supply of them? I do have a supply of these shirts. Mm. And um, I also have a supply of these patches, all customized. What I don't understand is why these racing teams sell such bad merchandise, you know? Um, I mean, it's a big money maker in I, Formula One. I had a, well, so, so I had a client in the design business that was all over that, oh my God, why is the racing apparel so boring? And, and two things seem to sell. If you sell 100% accurate, of a famous team, yeah. you can make money. Yeah. But if you sell something that has more fashion design, yeah. you make money too. Yeah. But you go down the midway of any of these races, yeah. it's the most horrific stuff I've ever oh. seen. Oh. By the way, speaking of um, horrific stuff, horrific stuff. <laughs> the Drive TV t-shirt. You know? <laughs> no, I, no, I just want to promote the Drive t-shirt with... Um, hold, with it above, hold it above the boob so we can read it. boob inserts. <laughs> That's what these... It's actually boob inserts. I actually weigh 115 pounds. This is an entirely that is heavy inside. Cotton. That is a heavy. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah. they're uh, it's all sewn in. <laughs> Twelve bucks. Twelve. By the way, 12, 12 bucks? bucks for these shirts. One. Well, my how, shirt, do we, how do we get them, John? This shirt how, how would be we? about seventy-five dollars. So that's two dollars a font. Over two dollars a font. Exactly. Wait a Not minute. Not font. Font. <laughs> font. See the slash. <laughs> drive. Two dollars. Josh, um, how would someone? Get a shirt like this. It? Wait a minute, where are the cameras pointed? I I'm, where sure should I be looking? Like every, oh, we're there? Yeah. All right. Uh, Josh? <laughs> <laughs> so, I know you're over here. Yeah, unbelievable. Where would someone who would want a shirt like this with man boob insert? Actually, the man, boor, the man boobs are extra. It's 19 This is a custom boob. version of yeah. this shirt. Yeah. So it's 12. Oh, they're very lifelike. Uh, Lifelike? Yeah. Yeah, we're, but we're only doing those in special order. We have, only have 200 pieces. Oh, Actually, that's okay. 100 sets, 200 moves. Right. right. Yeah. Um, but in any case, um, Where do relatively you get soon, we're going to get cleared by Amazon for distribution on the shirts. Right. We have them in stock. We're, they're priced at just above cost to sell, um, really as a gift to our fans. I wish we could give them away, but... We will give some away. Order now. Delivery just in time for Christmas. But by, by the way, you know, <laughs> no. I just want to bring sooner up, than that. I, I want to bring up another thing that the commenters are. All the commenters who are kind of new, kind of tend to do this. All the Apple product they see, they sort of assume that it's some kind of product placement. And I just want to say, I appreciate that people would think that we would actually get an <laughs> Apple product um, placement. You know what? Because like. You know, it's, it's... At this juncture, who's to say we did? Who's to say it? Who's to say? Exactly. I mean, well, we did actually, get an art... Uh, but Microsoft sponsored our curtain rigging uh, set design. Oh, I get it. I get it. For those of you hanging around here. Hey, let's remind everyone, we're not, we're not broadcasting the race. We're commenting and hanging out, watching the race with you. By the way, what's going on with Ferrari? Or is there... Who, which Ferrari's out? Uh, the Ferrari that crashed was a pro-am car, and I don't mean to diminish the category, but we still have in the pro side, I believe, the two Ferraris, one, two. No, I just got a comment that uh, Ferrari's out, and I haven't... Uh, so now I'll try to catch up. The feed's a little wonky, so I haven't seen it. Is it, it really? And, and, of course, speed isn't showing it at the moment. What are they showing? Uh, commercials. And every time I go to Radio Le Mans, it's like listening to a United Nations French translator. Now, I got Ferraris 1 and 2, and I'm pretty sure. And I think the car that crashed was a Pro-Am car. Okay. So, Fisichella is still in the lead in his AF Corsa Ferrari 458. Luxury racing. Dominic Farnbarker in second place. And Jan Magnussen, who was the second of the two Corvettes, has elevated himself into position three, and guess what? They're all on the lead lap. So Corvette's not uh, never give up, never say never. Their attitude. Man, yeah, people are asking about what happened to Corvette, and also where, where are you guys getting your feet from? Um, before we answer that, you guys have questions. This is a response to Az Yazidam, 2005. I own a PlayStation, and I own Gran Turismo. And I don't enjoy playing it. Um, it's well, the car selection's poor. It's a hassle. And if you look at Sony's public statements on sales of the game, 
you'll see that the marketplace bears out my reaction to the game, whereas the Forza franchise has been a consistent seller. Its repeat playability is there, and although I will concede that it's not uh, as absolutely um, rigid in its physics model as GT5, it's infinitely more playable. At the end of the day, it's a game, I know it, I want it to be fun as a game should be. If I wanted a sim, I'd get sim racing. <laughs> so. What's um, sim racing? I've never heard of it. Hi, racing you mean? Sim Raceway. Sim Raceway. Yeah. Got it. Which I don't have, but you know, um, when I have the time and money to you know, invest in a real rig, that's where I'm going to go. So, and not just because um, I met the guys. I couldn't believe how fun, though, and addicting that karting yes. uh, track did. It was truly amazing. Uh, and Alan McNish agrees. Um, <laughs> go ahead. He agrees. In any case, um, we are going to uh, do Passquiz. GT5 is the highest selling racing game. Um, GT. Um, and McDonald's sells more hamburgers than a good yeah, place. I, I can't say. I mean, uh, I what I read was that GT5 was a disappointment in, uh, to Sony. Uh, is it the highest racing, selling racing game overall? Sure. Um, but did GT5 do as well as everyone thought it would? Uh, no one that I thought, no one I spoke to. But let's get back to what's going to happen here. Well, um, I don't dislike Gran Turismo. It's just not what we're going to be playing today. We're going to be playing Forza. So, if you'd like to play me, then please um, post your gamer tag here, and I will be parsing them in the next you know 15 minutes and making a list and. Um, you know, just send your invitations uh, soon. What were the two questions you had, JF? Where are we watching the feed? Are you referring to the Audi TV? So the live uh, in-car behind us is from AudiTV.com. Audi.tv. Audi.tv. <laughs> there you go. Google. That's what Google's for. But it is the Audi official feed, and they're carrying uh, the in-car camera for the entire race. And uh, speed.com has the uh, online feed as well as they are on air uh, right now. And then there are a couple of other feeds to carry the live, which basically lamont.org, when you go to the live timing, they've got broadcasts uh, up above the live timing and scoring, if that helps. And uh, that is where we are picking up our live timing and scoring right now. And I must say, it's not as, as, as good as the F1, which gives me segment times. Through uh, through a given lap, and you can really see who's making who's making time and who is not, and where they are strong on a track and where they're weak. So we're kind of doing the best we can with with timing and scoring from the official Lamont.org feed. Really do want to see more comments, and we'll try to answer your questions. Um, besides the fact that Alex, why do you have a Swedish flag on your shoulder? Okay, and why is your name in the GT5 credits? Me? Okay. Oh. Well, you go first. Your name is the GT5 credits? Yes. Why? Why do you have a Swedish flag? Go first. Before I answer that, it's because... Answer something. Okay. <laughs> um, a $50 shirt, which now costs 75 because you asked that question, comes with <laughs> full Velcro removable patches. Every country, everything totally customized. In this case, um, for my modest achievement of having the you know, get his book world record cross country driving time. And um, you can have a selection of Siberian border police patches, or in this case, um, Kamchatka border police patches in any country you want. Sure Juggles 26 is the first on my list of drivers, um, not because his name is Sure Juggles, but because he's the first person to post his gamer tag. For all the people out there who say they want to play me, um, I don't see a lot of uh, gamer tags coming down the pike. Except for Matt Pastrami. And the Gent 5. Wow. Key roll. Don't leave that there. I don't seem to be able to reach it. I know you. Can you bring it back, please? No. Well, then I'm leaving the set to go drink it. <laughs> All right, gamer tags. What else do you see there, uh, um, Spinelli? Uh, U Velcro. <laughs> well, that's not somebody's game. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, just, how many how many competitors do you need to, to race? One. There you and go. So find one. But I'm not driving yet. I'm relaxing. I just got back. I, I'm marinating oh. and psyching myself up. Oh. <laughs> oh, you know what? I thought you guys were kidding. Okay, the question of why my name was in GT5. Um, I helped. 
I didn't realize it was going to be in there. Someone actually told me after the fact, but apparently they put my name in there because I helped them put their deal together with uh, General Motors. And remember the Corvette the ZR1 and all yes. those hot cars? Yeah. So I helped um, get them together. And that was one of that partnership things from pdcamarketing.com. <laughs> Sales pitch. <laughs> but yeah, much to my surprise, I had literally someone, someone email me say, do you know your name is in there? And they sent me the screen capture. And I called the people. I said, well, why'd you do that? And they said, well, besides the money, thanks. Wow. Yeah, there you so go. There you go. Well, most people would be really proud of being listed in the credits of Grand Series money. I didn't do any. Well, I did. Yeah, yeah you did. Uh, Come on, you put them together. You're, you're a network, uh, what do they call it, a networker, a, uh, a dot connector? Um, I don't know. He's uh, a connector. Uh, a connector. Yeah. Now, I'm not in the credits, but I'm in a much more go expected ahead. place. If you go to was the class, is it class B automated race uh, team management in the game? You know what I'm talking about, Spinelli? Yes, yes. And you select among the drivers, and you have your driver selection, uh, and there's like 20 or 30 stock names. And they're, they're, they're ranked by speed, like you know, charisma, reliability. Like, I don't know what the, the criteria are. And A. Roy is one of the drivers. Are <laughs> you kidding? Like, it's totally bizarre. So. so I'm only in one weird spot. I'm in a, a, a death metal zine from 1988, but a Brazilian one. It's a Brazilian death metal zine circa 1988. Yes. That's all. That's all I am. That's very interesting. Let's talk about me again. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, in the comments here, it's mentioned Sim Raceway is free. Yes, it is free, but you pay for cars. And if I had to pay... Wait well, a minute, Audi off, Audi crash, Audi spun. Really? What happened? Where, where, where? Are you watching Josh or are you watching the real show? I'm, I'm watching uh, the comments because my feed has been acting up. And for what it's worth, I guess the Corvette is back in P8 coming out of the pits after the repair. So uh, it's, I know I'm being maybe too, uh, too aggressive with timing so much left, but it's down to Magnuson to save the day for Corvette if they're going to win a Le Mans this year. Uh, what do we got here? Yeah, I don't see uh, anything on the feed yet. See car number three in the pits. Um, Audi off, number three off. Well, it's in the pits right now. It was on the live stream behind Leo World while we were blabbing. <laughs> it was really it how they said. That's what he <laughs> so stop asking me about this my is what name happens Gran on, Turismo. And this is what happens on hour ten and a half. No, I, you know what? I'm not using that as an excuse. We just screwed up. All right. Who we cares just about your Swedish it. flag and me being in Gran Turismo? Let's watch the race. It's a uh, Dumas. So he's in the pit right now, though. Uh, wow. Is that a spin? Wait, what's on there now? Pit stop. Jeez, the car's oh. just coming into pits. Dumas, car number three? Yeah. Oh, so Dumas is the car that's trying to catch up. He's in, was in P6, at least on timing and scoring right now. So this did not affect the uh, top three positions in the race, which are the top three Audi. All right, I guess I have to ask the obvious. Are the fans getting bored that it's going to be another Audi domination? I have to say right off the bat, I would be bored to tears with more Audi domination. Really? I remember, you know, my dad... Would, we'd watch Le Mans. He didn't really follow Formula One. He cried when Senna died. And then maybe no more than, I don't know, 10 years ago, I started following Formula One. And this was, you know, at the end of Schumacher's reign. And I wanted desperately to get into it, and I couldn't get into it because even my friends who were giving me the background were bored to tears and couldn't generate any enthusiasm for what was going on. So if you're a new fan of racing, Formula One to today is what you want to be watching. I was really bothered by, by people criticizing that Vettel was dominant. <laughs> he deserved I, it. He earned it. Yeah, also, he just started. I mean, like, what, someone's not allowed to have a reign? It should be random every time? But here's Audi. They're having a reign. They've earned that. Yes, they've earned it. Um, 
Audi calling. Yeah, calling. Yeah. Hold down that button. All right. Um, what do you got? Uh, I am reading. I am reading off uh, gamer tags, and uh, I've got Sure Juggles, Matt Pastromny, JDM Falcon, XXXP3, LTZ Viper, Conaghy, DRL12, Defcon, Luke K2, The Mog, Culvic, Muffet11, Phantom, Alibaba, and Euro Power. How, how are you going to make this decision? Uh, well, I can fit, uh, I think, what, 10, 12, really? 15 people. So if you guys hang out, it's going to take me a little bit to actually set all that stuff up. Hey, Josh, yes. are we going to cover his race? Uh, to, well, I don't know how much we're going to cover it. Um, Let's see how well he's driving. Uh, and people are asking what the race... terribly, I'm going to point the camera that way. Race, um, asking what the race rules will be for uh, the, uh, the race we're going to do in Forza against me. What type of rules? What do you mean? Well, the rules are going to be we're going to do four laps in the Le Mans circuit, the current one. It's going to be restricted to R1 class, so LMP1 cars. Um, it's going to be forced ABS off, traction on, um, forced manual gearbox, uh, allow upgrades, um, allow tuning upgrades, and allow suspension upgrades. Oh, I see what you're doing. Okay, you're setting, so, the, you're setting the specs. Yeah. How about crash damage? How are you treating no, that? We're going to do full crash damage. Oh. Okay. And um, that's the way it is. In, in, in sim racing. Yeah. I'm serious. I'm, I'm, I'm not as versed in this. If you go full crash damage, does that clean up the quality of driving? I mean, do people realize you can't bang? No. In fact, what often happens is right off the start really? line, somebody just rams all the other cars and hopes that he's still running sufficiently to keep going. And um, that's not going to be looked kindly upon by me. And I will <laughs> insult you for the next 12 hours. Um, so while we are um, working on, um, we're downloading some things on the Xbox and updates, so stand by. Jason Bordeaux, I just got your message and I'll add your tag to the list. So do me a favor, don't add any more tags to the list for now. I've already got fuck, 15, 16 people. But uh, I will answer two quick questions. Um, the uh, status of my M5, uh, it's largely garaged, and I drive a Citroen SM as my daily driver. Um, that's, and I just bought a Morgan three-wheeler, so that's about it. Uh, eventually, someday, uh, if I have kids, if I have, you know, they, I'll give them an M5. If not, I will give it to an uh, automotive museum that doesn't consider me a criminal. So, um, there are five of those left, right? I have appeared at some automotive museums in the past, and I spoke at the FBI Academy and brought the car there and put it on display. Oh my goodness, we have the return of Rafa, Rafael Orlove. Hi. By the way, just want an update on uh, Anthony Davidson's condition. Uh, he sustained fractures to his T11 and T12 vertebrae, which, uh, you know what, means that as bad as it is, he's lucky. He's yeah. very lucky. He is. Um, I have an offer for my shirt of over $100. Uh, and, to be honest, and I do have um, badges uh, and patches and other items. If you are interested in a shirt, uh, please send me a uh, private message on YouTube. My account is um, AlexRoy144. Send me a private message, and I'll be glad to talk about it. Jan Magnuson's car is number 73 for the person asking, and JF was sending me a, a, a pit board. What was the signal there? I missed it. Break. Break right now? We can uh, go to break. Soon. Not right now, soon. Do you have the list of videos, or am I looking at the remaining list? Uh, Black Shinigami um, says I forgot about him last year, and I presume that you mean that I did not get around to racing against you. So I'll add your name to the list. And uh, is your gamertag Kuroshine? Kuroshine? Please let me know. Uh, and if it's something else I can get back to you on, then please send me a private message on YouTube. My account's AlexRoy144. Leo, uh, here's a question. I I've always wanted to know this. Uh, how did you first get involved with automotive racing and marketing? Wow. So the short answer is um, my mom and dad were college professors. I was going for my MBA, I was teaching part-time. But the school that I was going to, uh, Babson in Wellesley, Edsel Ford was going to undergraduate, so Ford interviewed. And I'd always thought that 
marketing was kind of BS and the auto industry or the business was whatever. And the auto industry, the only company that interested me at the time was Ford. So it became an interview that was put up or shut up. They made an offer. And uh, rather than go teach, I joined them. They uh, put me in their management training program, which ended up being basically sales and marketing. And uh, off we went. Nine years with them, nine years with Toyota. Ended up corporate advertising. Started our own practice. Wait, you make this sound all just so simple and pedestrian. It was just, I never, you know, I never was a VP of anything. It was just a corporate food chain. And we went on, and somewhere in there, we were exposed to racing. Somewhere in there, I got a chance to, to drive. And I raised money to sponsor myself, and off we went. Right, that kind of explanation, if I was younger, and I heard that, I would not ever get into racing or marketing based on that. Good. And we're going to, <laughs> and, and here's the deal. Here's the deal. It ain't about me, and we're going to break. Okay. And for another time, people. When Jeff raises the purple paper in his hand. By the way, what are we going to talk about now that I have, I finally get the big chair, and now what? What do we talk about? Well, as um, Annette Stark learned when he received the pin of the hand of the king, sitting in the big chair. Oh, Leo's not, back. I'm going, to, I'm going to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Leo, yeah, oh, yeah, that's off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make sure that thing is off. Okay. So, race update, race action. Race action. By the way, I, now that I left my laptop over there, I have to, uh, well, Audi's still. Do you want me to read off uh, what's going on? Yeah, could you, could you take care of that? Uh, happily. Uh, so, um, uh, with 184 laps, uh, the e-tron quattro is, uh, uh, Bessler is uh, up in position one, followed by um, uh, the e-tron quattro Christensen uh, just down on the same lap. Um, again, followed by uh, the, uh, the third uh, Audi RT Ultra, and then the two uh, Lola Toyotas. Uh, and so that's P1. Uh, the, uh, so the, um, the plain R18 Ultra is two laps down. Uh, the Lola's are six and eight down. On to LMP2. Uh, it is the Honda, which is up at 172 laps. They are in first place for LMP2, followed by a brace of uh, Nissan Oricas um, running the next, what is that, five cars. Um, on to... GT cars, GTE Pro. It is uh, wow. It's the um, uh, four, five, eight are in the first two positions, um, each on the same lap, and just behind them, on the same lap, is the Corvette of Magnuson, and then the Aston Martin Racing is a lap down from them. Uh, then in GTE AM, it is uh, the IMSA Performance uh, Porsche 911 RSR, uh, followed by. A Corvette, and then uh, two Ferrari four by eight. Cool. I I would like to just interrupt the flow of that topic by reading my nominee for comment of the day. Comment of the day. Hey, drive guys, do you have any experience running Lexan rear windshields? Specifically, oh. can you mount it with adhesive to carbon fiber, or do you need screws? This is for an illegal streetcar. Thanks a lot. That's from F1 villain. <laughs> Back so, to the race coverage. Well, F1 villain, um, I tend to go with epoxy <laughs> for these circumstances or these needs. Your needs will be taken care of by epoxy. And I'm sorry to use the passive voice in that sentence. The peasant voice? The passive, passive peasant voice. Just remember to take out your armrests to save weight. Just don't forget to take out your armrests. I, I just remove the driver's seat altogether and... Go for a more dynamic. Well, uh, you, could like, you could be like the fastest Indian and just sort of you just, yeah. lie down. Yes. Steer like that. 
I say use chicken wire. It always worked for me. And I see that the corn tower has just remarked that Alex has truly raised the level of discord. <laughs> Thank heavens! She said things that are not true. Okay, corn tower. Back to racing coverage. Um, How do I mic up? Racing coverage! I've been out for the past hour and a half. Can you guys tell me what happened? Well, I made a fort. Did anything interesting happen in France? Uh, there was an accident. Really? What happened? I peed in my pants. <laughs> No, seriously, if you're going to sit here, you've got to sit in the chair. <laughs> you mean you I have to, to actually do stuff? Yeah, all, right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's talk about racing. All right. All right, now give us an update what's happened up until now. I'll start. This is the 25 hours of the 24 hours of Lamar. Mike Spinelli of Jalopnik. Yep. Um, Rafael Orlov, who knows more than the other two people sitting on camera right now. Combined. Alex Roy here for Comic Levity. Yes. Now, the Delta Wing's out, which is sad because I want to see it finish just to prove a point. Um, we have uh, one of the Toyotas is out. They're yes. both out. Uh, both out. They're done. What? The other Toyota's out? Uh, that's the, that Do was the news. Do you know what's going on here? <laughs> I thought it was just down. Down and out. Uh, I thought it was just, uh, just down many laps. Hey, uh, Leo? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Toyota. What happened, to the, what happened to the number uh, seven Toyota? They're still in it, just 30 laps down, right? They're 30 laps down? No, they're out. Both Toyotas No, they're out. Both Toyotas are out. See, I told you. I told you I knew this what I'm just saying. This is what happens when I go eat dinner. I'm I, sorry. I'm over here. No, no, no. You come over here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, my mic is not on. Your mic should I be was, on. Uh... No, because I, I need to I need to go Where back to the chair of levity. I, I need to... Uh... Do you want this chair? Uh, uh, I've been asked what's happening in 3207, guys. I literally uh, was going to take a break, but okay. Oh, you want to take a break? All right, no, so we'll yeah, actually... No, 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 you want me to get serious? I'll be serious. I'll be serious. Leo, just walk away. Like, no, no, no I'll be serious. Now? I'll be serious. Yeah, there, uh, there was a cooling mechanical problem with the uh, number seven car. They've been in and out of the pits. But it's DNF. Finally retired. You're Both retired. cars are done. Both cars no are done. No way. Yep. Too much glad handing, but they're they're done. Yeah. Um, we've been told en enough of Audi dominated Le Mans. Um, move on. Well, great. We can talk about whatever we want for the next nine. Well, hours. that's kind of why we started with all the other stuff. Is that it? it well, got wait, kind but of who else is who else is there? LMP one is still running. Uh, Orca? <laughs> no, in LMP1, it's the, it's the Yoda's. I took my, I said, um, no, P1 is also gas powered, so you've got the exactly. Rebellion Toyota. No, I know, I'm, I, There probably is an Orca. Some people have to down our Toyota now. They're DNF, DNF. Oh, they're done? They're done, done. Oh. No yeah, way. Yeah, I think that's. Oh, wait, you didn't know either? No, 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 I thought they were down, like, he said the race was over as in, there's no hope for them, but I didn't know they were out. And they're both retired. Oh, man. Yeah, that sucks. Wow. I believe this is Sean Heckman of the Media Barons, the oldest PR firm automotive racing in the world. From the days of unicycle jousting, Sean Heckman of the Media Barons. Dude, this is sad. Who is this? <laughs> Who do you think it is? It's Sean Heckman? Yes. Why is it oh, sad? Are you watching the, you mean, are you referring to the race yeah, or what I said about your yeah, company? No, you specifically. Oh, sorry. No, that's all right. No, I'll forgive you. No, really, people love it, though. Well, no, that's fine. Look, I know nothing about entertaining as much as you do, so I will just sit back and, uh, and enjoy. I, um, can the audience hear what he's saying? What? Can anyone hear? Heckman's not... Uh, yeah. He he's, can be heard on the, uh, yes. uh, on the engine room phone. Yes. Uh, Sean, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, to make light of your, your, of your company, the media barriers. Well, that's a lovely... It's, it's very sad because we are both multi-global. And, uh, you know, we have a staff of thousands, and we've been around for centuries, as you said. So, uh, oh, so you know, he's going to be saying they've been around for before. centuries since the days of unicycle jousting. Yes. Okay. Well, good. if you were called the media chamberlains, I might have taken you more seriously. Hey, listen, <laughs> Heckman, you're one of my favorite folks. You, unlike everyone sure. else here except Leo, actually did race professionally. And um, sure. so you know, obviously, way more than the founder of Jalopnik over here, no, Mike Spinelli. Um, continue. Now that the Toyotas are out... Do you really intend to stay up all night and watch this race? Oh, God, no. No, not at all, to be honest. Uh, uh, I, I got to be honest, and this is, I'm a little bit biased out here, but, um, you know, to me, there was never going to be an issue. Or there was no question as to whether or not the Audis were going to win it anyway. The, the Toyotas were, you know, they always made it kind of public that they weren't going to make a huge, they were making a valiant effort, but they knew this was their first year and it wasn't going to be a year they could win. 
so you know when the uh, when the Peugeots pulled out six months ago, we all knew this was what the race was going to be. And and to be honest, sort of GT, it, it appears to just be a race that's going to be I hate saying it, but a fairly average race. Uh, so you're telling me that you're waiting for both Toyotas to DNF so you can go to sleep? Both the factory Toyotas have pulled in. Now there are gas power Toyotas still in there from Rebellion. And if there's a story in P1 to watch, it's actually the Rebellion team. Rebellion is actually a really, I don't mean to, to sort of make it about racing here because I know we're talking about unicycle jousting and man boobs, but um, the Rebellion is, is actually a really, really quality team. And right now to, to, to run a, what we call a petrol powered car is, is almost impossible to be competitive. And the fact that they're sort of knocking on the door of the podium, that and alone would be a win. Um, and in the second car, uh, right now, Jerome Bleekemol is one of the drivers. He's actually got a lot of presence out here in the U.S. He's been running ALMS and Grand Am, and he's really, really talented. So, so stateside, those of us who've been following ALMS and Grand Am should, should definitely be rooting for that car, for the, uh, this at the, the number 13. All right, so the next question then is, um, what, uh, you obviously think Davidson was innocent in that uh, bumpy head earlier today. I, I, I have to apologize. I could barely hear a word you're saying. You're breaking up. Davidson. At the Davidson crash. Davidson, yes. Um, um, go ahead. Uh, what is it with the Ferrari M drivers I mean, hitting uh, LMP1 cars? Yes. Uh, here's the thing. I have, I have uh, two very strong opinions on this. Um, there are a lot of people who are very critical of GTAM, and the bottom line is I think people who are critical aren't necessarily aware of the business reality of two-thirds of the paddock in, in sport car racing right now. I mean, the truth is two-thirds of the paddock are are funded simply because we have drivers who can quite frankly afford to do it, and they're not always the fastest, but they keep it going, and they keep a lot of guys employed beyond this entertaining fan. So, um, so the GTAM category is definitely a necessary evil, um, but at the same time, I mean, this is the second year in a row where we've had massive accidents that, I mean, we're lucky no one has been seriously injured because you know, we're, we're essentially just waiting for that to happen before we do something about it, and that's the thing that concerns me. Um, what I would be in favor of moving forward is I would love to see some sort of minimum speed or minimum percentage or something to that effect so that if the GTA of drivers is going to be out there, and again, that's an evil we all have to embrace because that's just the nature of this kind of racing, but it would be really nice to see them uphold themselves to a certain standard that if they can't maintain a certain pace, chances are they're probably not safe enough to be out there, and then, you know, maybe we can avoid some of the, some of the incidents we've been having. What happened to the guy last year who uh, who had the shunt with Rockefeller? What was his name? Again, I'm sorry. You're, we're going to have to go back to so, the engine room. Sorry, what was the name of... What was, I, I don't forget his name. I don't have to look him up. But last year, there was the... Um, the Kaufman. Uh, Kaufman. Kaufman? Yeah, he's racing this Rob year. Kaufman. Yeah, right. Rob Kaufman. So, and he's I mean, racing Rob this Kaufman. year. Yeah, Rob Kaufman is a perfect example of sort of the necessary evil. Well, Rob Kaufman is actually as a... As a, as a gentleman driver, so to speak, he's a big part of a lot of organizations, uh, especially stateside, not just with the AF Walter of course, the team, but also, you know, he's a big part of what's keeping NASCAR going with the two teams, obviously with the Michael Walter connection. Um, but he's a perfect example of you need him in the sport like this to keep it funded, to keep it exciting, but there needs to be some sort of rule set where if you can't maintain a certain pace, um, or does anything that's demonstrable to somebody that's sort of, you know, driving recklessly or with, with sort of a lack of awareness of what's coming up behind them, um, then, then again, we need to sort of regulate that. But it's, it's easier said than done because we can't just sort of do away with that kind of category because we need those guys to keep the fields and the teams healthy. Well, Kaufman and Perazzini, <laughs> Perazzini yes. uh, it looked like these guys are actually are pretty experienced drivers, even if, you, even if they're technically am drivers. And so... Sure. <laughs> By any standard of minimum speed, uh, or standard that you think is necessary, these guys would probably have met it. Is that is that not true? Uh, you know, I don't actually know that that's true um, because experience to me, when it comes to sort of older drivers, doesn't always mean a whole lot. And I don't really want to name any names just for the sake of my own business. Um, but you know, I know guys who have been racing for a long time, but get they still can't manage to keep the car on the road. Um, and so, you know, there should be a rule that they, if they manage to go off the road a couple of times during their stint, or if they can't maintain a minimum speed, and, and there are guys, uh, there are guys that we are watching right now who are actually doing very well in the AM category, um, who quite frankly are at danger still. And if they, you know, it's only going to take one of these instances to go horrifically bad that, that we're probably going to realize the danger in that. Um, but, uh, but I don't necessarily know that all these guys would be able to maintain a minimum speed. Um, but it doesn't have to necessarily be that. I'm not saying a minimum speed is the answer. I'm saying 
some sort of policing system where if they go off the road X number of times or if they do X number of maneuvers that are considered you know, dangerous or not in the best interest of a faster field coming up, that we have to bench them or we have to sit them down for an hour or two and then force them out of the car and come back. You know, again, I'm not saying these are the right answers. I am saying there needs to be something that we can do to keep these guys here, uh, but make sure we're, we're keeping a certain level of safety in mind. Alex, we got we to do the uh, top of the hour break. Okay, so, uh, uh, we have to do top of the hour break, but I actually am feeling very embarrassed suddenly because having known Sean Heckman uh, through work and a little bit socially, I was hoping to have a more of a free willing chat with him. But in the absence oh, of Leo, Heckman becomes the most knowledgeable and helpful person we possibly have. Absolutely. So I'm hoping that we can reconnect with you um, sooner rather than later. Uh, are you going to be around the next hour or two? I'm going to take it off about racing. We don't have to talk about racing, right? Whatever you guys want. No, I would like very much to talk about racing. Cool. Let's do a recap. We're breaking for uh, drives 25 hours to 24 hours of Le Mans. Stay with us. We're just breaking a little while. Watching 25 hours of the 24 hours of Le Mans with Drive. I'm Mike Spinelli. Hey, Mike. Hi, JF. JF Feels like Road Testament right here. Yeah, it does feel a lot like Road Testament. I mean, we, we sort of took over. Leo's taking a break to play a little bit of uh, Gran Turismo. I mean, I'm sorry, Forza. Forza. Watch the um, wire then. Alex is taking a pee break, but he's he coming back. took my coffee, and now JF took my seat. So JF there. took his seat, um, so there's a little bit of a problem. problem. And I wanted to ask him about signaling come on in okay so come on in uh let me just to recap toyota's out audi's dominating uh lmp1 uh rebellion racing's down a few laps but uh could do they have a shot of taking shot at taking one of the podium spots they have no shot let's talk no. to heckman it's more interesting talk to he's talking about well, i'm just wrapping it up now you talk to heckman thank you yeah, very much. we have the best racing coverage. all right go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. we have people on the phone who are talking about it. thank Sean, you very much that's no, a complete lie. I'm just, I'm a PR guy. I'm just going to make it up as I go. Um, Sean Heckman claims he's only a PR guy, but he's not. He raced professionally himself, so he knows what it's like to get behind the wheel. And he actually knows how to shoot content about racing and wow. has many con clients to prove it, including TRG, um, which is a whole other operation. No, TRG is actually not true anymore, by the way. Oh, well, that, that doesn't matter right now. Right, so, that's Sean, uh, the, yeah. the accident last year with Rock Feller and the accident yeah. with Davidson. So. We were yeah. talking earlier about the rules of, you know, basic passing, the protocols of, you know, race craft and getting through race traffic. But how come there isn't, I mean, what, in, what if any improvement has uh, taken place in terms of signaling in, you know, uh, such situations other than installing brighter lights? Because a case could be made that in the Rockefeller accident last year, you had, the lights were so bright that when the, uh, Audi was approaching the Ferrari, uh, and Rocco was approaching, that it was so bright that the car he was approaching could not discern distance of the approaching car. So other than <laughs> installing brighter lights or flash systems, it, yeah. is there anything to be done about this? Is there a technological solution that, that's been considered and rejected? Is there anything else to be done? Harsher judgments? Uh, than the, it's, it's easy for me to say this because I'm not the guy driving the car, but no, I mean, there's no... I mean, lights are lights and they work. And if, I mean, there could be something that's about a light that's too bright um, that you maybe wouldn't know it was coming or something was completely off, but then that becomes the problem of the guy behind you. Um, but, I mean, Rockefeller's case was a perfect example, as was the one that happened today with, uh, with Davidson, which is, uh, we call it in racing a predictable line. It is, you know, both the responsibility of the guy that's coming, but also the guy that's getting past 
to drive in a predictable fashion that everybody knows where you're going. So Davidson, for, for example, was clearly in, heading into the Mulsanne corner. He was clearly inside of, of the Ferrari, and the Ferrari still seemed to move over and hit him in the left rear. Uh, and that's a case of not driving a predictable line. Davidson sort of made it clear uh, in the way that he duped to the inside that he was going there. Um, the Ferrari gave him the room and then cut in for, for no explicable reason. He, that was, of course, during daylight, so you can't really blame headlights for it. But in case of, like, Rock and Peller's accident uh, last year, no, it just comes down to the fact that you've got... Um, you've got two, two, you know, it's, it's a little bit of both people's responsibility, but you've got essentially AM drivers, because if you notice, in all of these incidents, they've come from the GT AM category and never from the quote-unquote pro driver within that lineup, you know. Right. Um, so in the case of the Ferrari here uh, that had crashed, you know, it was, you know, it was one of their amateur guys. It was not the guy who was a designated pro, because the pros, even though they're in, they're in you know, treacherously slow cars compared to these, uh, compared to some of these P1 cars, the rate of, the rate of distance approaching isn't so bad so long as you drive in a predictable fashion. If you make it very clear as a GT car that you're turning or that you're leaving room or, or that you're going to break, you know, it's, it doesn't come to putting a hand signal up, putting a light or something like that on there. It comes clearly to just driving in a predictable fashion. Everybody here knows this track. Everybody knows the line. Everybody knows more or less what GT cars do, what P1 cars do, what P2 cars do. And therefore, they know how to act accordingly if they are able to maintain a certain speed and a certain amount of, uh, a certain amount of uh, sensibility as they drive. So it really comes down to what I call that predictable line and making sure that you have drivers who understand how to make it clear that they're going to stay wide or that they're going to cut to the inside or whatever the scenario. I have another question for you, and I hope you don't sure. mind these questions, but there's no one I to ask one. but you. Sure. Uh, sure. So. Uh, look at the vet. We can make more Steve Coogan jokes. Oh, the, the 74, uh, number 74 vet's been in the pits for a while. Uh, having its... Hold that thought, because I have Hickman now. And All right, well, I... Let's answer this. Sean. No, I'm around. You when you have an accident... Sure. Well, I want... No, in fact, I will let facts get in the way of No, coverage. would you like to ask him about the... Uh, the what? The Corvette situation. Is he on the ground? What would you like me to ask? He's in LA. Right now. Right now. All right, all right. Then, then, then okay. continue. Continue. When you have an accident, an, an, a serious accident, and there is, you know, some question over the responsibility of a driver, what exactly sure. happens in terms of a hearing or, you know, um, reevaluation of the racing license? And when has there been a repercussion that changed the course of a driver's career? Uh, it's probably not fair for me to answer that relative to the ACO and the 24 Hours of Le Mans because I've never been in that situation, nor do I know anybody who's gone through it. Um, but the short answer to that is every series is very different. NASCAR, for example, does have a very clear review policy. If somebody's out of line, you do what's called getting called into the hauler. Uh, Grand Am and ALMS have their own procedures. IndyCar has a different procedure. Um, you know, you, you, race, you know, there's, there's two things that a guy never wants to, to hear that he's bad at, and racing is the other thing, or driving is the other thing. Uh, and so... You're never going to hear a guy take, admit responsibility for the fact that he was, you know, he should have done something different when it comes to an accident, um, and that's why we have officiating to, to be there. But you know, the specifics to what the ACO should do with the with regard to Le Mans and how to justify who was at fault, who should have backed off, who should have not backed off, or whatever. There, there's no easy way to police that. That's up to the series and the track marshals to do that and check off or whatever. There, there's no easy way to police that. That's up to the series and the track marshals to do that. And and literally every series has something different. NASCAR from Formula One to, to IndyCar, they all have their own different policies. Some work better than others, but but you know it's all a little bit different dynamic, which I know it's not really answering it per se. But there is no easy way to to judge that. Uh, actually, you did kind of answer it because the whole time you could, I couldn't stop thinking about the greatest service that racing fans have been served by Hollywood and racing films is not the quality of the special effects, which are crap, or the plots, which are mostly crap, but the depiction of the personalities of the drivers. Because invariably, it, it seems like every Hollywood racing movie, it's always, you know, he just can't dial it back. Rubbing is racing. You know, let's get, you know, whatever, and that and that. But, I mean, if anyone actually drove like Tom Cruise in Days of Thunder, would he keep his racing license? Well, in fairness, now I actually learned a lot about driving uh, from Days of Thunder. Like, for example, if you need to pass a guy, you just need to shift gears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting. That's very you know, interesting. I mean, if the guy's bad, you want to go wide. If you want to go wide, or go high on a guy. Hopefully, you've got the tire there. But the truth is, you just have to put your foot all the way out on the floor, and you'll get around him. It's actually quite easy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, now, uh, uh, my last question has to do with um, with uh, the movie Le Mans, which I just watched. And sure. after watching it, I watched um, Truth in 24 2, 
And then I was looking sure. up, um, you know, Audi's historic drivers, and I saw that Frank Bila, right? Frank Bila, I'm pronouncing correctly? Sure. That he had an accident where he struck another car, 1995, that had already spun out, and um, he struck it and killed the other driver. Have you heard, you know the story of that? I do know the story, actually. And, you know, um, I, I had never heard the story before, but Bila went on, went on to win many races, and um, that seemed to be like an honest racing accident. Um, has anything like that occurred at Le Mans since 1955? Not that I know. No, there's. Uh, well, we did. We did lose a driver at Le Mans in a testing accident. We lost. Uh, uh, crap, I can't think of his name now. But it was in a Audi. Actually, the old R8 uh, tire went down at Milan, and it went down. This was like 1999 or 2000, um, and I. For the life of me, can't is of course. As soon as I'm on the air, I can't think of who who it was. But uh, he's been coming along forever. He's a very talented driver. Um, I don't think we've had a fatal accident during the race. We certainly haven't seen anything in terms of side impacts or two guys getting together that led to that led to something fatal. Uh, but having said that, the the closing rates and the differences in speed between some of these P1 cars and these GTAM cars is so high that we are asking for it. I mean, it's no different than if you look at IndyCar, you know, for the last 10 years and them racing on the one and a half mile ovals. We knew there was going to be a tragic accident coming, and it wasn't until we actually had one last October that, that we did anything about it. Right. And I really feel like we're, we're seeing something very similar right now, where we know that these big accidents are coming. We've already seen a few, and it's not going to be until something really bad happens that we're going to finally do something about it. Well, Sean, thank you so much for bringing um, reason and, and lucidity what, what, what? to uh, to our proceedings. And I will now lower the level of discourse by thanking Absolutely. you for ending this call. <laughs> Go for it. Um, but uh, we'll be in touch, maybe chat with you a little later tonight if you're yeah. still awake. If I'm awake and uh, not working on other crap. Um, you're the king. Thanks. And I will not make too That's much right. more fun of you. They promise every reference uh, will be in the context of Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can always make fun of me, Roy. I'll just come right back. But Heckman, but I love you. All right, love you. Thanks so much. So, Sean Heckman, president of Media Barons, and an all-around great guy who ran, didn't he drive an F3 or GP2? What did he drive in? Yeah. In Japan? That's why he's not playing Sims with us, because he will kick our he is, fracking asses. He is out of our league. Or we are out of his league. So, what happened while I was gone? Uh, well, in the game of Le Mans, Westbrook, Corvette, <laughs> in the yeah. game of the Mons, you <laughs> you pass or you die. Or you die. <laughs> um, so Corvette's I in the pits. <laughs> hey 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 hey! Race, race is on. Corvette's in the pits. Steering rack. Really? Yeah, but it's. Uh, oh yeah, no, there. Wow. It's the '74 Corvette. Um, the the '74. Uh, yes. Oh, they're down. Yeah, they're way down, and they've been in the pits for about uh, at least as long as Alex was on the call with Heckman. And what, what's up with uh, 73? Oh, the so Ferguson car? Weren't they out with a disc? Um, Were they replacing 73 disc? is now... I'm muted, Josh. I'm muted, Josh. Hey. 73's in the pit, too. You're right. You're absolutely correct. Um, and then we've got... Uh, we've got uh, 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 Fisichella's Ferrari... Um, he is driver change, but apparently Hi. spun. We didn't get the feed on that, but uh, okay. That's um, what's happening, guys? Forza. Uh, as you can see, I was on the phone. Now I'm off the phone. I am going to um, uh, go to the fire escape to do what a man <laughs> does when the bathroom is locked. And when I return, we will settle into Forza, and we will see manhood defined by your hours. You're 15 minutes into your hour. What hour? You gotta do a stint. What? What? Um, Come you on, know. you know what this is. It's stints. Why don't you relax? So, I see we're having clips of old Le Mans races being shown on speed. And, awesome. and footage from Le Mans, the film. And what? And an amazing coincidence, I just saw that the Ford um, uh, GT40 used as the camera car in the movie Le Mans is up for sale. Oh. And that car, and what actually, what's really interesting about that film is that you don't see any GT40s in it anywhere. Mm -hmm. And it's never said that, you know, what year the race of the movie is supposed to be taking place. Obviously, it's 1971, um, 1970. But uh, 
It's Ferrari and Porsche. Now, is it the same GT40 that was used in Porsche. the filming of Grand Prix? I don't because that wasn't that was a GT40 also. I don't know. However, the car, which has an incredible history, including a lot of you know wheel time for Steve McQueen in it, uh, clearly uh, saw some of the coolest driving action of all time. And in an indication of how much it's going to cost to buy the car, you can't believe that I know anything about anything. No, I was I was not even We're saying anything about you. I was talking about the chat. Is that? Um, I will now see if they're talking about me. Oh, they've been, I have to admit they're paying more attention to the live stream after I took the pilot seat. Oh, anyway, uh, so the car uh, was used not just for the filming, but uh, was owned uh, and restored to its original spec. So it might be, other than one of the race winning cars, one of the most valuable GT40s ever built. And today, if you want to buy that car, and I'll put, find the link somewhere, they will not quote you a starting bid. Serious inquiries only. If you have to ask, will you it can't be you? It. <laughs> <laughs> will it be you? It won't be me. <laughs> anyway, yep. unless uh, right. unless I could unload my uh, Fort Man boobs for a uh, Jordan <laughs> Vega has walked in the room with Dunkin' Donuts. Is that Jordan Vega? Who is it? Uh, we now have Jordan Vegas entered, who's an old friend, member wow. of Team Flatside, and the drive team. And more importantly, who's also a well, first of all, was a, was a kickboxer. That's so right. So if you have any uh, comments... And that, he apparently um, brought donuts, which is the official meal of Fort Man Boobs. <laughs> uh, look at the contents. For the love, of, for the love of, of the break, please break out the whiskey. No one has any idea what Alex is talking about. Girth concealment check. And that's why Alex is the best. <laughs> Girth concealment check. I, am I going to have to go and, and build another fort? I'd like to build a fort over here, but there's just not enough material. Material. We have uh, a red velvet curtain. Yeah, we have a curtain. I mean, I could. No, no, you know. on the, but, below hey, the TV. There's below a the great. TV. There's a great um, quote uh, from uh, MF MP uh, four F one. Great quote from Speed. Excuse me, I'm speaking. You should listen to my wisdom. Okay. <laughs> According to David Hobbs, David Hobbs just said the following, we are charged with bringing in the non-racing fan, so we don't get to do anything really interesting with racing. What? That's unbelievable. David Hobbs did not just say that. Yeah, he did. Where do you, um, is he in our comments right now? Uh, what happened to the guys who were on an hour ago? You mean Leo Parenti, who is um, the, uh, he's the uh, Donald Rumsfeld of racing coverage in that you, in that every time he sits down and looks at who's across the table, he says to himself, I guess you cover racing with the hosts you have. <laughs> Not the hosts you wish you had. <laughs> He's dealing with a lot of known unknowns. Well, you have to say that my presence, right or wrong, is both controversial and what do you scratch your head? Every time I look over here, it's like looking at the guys in the Muppet Show in the, in the box. <laughs> We're just here to give you questionable looks so you doubt everything you've ever done in your entire life. <laughs> we asked for fictional histories of Lamont. Like they're saying, sit under the table. That's your fort. Well, did you know that Thomas Jefferson was actually the very first person ever to race at Le Mans? Do you know that? He... Oh, but not in a car, though. Talking. No, really. Thomas not, Jefferson... Thomas Jefferson did you, not drive a car. This is going somewhere. Let's no. pay attention. Is it like a foot race? No, he was in all. a foot race with Benjamin Franklin That's over a woman. That's not true. Her name was Cherie. Where did, where Dude, this is some made-up history. No, I'm That's serious. Not true. It, it, it made-up history must be based on realities. No, 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 okay. no, 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 uh, a subsequent <laughs> he's, he's who they were fighting over. Reason. They were fighting, fighting over the, 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 the access to the it's never happened. Why we private parts of reason. Why would we even waste the time to Google that? Hey, hey. Wait, Did you really right start here. to Google that? Of wait, course. Uh, yeah. Wait Thomas a second. Jefferson. Thomas Lamont. Jefferson in race. <laughs> Foot race. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson ran the laws in a football how's, how's the feed going? The how comments here are, did you know Abraham Lincoln was a vampire hunter? No way. Yes. No and, way. And Raphael Orlov, I uh, never heard of that guy, said Alex Roy's wisdom, questionable. <laughs> I would never say that. 
Nas. Obviously, it's an impersonator. Nas straight six. Yes, it's true. Jefferson owned slaves, um, and which is why it's you offensive see? that you suggested he was the first race of the I didn't law. say because, he... as you know, the French and I lived in France for a time. Will will tell you that um, he never lost a war, and no great American who loved France ever owned a slave. So, except for Thomas Jefferson. Can Leo please return? And take my. By the way, his... well, no, no, but you know that there is a racing connection. Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison. Thomas Jefferson lived in Monticello. Yeah. What, which a oh, what a is a different pronunciation of Monticello, which is where they have the track which is day. a track day, which is a a, a a racetrack in upstate New York. For the first time ever, I can honestly say that my knowledge of racing has diminished <laughs> <laughs> by actually listening I, to a racing. Yeah, I'm going to go over there and let Jay take the seat over because um, I've been I've been asked by the fans to go to the fire escape. <laughs> really? Yes. Okay. Alex oh, Roy. Alex Roy. I didn't ask for this. Oh, people, want, people want to see behind the scenes? I, don't I, I asked for Leo and No, nobody wants to see behind the scenes, trust me. No, what time we, is it? By the way, Raph, what time is it? Ray? No, happy hour. Raph. Oh, you wish Ray was right. here. Yeah, uh, yeah. 922. Hours. So we're headed midnight down to the bottom of the hour. Midnight hour time. Oh. And uh, JF is on his way over with a laptop. So Alex, can you? Let's get Jordan Vegas here. Yeah. Yeah. Jordan Vegas. You want to take the Alex, uh, the can you take your stuff? Hey, Jordan Vega, Good join us. Alex, please. No, uh, uh, parts of it, then NASCAR came on. I had to tune in and then cut the updates from you. Saw the crashes online with the highlights, and now I, uh, I did a race over to Dunkin' Donuts before coming over here. Jordan By the way, that, that, that deserves some applause. Thanks, Donuts being, as I mentioned, the official meal of the Man Boobs man Kingdom. Man. Yeah, it's an annual occurrence. This is much better than uh, the apartment setup. Like yes, yeah. Year. Well, uh, I feel like I'm at my apartment right now. This, this is sort of apartment-like, but... Um, it's pretty wonderful. Is it, this real pleather? <laughs> it, it was pleather um, until Raphael peed on it. And now it's... Oh, I don't know what it is. It's close over there. Yeah, should I not <laughs> sit this Look close? at the monitor. You <laughs> guys are talking about <laughs> <laughs> I've never met this man uh -huh. before in my life. That is like fantastic. Raphael Orlo. Pleasure. How you doing? I do very well. I'm, uh, can you? Uh, can your castle racing. is occupying its own. <laughs> I know you've, you've occupied my. Uh... You guys look like uh, cousins or something. I'm the better looking one, obviously. All right. Uh, here's a question: How quick are the uh, the pit stops in uh, Le Mans generally? So many comments. Um, it depends on on what uh, if it's uh, just a, if it's a driver change with fuel. Driver change. It's just driver change. Um, with fuel or without fuel? No you fuel. Can, you driver change, change, no fuel. What? You can't. You can't do a driver change while fueling the car. You can do. You to okay. Work. Driver change, no fuel. How many seconds? It depends on how good they are. Good. Good to average. Um, Come on. Eight seconds. Eight seconds. Driver change. I doubt that highly. What? Ten seconds. Uh, maybe, okay. Maybe Those I, two seconds was when. That's when you plug the transponder back in. The two, last two seconds. Okay. So maybe fifteen seconds. Uh -huh. All right. So uh, how about? Um, with fuel, no tires. 40 seconds? 40 seconds. Fuel and tires. Probably a good 60 seconds. The Delta will probably be a 90 second. Width. Right, because they've got the... Yeah. Um, fuel, tires, and half shafts. Go. Hold on. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Fuel, tire, and half shaft? I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Go, uh, Raph, can you look what? that up, please? Wait, the piss up? Yep. Uh, beer pong is the next topic of discussion. Now when I return, we're going to be discussing car livery versus camouflage, theories on future strategies for victory. <laughs> Still? <laughs> this is two years in the making. This should have been a shake down topic last week. Um, I'm coming. I'm, I think i got to come back there. By the way, sure 20, Buccaneer is correct. 25 seconds for a driver change. 10 seconds would be like two jackrabbits Having very, 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 very second second quick set. Be like change the helmet livery to pretend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Twenty-five seconds. I'm recapping of what everyone's position is in. Okay. As I scratch my poison ivy in my ankle. <clears throat> Did you say poison ivy? Hey, you want some poison oak? Actually. Did you just had sumac or something? Didn't you uh, just? Three years ago, I ended up in the hospital. I didn't you just um, have it recently? 
Routine pit stop, no scheduled maintenance, generally lasts 30 to 40 seconds. Um, that's without a driver change. 30 to 40 seconds, routine maintenance, tight, what is no, that? No, okay, so if nothing is going on, no routine maintenance, no driver change, 30 to 40 seconds, add another 10 seconds for a driver change. 73 core back even the pitch just had a left disc change, front rotor, uh, replaced out. Yep. Is that your guy? Uh, Lucas or, or De Ordinez, yeah, that's... Okay. Uh, can we get the cam one? Or not? Okay. What's wrong? No, nothing, don't worry about it. It's okay. Cam one, baby. Okay, we're gonna do a, uh, uh, an update here on who's where. Let's start off with, which, which one do you wanna do, GT or LMP? Uh, let's do uh, GT because LMP is sort of... Uh... I'll start off with LMP, you go to GT, right? Uh, LMP, um, uh, the Audi R18 e-tron Quattro, the number one, uh, is in P1 with the number two in P2 with Alan McNish behind the wheel. And the Audi Sport North America R18 Ultra number four is running third. The other Ultra is uh, with Romain Dumas is um, 10 laps back. Mm. Yeah. So uh, that's where we stand right now in LMP. <laughs> All right, well, right now, Corvette uh, had two, uh, is, is, is kind of rebounding from two very long pit stops. Uh, the 73 car, I believe, had the, uh, uh, had the, uh, the 74, what, they, they had a disc change. One of the cars had a disc change. Uh, the other one had a steering rack change. Um, the 70, apparently the 70, 73 car. Um, figure this out. Um, the 51, the uh, AF course of uh, Ferrari 458 Italia, is 22 laps behind the P1 leaders, but is running P1 in GT Pro, while the 458 Italia of Luxury Racing, number 59, is P2, with the Aston Martin advantage with Turner beyond the wheel. Uh, is P3, uh, one lap back. It looks like the 74 Corvette C6R of Milner and Westbrook is in the garage right now. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, Speed has just turned their coverage back on oh, thank, for us there we in go. America. Finally, finally. If you care anything so about that. Then we can figure out the Corvettes. But definitely, um, Ferraris, are still, Ferraris are still leading, Aston Martin in P3, as you mentioned. So exiting pit lane right now is one of the Ferraris, I think it's the 61, yeah, 61 is the wall trip racing. Um, Isn't, uh, I'm just making this up. Flying Wizard's one. out, right? Because they, they haven't uh, uh, updated the uh, live The number 80. The 80 car is out. Yeah, 80 car is out, the pro car is out, while the uh, AM car is not. Is not. So, looking back, we're trying to figure out why the 74 is currently in the pits. I gotta tell you, I that, believe that the 454 needs looks, a steering rack, and the, four, and the five, 73. Eight looks, so the 458 is a great looking car, and I'm glad they went, well, last year went to 458 instead of the uh, 430. 430. Yeah, totally. Um, Audi crew showing out over there. 74, why, why is 74 in there? Got to figure this one out. I, I believe it, it's the, um, the steering rack is the, is the one that's taking the longest, I believe, and, it's, and the 73 was uh, the discs. Okay. But, uh, let me, I'm trying to get confirmation on that. I mean, somebody had, had said it. Well, right now in the paddock, uh, in the garage of the 74, everyone's just standing around looking at the car. No action being done at this point. So it looks like they're trying to figure out what's going on. Um, rear end is coming off. It doesn't look like the front end uh, steering rack at all. Well, the 74 is, uh, came back out. Let's see here. So, what? what are they doing? So it, it, it went out and now it's right back in? Or it never yeah, went? I think it went out, came right back in. Anybody have any information on what's going on with the 74? Yeah, Please advise, we'd like to know. Yeah. It's really, um, it's really annoying when, uh, Turn it when speed jumps off of, uh, of its coverage. So at this point, Lamar, it's dark. Not much going on other than the Corvette in the back. Um, we don't really have uh, much to say. Uh, the Delta Wing is out. 
Uh, Flying Wizard 80 Pro Car with Patrick Longyear and Bergmeister is out. Right. But, you know, there's still a race to be had between the Audis. The Toyotas are out of the race, both the 7 and 8 car. It was really pulling for the Toyotas. A lot to go. But well, the real news right now, yeah, I was gonna say, the real news, since you have nothing to talk about, is I'm Leo Parente. Here, I'm sitting back here watching Leo drive. Uh, wait, 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 wait. you got to be sure. Don't say his name so he doesn't turn around. He's not listening. So, so let's so, actually, uh, let's, so let's Leo, act. Yeah. Leo is currently driving the uh, Porsche RS Spider uh, in Forza 4 on Sebring. Leo's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it to my mouth. He's really smooth. Leo's on the RS Spider. Where is it? Seabird? He's really fast. He's, He's coming up to turn 17. 17. Yeah. Let's see how well he does. On the bumps. And he's in the wall. <laughs> Leo Prente puts himself into the wall. At oh, let's not oh, say wow. his name so that he does not realize yeah, that. You, know you can't restart in real life. <laughs> Man. Uh, which Corvette are we watching now? This is the 73. 73 is out, 74 is still in the garage. Uh, uh, how is it? Hey, Jordan, how are you? I'm excellent, Jeff. How are you? I'm good. How are your worldly travels going? Uh, too much. Too much travel. The only guy I know who works 26 hours a day. Uh, <laughs> I leveraged the other, the, those two. Thank you for bringing the coffee in, I think. I feel like this is my second, no, my third family. <laughs> third family. Not my second. <laughs> if you want to know what this is, this is Audi.tv. They've got in-car footage, uh, uh, in-car feeds. Oh, my God, my throat. In-car yeah. feeds with telemetry that you can follow along. It's actually pretty intense to be watching this throughout the 12 hours so far to see how fast these guys are going, how far these guys are going. Um, looks like the 74 car is getting its back end being worked on. I just saw two oil cans being put into the car. The 73 sister car is still out there. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, no, can you hand me that bottle of water? <laughs> that's really, that's where, that's now where, about, there's a Corvette where we are right now. now. Too, isn't there? There's a what? Yeah, go, go to, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's one of the speed, uh, it's on my, you know what, can you pass my laptop up here too? Oh yeah, definitely. Because that's where all my, yeah. that's where my goodies are. <laughs> all right, I got it. Sorry, I got a little worried there. That's okay. So the 73 is right in front of the 74, but they're both 7th uh, and 8th place, 6th and 7th place at this point. Nope, sorry, 7th and 8th place. I was right the first time. With the AF course of 458 Italia, uh, number 51 up front, um, that's the Fisichella car. Um, one lap up on the luxury racing 458 Italia um, at this so, point. By the way, the Corvette stream is off because speed is on. That's what they do, ah. right? So when speed goes to something else, Corvette's supposed to come on. It's very patriotic of them. It is, it is. But uh, so now, but both of the cars, number 74 um, and 73, well, 74 is now technical difficulty, so there's nothing coming through the feed. Jeff, should more, should, should, um, should more races begin with uh, the traditional Le Mans start? Um, can I, can I answer that one? Uh, sure, go ahead. Le Mans starts are the worst ideas ever, uh, and they should never be done. It, it's, it's the worst idea. Um, uh, it's dangerous. It's horrifically dangerous. Um, uh, you've got racers who are doing everything they can to, uh, to win the race. Well, and you give them throwing wrenches at each other. And you, you have an opportunity where they would potentially get grid position by not putting on their seatbelts, and they will, they will happily not do that. Um, the idea is that they run out to the, um, uh, to the other car, jump in, uh, and drive out as fast as possible. And uh, the problem with this is that uh, they save time by not putting on their seatbelts. And they don't, and then they crash, and then they die. And it's a terrible idea. Um, don't ever do it. It sounds awesome. It's terrible. Don't. Wise words from Orlov. <laughs> Yeah, you got, you got props for that. Man on couch? In, uh, on in, couch. in other news, uh, just a bone to pick, um, uh, Formula One of the 1970s, uh, gnarly stuff. Um, uh, not super amazing. People uh, crashing and dying. Also, By the way, it was John Wolfe. But, but to your point, John Wolfe crashed a privateer Porsche 917 in 1969. That's the one everyone remembers. Is the one that everyone remembers. And apparently when he jumped in, um, he didn't strap in well enough, 
And when he went off, he 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 went off in the first or second lap. No, it's like the first lap. Or the first lap, right? Right around for yeah. Okay, there you go. The first lap. Okay, first or second lap equals some first lap of the first or second I'm lap. I'm pretty sure it was the first. There lap. you go. I think it was the first lap too. Um, but crashed in a way that shouldn't have killed him. But he didn't have his his uh, his uh, straps on. Yes. So that's it. That's why they don't do it. No, it, it's pretty terrible. Um, uh, I don't know what's so great about people running at their cars. I mean, it's sort of cool, but... Then again, that's no. kind of cool. <laughs> Why I don't mean, they park their cars at the last lap and they have a foot race at the end? <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. That's, that's, actually, that's, that's actually, actually, that's genius. Yeah. And Why not? It, and, and, or maybe you have to push your car. Sure. Or do a tire change. Yeah. You have to These stop are all the significantly race. better ideas than... Everyone has stars. to stop where they are at 2 a.m. and run a mile. <laughs> okay, no, like no, a, no, 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 no. It's uh, they all pull up uh, and then they go swimming and then they get on their bicycles. And their bicycles for 10 miles. <laughs> and then it's 10 miles. It's and the then Le Mans, they go back 24 there. hours of Le Mans and, tri and triathlon. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah, no, no. It's it's the premier endurance racing event of the year. It should make it Right. Why event. should it all be about the cars? They should make, have, make the drivers do some enduring. They should do some javelin throwing as well. I feel like that would add to some of the... That's a very heavy American Motors muscle car. I don't know how they would be able to throw it. Both Corvettes are back on track. <laughs> um, both Corvettes are back on track, says Mr. Lolololol XD. Where'd Alex go? He did. Oh, he's having a cigarette. Okay. Okay. Strap on, save lives, says Roy White 05. I wish this isn't going to be an Audi song. I know, me too. Now, you know, I think that's why we're getting kind of punchy because what are we going to talk about? All right, so it's Corvette want, and Ferrari. I want Toyota to be there. It's Corvette and Ferrari, Aston Martin, you know, kind of Hail Mary. Yeah. And then it's Audi. And then, okay, we can see how well Rebellion does. And it's then, like, um, uh, it used to be back uh, before Peugeot was in here, uh, uh, Pescarolo was running. The Peugeot is, you're actually pron pronouncing it like the the Brits, so they're going to be very happy that you're pronouncing it that way. What do we call them? No, because P other, P o Peugeot. Peugeot. <laughs> Peugeot, because we're from friggin' New York. That's right. Peugeot. Okay, whatever. No, but um, you can say Peugeot. You, it's fine. Peugeot. I will. Peugeot. Per, per, whatever. Say Peugeot. So before Peugeot was in it and uh, everyone started watching, uh, there was uh, Pescarolo and they were running uh, in these really cool PlayStation green, white, blue cars. And Pescarolo is an old head from, uh, he, he's been, he was racing in, oh, he raced a bunch of stuff in the 1970s, got a bunch of wins. Um, he had a team, and uh, basically everyone who watched Le Mans uh, was just like, oh, well, you know, the Audis will win, but maybe Pescarolo will come close, and that'll be interesting. And uh, they never won. Uh, uh, not Pescarolo's team never beat the Audis, and uh, that's sort of what we're watching right now. Yeah. Uh, I'm still rooting for all the Audis to crash into each other and go out. And oh, come on. You know that's not going to happen. Stranger things have happened, but uh, no, it's not going to no, happen. No, no, no. We're doing it all wrong. We got to find a battle and rename like one position in a class as P1. Okay. Uh, as, so it's so let's, it's going to be. So let's, let's do. Let's, I got let's, it. Let's, let's, let's it ignore out. the top. Let's see who's part. the closest. Uh, who's got the closest gap? Yeah. Who's the? What's a very close gap? I think we've got Honda HPD. Let's go to GT. Let's go to GT. Screw that. Um, uh, let's see, um, how little do we all? Well, no, 35 know. seconds between the uh, number 77 Porsche 997 and the 458 AF Corsa number 71 right now. <laughs> yeah, go try. Good luck making that one interesting. All right, let's let's. I, I, all right, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We got. Why don't we do LMP2? What's how about, how about uh, you know what? Let's do the AM. The AM. The right. AM rally. Let's see who's close. Nobody is anywhere near each other. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, the top two are on the... No, 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 no. I must take one. a screenshot of this one. The number 58. Oh, did it go away? Yep, the number 58 of luxury racing is 5,035,134 laps down, according to... Uh, what? Oh. 
<laughs> Where is this? Oh, you got it. Yeah, you got to take five a million, screenshot of that. Nice. Five million laps down. Five million laps down. What, like, it's million 11. Million. Oh, my God. Uh, they, were, they obviously so did not um, They did not that's, bribe the judges. No, that's <laughs> someone running the wrong way down pit lane back and forth. <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> no, over that's, the sensor. That's absurd. That With is the sensor in his hand. the guy that's 129 laps down. Somebody from Lemons hacked that. How that, is that possible? And, and it still does not show him in last place. That's the best part uh, of that. Well, see, maybe he did bribe the judge. Oh. All right, so wait a minute here. So here we go. So we got the uh, the uh, uh, Aston the uh, the the Aston Martin GT Pro with uh, Turner. Let's see. He is the gap between him and Hensler in the uh, Felbermeyer Porsche is. Uh, Let's see. 136. No, that's see that's even too far. There's no there's no gaps short enough to make a good race right now. Delta wings out. Delta wings out. Toyotas are out. Uh, the number 24 Morgan is out. We do have some action on Is is Farrah going to going to Skype in at some point? Probably. He decided not to. So that's the deal with Farrah, yeah. Um, this shirt, uh, people are asking about. Um, eventually, they're going to go on sale. We're just dealing with sitting something. in our studio right now. We have a or bunch of them. Five hundred shirts about to be shipped out to Amazon. You're going to be able to pay buy them on Amazon.com within two weeks. Yeah, and they won't be that expensive. They'll be like twelve ninety nine or yeah. something. Yeah. We're not going to make money off of them. So, in American dollars, which, as we all know, are worth uh, just a Bought little bit more flat. than uh, than. Uh, Silicon. Exactly. 1.26 euros. Exactly. Yeah. Euro, oh, exactly. The shirts are priced such that we can give away half of them. Yes. And not lose any money. Wow. And okay. Sell the other half and not lose any money. So Very good. We're breaking even on the shirts. Thought it would be fun. Yes. All it's right. Fun. Good. But you know, and it's interesting. I didn't realize the euro was that far down against the buck right now, um, and it could actually go lower. But a dollar twenty-six. The last time I was in Europe, it was a, it was like Wait, a buck sixty. Wait, the euro is down on the dollar. Did, did, isn't it? You said what? Dollar twenty-six. So far uh, behind the news. Dollar twenty-six. So. Something like that. Yeah. Josh, check the I email. We're getting an image in from the track from George. All it's a better. funny one. Sorry. Uh, yes, Aston Martin is third, not FTD? fourth. No email. Misspoke. Um, on the Aston Martin. Uh, uh, on the Aston Martin position right now. So <laughs> any shirt size bigger than the Simon Cowell size you're wearing, Mike? Simon Cowell size. Is that the man a man boobs joke? That might I'm be. the one who makes the man boobs jokes around here. <laughs> Simon Cowell size. I like it though. No, I can't, that's good. That's a good one. <laughs> Simon Cowell size. We are um <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and you know what it need it just needs to be a V. I just need a oh, V. God. Uh, Shipping to Canada, sure, why not? Shipping to Canada? Yeah, what the hell? You're paying for it. Someone said I've been out of the loop. <laughs> Who's leading? Who do you think is leading? <laughs> uh, Audi. Oh my God! Is that, that, that how they do it? <laughs> it's it's, it's the two thousand. No, no, it's the two thousand fourteen prototype the, the, for for Porsche. Yeah, the, the, uh, They're Porsche leading. Porsche LMP car is actually. Leading. They, they just decided to come out in the middle of the race. And <laughs> it's actually a twenty thirty four time travel car. Yeah. Um. There, unfortunately, uh, this is an answer to. Uh, uh, I, all right. It's either again at five or. Agena 5 <laughs> in French. Um, uh, we can, cannot pre order the shirts because we don't have any way to. We'll, let everyone we'll take know. money, but we we're might not going to give you anything. We, 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 end up, we may end up forgetting to send it and then no, we'll get arrested and then, then Josh will take the rap because I'll be out of town. What, what, what is that? If, if, if you want to be watching take, take off this stream, Audi.tv, if you want to be watching the ACL feed, it is live.lamont-tv.com. Also live timing on there as well. Um, apparently the, the, um, the man boobs, what do you call it, the, um, the man boob inserts for the yeah. shirts are not as popular with uh, our commenters as I was hoping. Really? I, there was a few guys who said they were willing to pay up to $50, and one guy... No, that was for, that was for I think that was for Alex's shirt. Oh. Yeah, not the, the man boob shirt. Um, asked us if he could have a discount for a regular shirt. Or he was going to take the man boob shirt without the inserts and then give it to his girlfriend and then have real boobs in the shirt. 
Um, which I, I, I told him I was willing to work something out and give him my email address. I think that makes perfect sense. I'm just, you know, I'm actually more thick. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, so. It's just a joke. And that was a, the double entendre was the joke, but don't worry about it. It's fine. How uh, did well, you get the photo? Couch. What have you discovered? What have you learned in your uh, uh, Windows Mac, uh, Windows laptop? <laughs> What's it called? A Windows MacBook. <laughs> Windows, Windows Mac MacBook. Mac uh, top. I'm finding wonderful comments <laughs> like when did you from get the commenters. <laughs> uh, <laughs> still, I'm having nice. trouble keeping track of all of these cars, which are doing something interesting in France, apparently. Um, that's Sarah. Keep going. Yeah. Um, uh, any uh, historical period of Le Mans you'd like to talk about? How, how awesome Alfa Romeo was in the 1930s? Hi, yo. Well, what about Wait, that Bugatti tank car? Too much, tank too car? much excitement. <laughs> what about that Bugatti tank car that ran whatever that was? 39? <laughs> oh, man, that thing was awesome. What did that go for at Goodwood? <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I, think we're, awesome. I think we're about to show a photo from the press room at Le Mans. Josh, do we have that ready? Did you look at that? Yeah. Is, a, photo, is anybody in there? Can we show that? Cause, can we show something? Can Wait a minute. Is any, can, I, can I play Forza? Go play Forza. I'm going to go play Forza. Listen, I, I just need a little break, and I'm going to go play Forza. Yeah. The Lola <laughs> Pescarola, right? Lola Pescarola. I, I dated her. Is that the... Is that the I didn't look. Oh, Rebellion, Toyota, sorry. Oh. So you want to see the photo from the press room on the wall? Oh, they went off. They went off. Saved it. Oh, yeah, let's see what Zarin is up to right now. And we are not... <sighs> sorry about that, guys. Okay, we're going to now show what the action like at, is at the press room at Le Mans. Oh man, I love technology. Oh, there it is. So that is our true reporter in crime. What does that mean? What am I saying? Under like a pile of I don't know, that's Zarin sleeping in the press room at the at the uh the South Circuit at Le Mans. <laughs> Getting a little tired, you have? Yeah. Um it's an interesting sleeping position. It really is. I'm surprised you can actually sleep like that. Thank you, George, for taking that. Ooh, George. George took that shot. So we've dwindled down. Just me now, which is probably the worst thing possible. What are you talking about? I'm here. Uh, well, you want to take the seat? Do you want me to hop over? Come take the seat. All right. Love. But don't so, spill that coffee. We have a huge problem in this office with people spilling coffee. So I don't. Oh, you can pull them a lot. Yeah. Or okay, Leo, can someone? If you don't want to be, you're gonna take a break for a little while longer. I'm uh, back in the game, baby. Oh, do you want this chair? No. Yeah, no. you do. Yeah, buddy. Spinelli. Right here. Is this dead? This is mine. Can we, I don't want to have near Orlov, how are you? I'm doing great. You know how to put one of those on? Hey, wait, I've right. never done this before. Hey, so how was that? I want to get it to do my fourth thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Alex. So how do we start actually, this? Um, you this is this working? Game. Yeah. Welcome yeah, to the right. show. Oh, that's Hi. the last no one. I, can I do quite well. I can't believe you've tried to call out. All right. Sebastian Vettel oh, yeah, at a press conference. Going to fight the fans. I okay. can believe I did that. It's horrible. That was a terrible idea. Yeah. No, it was a great idea. Were you idea. embarrassed when Vettel said you, you're, Not your, in the least. your German was the worst possible? You could imagine. Imagine. Yeah, I was not embarrassed it's, it's in the least bit. The world's press? No, why would I be embarrassed? I'm a, German's not my first language. Well, I don't understand why Alex just had to do that. What was that about? Fan lists on computer. Oh, all right. He bent over in front of the camera. That's what was <laughs> Okay, we're going to do an, L, uh, an update on what's going on in the track action. LMP2, the number 24 Morgan is out of the running. No. And the number 44 LMP2 is at the top. So Morgan's are still up? No. No. What's up? What's up in LMP2? 
The number 35 Morgan is eighth place. They were leading the pack with the 24. The number 44 is the Starworks Motorsport Honda HD, uh, HPD. So Honda's up? Honda's up top in LMP2. Well, that's kind of cool, um, I guess. And then we've got Orica, 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 Honda, level five. And then some Zytex, and then Morgan is way down there. Yep. So that's your, that's your update on LMB2. Uh, how many computers have died in the studio because of coffee? Not many, but... I wish I had my well, laptop here, because I would love to look up not what... Not one. I would love to look up what the hell... Um, uh, uh, what's going what the history of Orica is, because I vaguely know that they ran Vipers back in the day, and apparently they ran the uh, the 91 Mazda car. Um, I don't know. But I don't know who they are. Commenters chime in. Um, uh, <laughs> where Orica, they're French, aren't they? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They actually um, won Sebring. They came close to winning Le Mans, like uh, last year, the day before, the year before. Right, Alex? I'm gonna look it up. Okay, thank you, Alex. What do you mean they came close to winning Le Mans? <sighs> well, yeah, like two years ago, right? Or no, it was Sebring. They won Sebring. They Sorry. won Sebring. They won one Sebring two years ago in, the, awesome. in the old Peugeot um, before they updated it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. They ran that awesome Peugeot with the yeah. weird um, uh, PlayStation. Wasn't it a PlayStation? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like with the orange front. It was the uh, full orange front. I that was a great moment when the old Peugeot beat the new Peugeots. Yep. That was very cool. Yeah. I think everyone was happy when it happened, except for obviously the I'm, people I'm who were running for shows. You know, we've had a lot of interesting AMS action throughout the years, especially Porsche, Corvette. I want to hear what some of the be favorite action bits are of the fans. What are you talking about? There's always the um, uh, the ending of the race between uh, the Porsches and the Ferraris. That's or the what I'm saying. Ferraris That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I want to it's, know what I, their particular. As someone who actually has to write about it, it's actually quite cliche. You're just like, oh no, it's typical, another end of the typical, race, typical, and yeah. it was amazing. Uh, checking in on the GT Pro at this point, we've got the AF Corsa 458 Italia, the number 51, um, at the top of the GT Pro field with the 458 Italia of the 59 Luxury Racing, um, uh, one lap behind, uh, comparable lap times, so 1.2 seconds off. Oh, that's a Mazda? What's no, uh, that's a dome. Dome just went off. Oh, that's a nice pop. He covered it over, though. Can we talk about Dome? Because uh, they were... Is this their first run at Le Mans with this car that they got that got shelved during the financial crisis? I guess so. I'm not going to be helpful with this. I don't follow Dome. Sorry. Yep. Would you like the background on um, Orica? Sure. Are you kidding? Of course I would. All right, it's a French racing team uh, and uh, was one of the teams that brought to... Uh, you know, some notoriety, Alain Prost, Lafitte, and Jean Alessi. No way, uh, when, did, when did Prost race for them? Uh, back in the uh, Formula 3. Uh, the owner, wow. a huge Chonac, interestingly, was also the progenitor of the Formula 1 team AGS. If you remember that from the late 90s? I don't. Okay, well, uh, I do, because I went to AGS Formula 1 school some, some years ago. No, you did not. I did. And uh, was instantly kicked out of the car by judge and instructor Eddie Irvine, who said I was a coward and should wear a dress and get out. <laughs> and even though the car okay. at that point was about five years old, I've never experienced such raw terror. Um, we got an update on the 74. Um, who's just said it in the... Uh, uh, Oliver, Oliver Gavin just tweeted um, that after uh, an incident, they have a high-speed oscillation, so they're changing the, they change the entire drivetrain. Gavin is, of course, a driver yep. of the car. 74. Um, so who's still in it? The 73 is still racing? The 73 is, fill me in. Sorry, what was that? Who, who's, the they're, they're both still racing. Uh, it was just a, a drive chain, a drive train change that they. But they're, they're both out of the pits? Um, they're just the 73 re, uh, is still out there, I do believe. But they're hopelessly far behind. Not hopelessly. Okay. Looking at the board right now, um, Not hopeless. It's really sad for the Corvettes. They're up front, and mm -hmm. they both ran into problems. Um, it's Ferraris. Uh, Aston Martin led the race at the beginning in GT Pro, and is now third. They they dropped back to sixth at one point, and now they are uh, three two laps off the lead of the 51 AF Corsa. 
You know, I really should be happy that Ferrari is, is up there because Corvette and Aston have been up in leading the GT cars in Le Mans for so long that you would think you would want to change in sort of how things are going. Yeah. But I don't like them. I don't like the Ferraris. I don't know I, why. I think they well, look obviously they. I think they look great. I don't, I don't know. Either way, Josh, we got to take a break. Top of the hour coming up shortly. Sorry, I wasn't trying to cut you off. I think you're doing a great job. I'm not. Thank you. That's for fine. <laughs> I think we are actually on the air right now. We are 11 hours, uh, 11 hours left in the race. Yes, it is 10 p.m. here and approaching 4 a.m. at the track at Le Mans. This is the drive 25 hours of the 24 hours of Le Mans. Um, I'm joined by Alex Roy of Live and Let Drive. And I'm joined by Jeff Musual of the Drive Network. And I would like to address- Hold on, we gotta, we gotta do a, a recap of everything that's happened. Recap. Okay. At the top of the hour, um, well, we are we were discussing the Corvette uh, 73 and 74. 74 was having some trouble with some high-speed oscillation, so they had to change their um, drivetrain out. Um, 73 is still out there. The Ferraris lead GT at this point. The Audis lead P1. So how did we get here? Um, well, the Toyotas were strong out of the box uh, until about five hours in when the number eight Toyota uh, ran into a, uh, or rather, a collided with a Ferrari on the Mulsanne Strait. Huge accident, caused about an hour safety car period. Uh, both drivers were uh, uh, taken out, uh, got out of the cars under their own power. Um, Davidson, right? Was it Davidson? Yeah, Davidson uh, seems to have fractured a vertebrae in his back. He's in the hospital as we speak. He seems to be okay. He's tweeting, so I guess that's okay. Um, after that, we had a run-in with the Delta Wing. The remaining Toyota, the number seven, knocked the Delta Wing off track. The Delta Wing, of course, is the Box 56 experimental class. Um, they uh, were knocked out. They tried for an hour to get the car back out on track, the, the, the prototype back out on track. I guess you call the Delta Wing a prototype, right, Leo? Yeah, okay. Either way, um, then after that, we had an uh, onslaught of issues and uh, problems. Romain Dumas and the number four Audi R18 Ultra um, hit, uh, almost hit the back end of the number 79 Flying Wizard RSR in the first chicane uh, on the Mulsanne Strait. What's up? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, almost hit the back end of the, uh, uh, the number 79 uh, Flying Wizard um, AM GT car, uh, Romain Dumas then proceeded to karate kick the R18 uh, into submission until he was able to get it back on track and bring it all the way back to pit row where it was it more is. of a suplex uh, on the uh, on the Audi. But go on, whatever it may be. Um, from there, we went into the dusk hours. Uh, the Morgan, the number 24 Morgan, actually crashed out. Morgans were leading LMP2 for quite some time. We spoke to Charles Morgan earlier. He had uh, some great things to say, but. I think only one of them are, is left in LMP2. Um, and Audi now leads LMP1 with two e-trons up top with, and one Ultra in third. And the number 80 Flying Wizard is also out of the race. That's my recap. That now was to you. really impressive. So I'm gonna ask All from memory. I'm going to ask mm -hmm. a question of uh, a co-host who almost certainly can answer it intelligently, and uh, after which Orlov can, uh, can, can speak. <laughs> Uh, which is, uh, you said that you just didn't like Ferrari. Now, I've been accused of being a Ferrari hater, accused of being a Mercedes hater, uh, and so I'm going to ask a question to both of you. 
is the reason that you just have this instinctively less than loving, you know, feeling for Ferrari's presence here? Because Ferrari, if you know, you know, being a racing company manufacturer that only builds road cars in order to finance racing, or at least the mythology goes, should not Ferrari be competing at the top level at Le Mans? And if not, why should we care? I, I, I'm sort of with you because um, you get the feeling from Ferrari that their heart's not in it. And that's what turns me off about it. Well, clearly not, because there's no factory effort. Yeah. JF? Uh, I think Ferrari just has this, uh, this, um, uh, this, they're represented by, I think, a few, uh, I, I think that the, the stigma with Ferrari is that it's, it's gentleman drivers. And of course, last year with the Mike Rockefeller accident watch up racing, um, you know, the gentleman driver was actually asked to not get back in the car because it was such a deadly, uh, such a potentially deadly accident. Um, Ferrari as a whole is a great racing company with a huge legacy, and, and of course they, they deserve every bit of it. But at the same time, um, you know, it's, it's a car brand like all these others. And, you know, you have good and bad drivers in each one of these brands and each one of these cars on the road. So I don't think the brand itself should suffer because of a few bad uh, drivers. Well, I'm going to say something I can't believe I'm going to say about missing the days of Schumacher and Formula One. Yeah. Because Ferrari, uh, you know, left uh, Le Mans in the early 70s. Uh, and if you look at their history, you know, they, after Ford tried to buy Ferrari, yeah. Ferrari said no. Ford said, fine, we're going to show you what it's all about. Came in, told them what uh, Ford means in Italian. And then after that, Ferrari, you know, had some uh, mixed years and then left in the early 70s. And since then, you know, the company which is supposed to define a race manufacturer for whom you know, road cars are a sideshow has only, under Schumacher and F1, stated their dominance there and only for a few years. And, you know, the mythology of Ferrari is a very powerful one, but it has not always been borne out except during the Schumacher years yep. in the last 40. Yeah, and that's our recent memory. This is what yeah. most people think about these and things. Well, I hate to, uh, I hate to, actually I'd love to argue with you, um, but uh, you can't forget the Ferrari 333 SP, which they ran 333 in the, SP? Yeah, yeah. And they ran in the late 90s, uh, competing for the win, and never got higher than sixth, um, which is a lot like, uh, to use another F1 comparison, Mercedes today. Uh, you know it's a full money, you know it's a full money effort, and they're not doing it, and it's just sad, and you want them to go. But you know, the th my thing about Mercedes is their brand, I mean, yes, they have a racing history, but it's such an old racing history. Like the days of Mercedes dominance are so ancient that if Mercedes dropped out of all high-end motorsports, I don't think it would have any effect on their sale of road cars. Because Mercedes road cars are not, <laughs> they're not meant to be defined by being race winning cars. And it's almost ironic that Mercedes packs their cars with incredibly powerful engines, and yet, in at least the road car space, have seeded the handling mythology to BMW, whether it's true or not. True. So Mercedes, almost, I don't think, need even to make the effort that they make, you know, in F1, and uh, their absence here, well. Just want to say we're coming up on 14 hours of our live broadcast on the drive, as 25 evidenced, hours of the 24 hours on the mall. As evidenced, as evidenced by the <laughs> level of discourse. Which, is, <laughs> which I think we're, I believe we passed the point of the longest YouTube live stream in history. Is that true? Yeah. No, Interesting. Point. I think so, yeah. Could be making this all up, but there's no one to disprove me at this Actually, point. what is really interesting, and I'm sorry that Leo's not here to discuss it, is that uh, in terms of what racing, endurance racing, does for a brand's presence, you know, even in the years that Audi, well, I'm going to use Peugeot as an example. Even in the, in the years where Peugeot won, it was pretty hard to find anybody, even in Europe that I know, who said, oh my God, Peugeot is winning Le Mans, so I got to buy a Peugeot. Peugeot. And you know, that's the irony here. And, uh, and that comes back to whether or not the technology of the winning car translates into road cars. And as we see from Audi and TDI, it really does, there's a direct relationship. And, Peugeot, I didn't feel that relationship. Yeah, but here's the weird thing. I feel that, you know, I'm sure that people are buying Ferraris because their Ferrari is running Lamar right now. I do not believe that at all. I believe, I believe people buy Ferraris because the Ferrari brand is based on a mythology of, uh, of superiority. I feel, well, 52 hours. Yeah, by the mythology of superiority. And when they were running, like, let's say, three, four, eights doing 
absolutely nothing for anyone. No one cared. Well, and people were buying Lambo. I think the Safaris established their dominance sufficiently that they don't have to. They only need to win big once every five years to maintain it, which is pretty much where they are. Yeah. If that. Yeah. Do you want to? Let's ask the question: Lamar or Nurburgring Twenty Four? Well, I'll ask the question of you because it's really one only you can answer. So I've never been there, uh, but you stated to me recently that many drivers that you know personally, I think you named even Patrick Long as one of them, but there are others that we know, have stated that they enjoy racing the 24 hours of Nürburgring more than Le Mans, and that that's where there's better racing. I don't think, it's not enjoy. I think uh, okay. what Patrick had said was that it was the most, um, the, the Nürburgring made him feel um, mortal. Okay, how long is the Le Mans course? How long is there? Eight kilometers, I think, right? And <laughs> how many major turning decisions are made <laughs> in the Le Mans course? I mean, this is actually a fun exercise. The number of, of turn decisions. 8.5 miles, sorry. 8.5. Right, so 8 let's closer. do the math Thank now. Thank you, George. This is an interesting exercise. So how long is the Nürburgring course? Uh, 14 point something. I have that guy here. What's Orla? We'll look at it. How many turns in Nürburgring? Debatable. Uh, debatable. They've um, 144, so sometimes said, sometimes somewhere around there. Well, let's call it. I'm, I'm just I, stop asking facts. Just well, these, let's stupid. speak. You can be approximate because I believe okay. at Le Mans there are not. A, we know there aren't 144 turns. There were 10, 15. Well, sorry, where? Le Mans. Le Mans. Yeah. Uh, well, let's go through them. You've got how many? Right, right there. So we've got. Uh, the Dunlop chicane, so one, two, three, uh, Mulsanne, four, five, six with the chicane, seven Mulsanne, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 with the four chicanes, I guess. 17. Well, she says 38. Who said 38 turns? Wiki listed at, uh, as 38. Okay. In the law? At, at, yeah, the circuit table side. Really? They're going to consider each chicane as one, two, three, I guess, four. Okay. Or some, what I call it. I'm talking about decisions. I mean, turning decisions. So a single turn, a chicane may have four decisions in it. I turn it out, and that doesn't include braking decisions or even throttle decisions. Just turning decisions. Yeah. So no matter how you slice it, the 24 hours of, of Nurburgring is going to have something like. Uh, well, going back to going back to an old three down, and at least three times more turning decisions. I see Leo's looking over here at where I, what I'm trying to get with this. And so, I mean, if you want to, you know, there's many ways to factor in to, to calculate the difficulty of a course to the driver and the excitement factor for a fan. And, you know, when people like insult NASCAR, and I have long been in someone who didn't pay attention to NASCAR, I had a very interesting interaction with Andy Lally, who used to drive for TRG and went from, uh, you went know. Went to Magnus. Went to Magnus, and so he's experienced in, uh, you know, uh, Grand Am racing yeah. and, and uh, NASCAR Actually, racing. Yeah, NASCAR, yeah. And Lally the, said, by the way, the 74 is still in the pits. So Andy Lally said something really interesting to me, uh, and he was one of the few Grand Am drivers who didn't think I was uh, a clown. When, uh, when he heard about the cross-country record. And he was very, very curious and really respectful. And, he's, and I said to him, so Lolly, you know, would you ever do something like what I did? He's like, absolutely not. I'm like, well, Lolly, I think NASCAR is silly. He's like, what could be more exciting for a driver than to be in a crowded pack at 200 miles an hour where the slightest mistake could kill multiple people? Uh -huh. And prior to that, it hadn't even occurred to me that racing excitement could be judged for the driver or the fans as anything but how, breaking zones and turns. And for him, it was defined by the holistic situation, which included the speed of danger factor, even in a passive, in a, a passive, uh, what's the, the absence of a decision is as important as the commitment to action. So, Nurburgring. Like there are cars streaming down at 200 miles an hour, right. even though there isn't like a, a you know, complex, you know. Mike, come on the, in. The corners are complex. Yeah. What's up? I just wanted to. Uh, interrupt? Yeah, I'm just gonna interrupt to grab some stuff here. So let's do let's round out the math here because it's an interesting exercise. I've I've always wanted to know the answer. Okay. Uh, if uh, what is the total mileage in 24 hours of Nurburgring? How many miles are covered by the winning car? 165 laps. The last one did Mantec. 
Yeah, 165. So 165 times the 14 miles yep. with the Grand Prix circuit. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, but uh, 15 one. 15 one. Let's get some so facts on this. Five for the uh, for each lap. With the Grand Prix circuit. Yeah, this is the, 15, on the 24 hours. Okay, so 15 days. five times 151 laps with Manti. 165. 165 times. Oh, I'm sorry. 165. Let's get the mileage for the last year's Victor. Who is that? That's uh, you know something over. Uh, 2,500 miles. 2,500 miles. Okay. Hang on and then see. check Wiki for what was the longest distance run at Le Mans, which I think was right, two years ago. It better be more. Go faster. Yeah, no, no, no. It, it, it will be more. All right. And I'm going to do one final calculation. I can find the calculator app on my iPad. Do you uh, have a calculator handy? What's the, what are you looking for? I like to, all right. So 165, you said 2,500. Let's just do it like this. If one lap has 144 decisions, 165 times Present 100. record is uh, 3,360 miles. All right. Uh, two years ago. Multiply this for me. 165 yeah. times 144. 23,760. Okay. Now, Nuremberg Ring. Uh, sorry, now Le Mans. Yep. Uh, what's the to uh, total highest number of laps at uh, Le Mans ever? Or just give me an approximate number? I, I can give you length. I don't know how many laps. Well, we know it's. Uh, You'll get length off the wiki. Just give me a lap, total laps of last year's winner. I'm sorry. Total you know, laps. Just a left. second. Spin you out? Uh, not yet. Okay. Right. Hey! It's Ian. Sorry for screaming. I just, I just pissed off Josh by saying hey. Sorry. Ian. Ian has joined us from Fastlane Daily. I can't uh, wait for Leo to come back and, and here for the night shift. Critique as far as he can go. Yeah. All right. I can't wait for Leo to return and critique okay. the metrics by which I'm judging the relative difficulty of these races. Shoot. So uh, last year the record number of laps was three hundred. Was uh, the the winning number of laps three fifty five. Three fifty five. So multiply three fifty five by thirty eight. Thirteen thousand four hundred ninety. Okay. So. Uh, Nurburgring, ring, 23,760 turning decisions <laughs> yeah. and versus 13,490. Uh, I think Leo, well, Leo's busy, but I think the most astonishing thing ever, we, this is back at the Nurburgring 24 uh, documentary we did, was the number of gear shifts was something like 130,000. For Nurburgring. For Nurburgring. Well. Because then you're, you're equating a gear shift into the with equation the of a, a turning decision. Right. Yeah. How many cars enter the Nurburgring 24? Over 300. 300 cars versus yeah. Le Mans. Yeah, you've got, you've got something like 18, 19 classes. So in terms of raw excitement. There are four cars per pit stall at Nurburgring. <laughs> and, well, and, and like even a few cars in a spill-off area outside the pit lane because there wasn't enough room. Interesting. I'm going to pay more attention to the Nurburgring 24 but next year. But why does this get more attention? Why His does Le Mans get more attention? The historicity of it. History. Historicity. 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 Um, uh, history uh, and uh, money. I'm sure. Okay. Well, a race, you know, legacy is defined by the participants. A car is just a brick without a driver, and the history is here. Yeah. So. Okay. Great job, Speed, throwing the microphone into the face. Why don't you just stick a cigarette <laughs> in there with him? Oh, it's Kaufman who hit Rockefeller last year. Hi. And according to uh, Sean Heckman of the media, media, um, the media uh, uh, consiglieres, <laughs> um, uh, a very important figure in the financing of many teams. Therefore, forgiveness is granted for um, the uh, double clutch performed on Audi last year. <laughs> oh boy! All right. Historicity is a real word. Someone claiming you. It is. Hundred, sorry. I'm Historicity is a real word. There are people who study it. Went to an engineering school. What do I know? Um, 156 laps last year at the Nürburgring with the Manthai, not the 165. For those who are asking when I'm going to get in, onto the uh, Forza game, uh, as the night grows long and the knives are <laughs> removed from sheaths, and uh, less people are awake, and my competition will be weaker, I shall grow more closely 
uh, interested in the idea of racing. <laughs> Question for you: Would you want to be there right now? Absolutely. Oh my God! What's that's oh, happening? Another here? accident Hunting. into this Mulsanne corner. That's right. a that's a rough one. That's the exact same location that the uh, Toyota Eight hit earlier. Yeah. That's exactly the same location. So uh, again, See, which this is this is really good because like forty years ago, no one would have replaced that Armco. They were like, ah, we'll, well they, have a safe they didn't have to because car. they didn't have to because the chicane wasn't there. <laughs> so again, would you want to be there right now? Absolutely. My dream in Even life. Even though at races, you're notorious, uh, not just you. It's notorious that you don't really see the race. Oh, you, oh, you mean, would I want to be there as a fan? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Really? Yeah, because it's... Um, I had no idea what was going at the, on at the race last year. Yeah, you have no idea what's going on right now. I uh, sure do. <laughs> Ask me anything. Well, okay, yeah, you do. But, I mean, I'd want to be there with... It's so um, easy for you to back down. <laughs> I would want to be there with a laptop, with Wi-Fi and the whole business. And, you know, sure. Uh, are we gonna stay on his? <laughs> Is there anything greater than standing within two miles of a top-class prototype or F1 car at full throttle, and then hearing two of them and knowing, even without seeing, which two cars have just passed? It's, I mean, race cars are the highest form of the last piece of creation, which um, it's, the, it's the final manifestation of so many arts that have been developed. You know, and uh, uh, for one purpose, to move a person from A to B. Yeah. And it's the most democratizing creation of all mankind because not only it, can it be beautiful and functional, but it moves. You can bring it with you. A house is as important, yet it's um, an isolating uh, thing. But a race car is, it's the end. It's the end of creation until we build spaceships and whatnot. But, uh, and so who wouldn't want to hear that in person? You know, it's why people who never own a Ferrari wear the shirt. Very good point. Very good point. Well, how's our chat doing? Uh, are they commenting on my false intellectualism? So. Question. Someone said, Alex, you just blew my mind. <laughs> Is that oh, true? Oh, yeah. I think he meant blew his brains out. <laughs> <laughs> In the words of Simon Cowell, unbelievable. Did you like it? So, uh, question to the crowd, or question to you, Alex. And Orlo. What's up? How do you improve the viewing experience to fans at a race? Ah, super Jumbotrons. <laughs> Jumbotrons. No, you. It, it's Actually, I think that's uh, one of the. And I'll tell you the other thing: Google Glass, the mo one of the most important things Google Glass will bring to people is nothing to do with shopping. What's Google Glass? Google Glass is, is the glasses which have the oh, uh, yeah. the, the wireless uh, you know unit attached, which will deliver augmented reality and superimposed data. This you is know, real. Yeah, it exists now. It's just yeah, not for so sale. Yeah, exactly. thing, Google. I mean, right Google, off the bat, Google Glasses. Google Glass will have many things. Why, what are we doing? I'm, I'm speaking is what's, what we're doing. I'm speaking. Uh, okay. I'm speaking intelligently for once. So. No, no, I'm listening. I'm listening. Uh, Google Glass, I mean, a lot will affect, change the way we live in many ways, but we'll discuss it. I want to talk about it only in the context of car racing, but really sports in general. Obviously, a lot of the interest behind Google Glass will be to get people to see ads as they walk down the street and oh, pass. We have an Audi off. Yeah, number one is Audi that, off. Is that number what that one is? Audi just no. to... Was that the Audi oh, that went on? Was that the Audi that Doesn't, did? didn't look, The lights did not look like Audi lights. Hold on, no, that's something I, I, else. It's the number one. Yeah, number one. If Heading I, for the pits right now. This is well, Alex. That was a great. I'm not. I wasn't trying okay. to cut it's you okay. off. It's okay. We'll, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. Okay. Um, no, let's try to sound. figure out. In the pits yeah, right now. Yeah, it is behind you. Number one is pulling into in. the pits. It's in actually. Yep, it's there. It's right here, Alex. Let's see what they do. If it, how how off? So this is of a uh, Lauderer, Trillier, and Fossler. What are they doing? Looks like there's confusion there. This is the number one Audi e-tron hybrid. They do. Um, leading the race at this point. Doors are open. Doors are open. Confusion in the Audi tent as to what the hell is going on. Um, they're checking everything out, I guess, to make sure it's all good. Just want to make sure nothing is broken. 
Looks like the back is uh, a little damaged. They may want it. They're deciding as to whether or not to take the back off. Man, that driver just leaped in. Yeah. Um, stand by, everyone, and they're off. Where do they go? Uh, well, one feet is Great faster shot. than the other, but this they're about to get off right here. Yep, he's gone. No changes. And Leo, up, oh, Leo Cash. Okay, so the uh, number one Audi e-tron <coughs> Quattro, the new flywheel hybrid um, from Audi, has just went off, gone to the pits, and is back now out on track. Look at those stands, so full of people. When's our, se when's our second dinner happening? I don't know, I'm getting hungry. I'm ready for second breakfast. We still have uh, pizza. I really haven't had it. It looks like zombie pizza now. Well, I'll eat it. It's like ghoul pizza. Anyway, come back. Oh, The number 73. Well, I have three, so Yeah, do you want it? Do we have more? No, we put the shark on for you. I'm going to go back there. Go for it. Yeah, go ahead, man. He was lucky. Whoever was driving the Marcel, I think, was driving the number one, was very lucky. He came probably about three feet from the wall. Fessler. That right. is a. I'll that is a. Spectator. What happened? Uh, number I one Audi e tron went off. Welcome back, Leah. The three was back in fifth or fourth or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leah, I'll give you a seat back in a moment after I finish my thought. No problem. I'm okay. So calm and relaxed. <laughs> this is the best I've ever seen Jay from usual <laughs> dressed. Thank you. Um, okay, Alex, what were we were just talking about. Uh, oh, glass. so number two is the number two Audi is now uh, the number two Audi is now leading. Um, Ignition Christensen. Yeah, looks like it. Oh God, here we go. <laughs> this is gonna be good. They're not gonna want to give that up. Oh, here's the off. Yeah, it was just uh, he got very lucky. Look at how close this was. I mean, uh, if you were wa if you actually happen to be watching this race, I mean, it's crazy. The these cars are cornering real hard all the time. Very lucky, right there. And uh, it's no surprise that there would be, you know, you could spin. I mean, it's not. Um, let's see if McNish. Hold on, I think McNish may not be P1, but the gap is very close. Oh no, McNish is P1. Okay. Uh, by the way, he wasn't that lucky. There's a back in the car. That could have been much worse. Yeah. yeah. Looked like he missed the turn in just enough. Yeah. Those were after the Porsche curve, the yeah. Ford ones. Maybe he turned in too early or something. Late. Yeah. And there we go. The number two Audi e-tron Quattro hybrid is uh, leading the pack with Alan McNish up front. Should be fun. Oh, is that pizza any good? Maybe I'll get some later. Alan McNish. All right, Alex, you want to finish your thought? Uh, the question. It's a 50, 53 second, second lead right now, so this is still tight. The question was how could race coverage be improved for people at the rate at a race when Google Glass uh, becomes widely available and reasonably priced? Uh, augmented reality, which is sort of a, you know a technology that when you see, you see Minority Report, you see. Uh, uh, Tom Cruise walking through the shopping center, you see as he passes windows and ads are served to him that are customized to him. Uh, that is, to me, a, mo a nightmarish future for us. But augmented reality, and Google Glass is the first iteration of this, will be awesome for race coverage. Because if you look at speeds coverage and you look at uh, speeds coverage of Le Mans versus speeds coverage of NASCAR, you see that each race series has its own set of data that they offer on screen, uh, whether it's uh, uh, whether it's, say, in NASCAR, the arrows and bubbles that are over the vehicles as they move, mm -hmm. uh, which is wonderful. Uh, yeah. And if you look at football games and you see, you know, the uh, logos that companies pay to have superimposed over the field. It, mm -hmm. When Google Glass becomes widely available, you're going to see all the teams that separately have separate cams, separate, uh, you know, telemetry, separate overlays, in addition overlapping, but sometimes not overlapping with what, say, uh, 
and the ACO offers uh, with their uh, coverage. You're going to see all these things combined into a data overlay that the fan can select from in terms of what he wants to see. So if I was a Toyota fan today with Google Glass at Le Mans and augmented reality was available, I could select the features. I would only want to see three competitors' overlays as I watch the cars go past. And I'd want to be able to see the Audi approaching, the Toyota approaching, and I'd want to see the relative positions. And that is when racing will take an enormous leap forward in, I guess, information and enjoyment for the fan who really cares. And it'll be possible for someone who knows nothing to go to race for the first time and select the amateur instructional data overlay. Mm -hmm. The pro can go and get his overlay. And that is going to be an awesome future for lovers of racing. And every form of professional sports will benefit from that technology. So that's my answer as to how to make it improve. And if I were... So this is Google Glass? Google Glass. If I were the ACO, or if I were an individual team, if I were Audi, I'd contact Google tomorrow and say, we would like to be the beta tester for augmented reality systems. We'll provide Google Glasses to our VIP, you know, uh, ticket buying fans who come to the races and it will make the experience of our team amazing. Other teams will suffer for it. Oh, sure, because when you're actually there, it's, you know, you can't perceive what's really, I mean, you just see sort of blur. At night, if, you have, if you're wearing a pair of Google glasses, and at night you see a lights approaching, and then you just flick on my overlay, and you see who's coming. Yeah. You see the closing rate, you yeah. see, and I mean, that, because yeah. look at how hard it is I mean, for yeah. us to gather data here in New York with 10 laptops, 18 people, and Leo, who knows more than anyone I know, and even I have a hard time gathering what goes on without the hourly update. And that's a great future for racing fans and fans of all sports. So. Uh, Alex is done with his second intelligent remark of the 25 hours <laughs> of Le Mans. I'll be back in a few hours after playing Forza. My, your time is approaching as is my likely loss to one of you out there. Bottom of the hour, 10.30 p.m. in New York, which means it's 4.30 in the morning at Le Mans. Middle of the night at Le Mans. I'm gonna get my laptop. 53 second lead for the number two. Uh, at the wheel, Alan McNish and the Audi R18 e John Quattro. Wanna take your lava out for Leo? Leo, I'm gonna give you your seat back so I can, um, excuse me then, a quick break. Leo didn't say a word about what I said, which means I might have said something he didn't know. Sounds to me. Love is there. He's still wearing it. What's that? What's that? Oh, he never put it on. <laughs> Good. I love how Professionals. We yeah, we tried. Right. Okay. Um. <laughs> All right. So, what does, uh, Corvette have to go back home to Detroit and do some Ricky Ricardo with the uh, board of directors? <laughs> um, they were up front, too. Small stuff. Well, and, and if this thing is, is picking me up already while I'm doing this, it really was a snowball effect. The, uh, the wheel guy yeah. missed the, the nut. One thing. And then it all tumbled home. They had the problem that they had to repair the mechanical when they lost the wheel, then pushing too hard created more problems. Yep. Yep. Now, what happened to Magnuson in 73? Is he gone too? No, bit? Uh, says he's out and running. And, but they're not in the top 10 anymore. Uh, not in the top three anymore. No, no, no. I'm watching the Vantage now. The Vantage is only two laps down from P1. Here comes Aston Martin. That's going to be an interesting battle. Very interesting. Uh, you know, Leo, we have a question from the commenters. If you yeah, want. hi, by the way. So, uh, uh, Sunrise should be coming up in what, an hour and a half. Hour and a half. Yeah. So, uh, can you just talk us through what's going to be happening with, um, uh, from a driver's perspective, what that means about being on track? Uh, you're tired, the windshield's dirty, there's junk everywhere, the glare's going to be in your eyes. That's right. So, the challenge really becomes it's almost like night racing. You start to use your memory of where the track is and uh, who's, who's number 48 and what? one of the uh, LMP2 cars I think the Murphy car and you start to anticipate where the track is because you're not going to have a clear look at it now I've not driven Le Mans so I'm not going to pretend to be that expert but sure driven at dusk driven at dawn it ain't fun is it easier to drive it uh, is it easier to drive at night than it is to drive in in, in, in dawn 
it's easier to drive without the glare. So yes, if that's your question. That's interesting. At least for me it was. I mean, it, it just, the night, there was that consistency. Right. And uh, the glare, uh, we, were, we were at Miami, late afternoon practice session, mm -hmm. heading into turn one and all you had was glare. <laughs> I hated it. You just had to imagine when it was time to turn. And I'm looking out of the side of the car saying, okay, here's the wall, time to turn. Right. That was not fun. That, that, that became religious. You had your, uh, your Santa moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the cursing in the car was amazing. Very interesting uh, strategy, pit stop strategy for the 51 course of GT Pro. 12 stops, everyone else is 13 or 14. Yeah, and, this? I'm, and I'm trying to figure out where they snuck it in, but they're, 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 they're getting it done. So unless they did something early and stayed out on tires when everyone went to some type of intermediate, Number 48 has spun according to Quattro World. Which yeah, is they have. a P2 car, right? Yeah. They're, de they're one of the lower Orca Nissans. Thank you, Josh, or whoever's tweeting from Le Mans press room. We have George from Fortitude. Hey, George. Still awake with us. And Zarin, who hopefully <coughs> has not been molested on the floor at the press room. Yeah, we're looking at it. Um, that's 40 the 48. Spun. That's just shy of pit in, I do believe. Yeah, that's just shy of pit in. It's a dangerous place for everyone to be right there. All those dry, all those corner workers. I would not want to be doing their job right now. It's an awesome shot there with the Ferris wheel. Yeah, what, what did happen the with the Rebellions? They're in the pits an awful lot. Uh, Here we go. So we still have a Rebellion P4 before I talk too fast. They're four and six, so yeah. I guess it's not as bad as I thought. Uh, I will say that um, uh, two of the top three Audis have pitted more than the, uh, than the Lola's, so that's something to go for you. I keep looking at this back bumper. <coughs> Sorry. And I didn't, I didn't, I, was that a, I didn't realize that was a, an e-tron that spun. Yeah, it was an e-tron that spun. Oh, these are awesome. I have a feeling I know what Alex would say, but do we like this light-hued white and silver paint scheme for the e-tron versus something more dark or German or typically Audi? Uh, that, no, it's quite typical Audi. That's the um, uh, that's the scheme they used to run in um, uh, in their tin top years. Um, so that's what they'd run on all their like whatever they were Audi one thousands or their old quad their Quattro um, uh, touring cars. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, except that th theirs were better because they were a bit more linear and uh, the, the gray, they had a darker gray as well. Um, uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the 5,000. It's ringing a bell, yeah. Well, as George just pointed out, white was the original German car. That's true. That's true. And, and you know how they became silver, right? Everyone knows the story? That's a very controversial story, but I'm... Um, uh, oh, several, uh, no. One. So who wants to go? Go ahead. No, you go because then I'm going to debate it. No, then I'm not going to let that happen to me, so you go first. Okay, well, reportedly, uh, they were, uh, uh, it was the Mercedes cars were running uh, some race, and I guess it was the 30s, and, um, oh, whatever the hell his name was, uh, from, um, Hermann, uh, you know, the great overbearing uh, Mercedes crew chief, saw that the cars were just slightly overweight, and so he ordered that the uh, cars would have their paint stripped away from some. Um, now, this is what he wrote in his own book uh, on his German account. Accent? I did have to do it with a German accent because he's a, this. Vettel already put, uh, put you in his place. Put you in his, your place. And Vettel failed to put me in, in my place. Wow. Wow. Please continue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is something that I, I'm very sorry that I'm blanking on this guy's name, but uh, th this whole story comes from his own book. Um, that he wrote accounting his, his years with the Grand Prix teams. I'm guessing. Was it Neubauer? That's who it is. It's Neubauer, yeah. Neubauer. Go ahead. Uh, so this is Neubauer, who is this fantastic guy. He's got one of the best lines about racing. He said, um, uh, the racing car driver is the loneliest man in the world. Really cool guy. Um, uh, 
but he came up with this story. He came up with he, he writes this whole story about how they were just barely overweight, and in the night they they took all the paint, they buffed all the paint off their car, took it back to be re reweighed, and it was just underweight. Um, but there are conflicting accounts on it, and uh, it may have just been him being typical Noy Bauer and just sort of making a story when there wasn't one, and just deciding that the cars were going to be silver. Thank you. I will provide a link to the uh, to the uh, historical debate on this in the comments if if you're tired of watching cars go around in the nighttime. Interesting fact point right now. As of this point, we've streamed 14 hours and 30 minutes on the dot with over 8,589 hours streamed across the world individually. So it got picked up and kind of multiplied? Just by how many people. We've had, already had 54,000 unique visitors. That's what I love about the internet. We can take a 24-hour race and do 48 hours of programming. <laughs> well, if you, if you I know, count no, all I know, the I different know, people I watching, there's been well, over uh, 8,594 hours consumed of content, and 54,259 unique individuals have tuned into this. Wow. Yeah, last year. Thank we're, you. Last year was 64,000. We're not done. I know. We're not done. Because the race is, honestly, well, we're in the middle of this race. Picking up viewers right now. Yeah, it's, we're in the middle of this race, and this thing's going to pick up at the end. The Audi battle is actually going to be allowed to go green against each other. I, I don't think the GT battle is done yet. Yep. P1, P2 could get exciting. Yeah. And there are enough amateurs out that I can do an amateur hitting a P1 joke, but I'm not going to. It's okay. Nah. No Red Bull or five-hour energy drinks consumed at this point, at least on this desk. I haven't had any. Coffee, though. I haven't had coffee since 8 a.m. this morning. In fact, I, I had half a Subway sandwich. And hey, who gets the credit for bringing the coffee? Who gets the public Jordan credit? Jordan Vega over there, good friend. Jordan, you're always welcome to join us if you want to. Good conversations, not history. It's okay. It's okay. Well, where did Alex go? I don't know. Uh, I thought he was going to race. I thought so, too. I, d I was doing some laps with Seabrook. Ah, I saw you crash in Orange Spider. You know, Ocean you, you can't down. you can't turn in on six flat. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> on six gear. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I like it when the parts guy comes over to the Porsche teams at the end of the race yep. to add up the bill. <laughs> and I said to him once, I said, you really shouldn't show up here smiling. The teams really don't appreciate that part of it. He <laughs> says, <laughs> so this is my happy time. Yeah, no kidding. Oh God! More crew guys running down pit lane. That can't be good. No, no, no. This is the the 4 a.m. jog. The Murphy. <laughs> See, think, they just gave up. I think that's the Murphy P2 people because they. Oh, they're oh. going to go find their car. My joke was ruined. There was a car that actually was in distress. And I shouldn't make fun of this. This is these are not fun times. I will say that the, the number 48. Yeah. I'm going to come back to this paint How's strip. Stripping thing in five minutes. Okay. How's the Morgan doing? Well, I, I read the email from the press release of the Morgan retirement in P2. So we need to go check. The number this. 35 is still running. And that's the Nissan. <coughs> uh, that's the, the Nissan powered one, yeah. yeah. And to be frank, oh. the last wheel. That is not going to happen. I'm thinking up. Last time I checked, we had a Starworks Honda in P2 being chased by pretty much Nissan, 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 Nissan. So let's see where the Morgan version of it is. Uh, man, I, I, I don't find it. I got Star in P2, Starworks HPD, to your point, Orica Nissan from Paycom, the Signatech Orica with the little <coughs> anime on the uh, fin, Orica Nissan, Orica Nissan. I think that's the Murphy car, the 48, which was running fifth in class. One, two, three, that's four, five, history. and no longer is. Scott Tucker's level five. I'm sorry, guys. The Morgan is in uh, at the back of the P2 field. 193 laps against 201 leading the class. So we're getting a, a bit of daylight right now over the circuit and Alex Roy, yes? Uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, to mm. present to anyone watching uh, how I want to execute the Forza race against me. Uh, I have a list of gamer tags, probably about 25 tags at this point. 
Um, and I'm going to set up the game in about uh, five, ten minutes. And then I'm going to start sending out uh, invitations to the list sequentially based on uh, you know, who I submitted first. Uh, I want to do a race of 16 cars. And we're going to do four laps of Le Mans. We're going to do, uh, we're going to run the rules as real Le Mans. So it's going to be ABS off, traction on, uh, R1 class, um, uh, upgrades allowed. Uh, we're not going to force stock tuning. And, uh, you know, if people drop out and uh, don't immediately jump back in, and when the race is over, I'm going to go sequentially down the list of gamer tags and add the next person who's not been involved. Uh, last year, uh, I mean, I love doing this, and I'm not going to pretend I'm the best driver, but uh, I'd like this to be as fun and realistic for everyone as possible. And I know it's Forza, so don't bother coming to me and saying GT5 is better. I don't have it here. So, uh, if somebody wow. starts ramping, and we're going to do damage on, full on, uh, that's the way it's going to go, with tire wear and the whole deal. If you're going to start ramming people at the start line and hope that you survive the damage model, and then limp to the finish and take the win, I'm gonna boot you. And uh, I'm not gonna say that I'm gonna follow the line correctly because it's not that good, but it's gonna be very obvious to me if you're out there ramming people, you wanna go to war, I'm gonna boot you. Uh, and um, that's the way it's gonna go. So I'm gonna get up and set up the game and it's probably gonna take 10 or 15 minutes to fill out the grid, uh, but when it's full, I've got 16 people, we're gonna go. If you don't get included, don't worry, I'm probably gonna play for about two hours, take a break, and then start all over again. So, um, it would be very disappointing to have you enter and then find that after two laps, you're tired. Uh, <laughs> sim racing is easy, because we will all survive, but four laps of Le Mans, if you're really serious about it, can be pretty tiring, and um, given my girth and health, I'll be sweating <laughs> like a pig by the end. You're kidding. So, no, you're kidding. I'm a sweaty mess. So, if you've got headsets and you can communicate, uh, oh, I'll yeah, have yeah. a headset on and hopefully okay. it will work. So, I'm going to go set it up now and I'll probably pop back in in five minutes let you know that when, when it's ready. The game is going to be called Drive uh, Forza Race. Drive Space Forza Race. If you want to search for it. Um, all right. I will be back. Have Great good, stuff. Have a good run. Looking at uh, the number one Audi has surpassed the number two. Alex, can we film you? Sure. Let me tell you how bad it is to me to be an American team in GT racing at Le Mans this year. Yeah. There are nine cars running. The yeah. bottom three are the American cars. Corvette, Corvette, Flying Lizards. <sighs> guys, 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 guys. It's a Shonda. And Ferrari, where I was ready to mentally slam them for just running private teams. Yeah. One and two. The Vantage Aston Martin three. Two more Ferraris. It's close. I mean, we've got one lap between first and second, and second and third are on the same lap. But then there's a gap. Yeah. Hey, he's your friend. I just come here to work. You all right over there, Alex? Yeah. That was my fault. I left it, I left it at Leo's size. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alex, win the damn race, whatever you do, OK? Um, All right. <coughs> I'm going to ruin the surprise. Yeah, are, are we going to spa? I don't know. Don't know In yet. In about 15 minutes. Yeah. In about 15 minutes we're going? 15. To 15 minutes we have a break. Are there any comment or questions we should chat about? Stick oh, with me. Stick, well, stick with me. Yeah. That's actually the first like on camera yawn. Actually. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Not even midnight. Um, the number two, uh, R18 Neutron with McNish is four and a half seconds behind Lod Andre Lauderer in the number one. So they Audi traded R18. position yeah, in pit stops? Um, or no, I think it was on track. Wow. Correct me if I'm wrong, boys and girls. Uh, <laughs> What's so funny? 
People are all like, what was that? What was that loud noise? Alex is destroying shit. <laughs> <laughs> what, didn't he already do that earlier? Ian, Ian is here uh, now uh, producing the show with Ian Josh. Whalen. Oh, yeah, hey. Um, Hi, Ian Whalen. Uh, producer man. By the way, did you did you happen to see how the set was destroyed uh, earlier today? I heard about it. How did you hear about it? I told him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, thank Alex right for that one as well. <laughs> I just loved Alex's reaction. He destroys it and then just sits there. <laughs> He's expecting there. someone he else. He got his iPad and just started like carried on like nothing happened. <laughs> and just expected as if it was just going to magically come back to life. And it did. And uh, I'm going to piss Derek off by destroying his set. So fast just laugh. You want to join in uh, to the live stream um, to see the feed, the ACO feed live. Dot uh, sorry, um, live.lamal-tv.com. We've got the live timing there as well <laughs> as um, uh, feeds throughout the uh, some of the in-car cameras at the track. Sunrise will be in approximately, uh, officially in about an hour, but you're going to start seeing the sunrise over Lamar soon. We're going into happy hour. Let's start pumping this up. Happy Ooh. hour comes in about 10 minutes. Oh, because of the dawn? Yeah, that's happy that's hour. They call the it happy hour? It's when the cars get the fastest. Really? Yeah. Well, cars, explain that. Why, why do, are the cars fastest at happy hour? Well, track's cool. More light on the track so they can see. Okay. Um, and the track is rubber dip. I'm not debating you. Before it gets too hot, it's going to be good. Plus, the drivers enjoy it. What are we going to do at happy hour? I don't know. What are we doing at happy hour? I think we're going to have a drink. What do you normally do at happy hour? We're going to get we're gonna get a little bit faster. All right. Okay. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, we might even do a shot. Um, I have a drink before I drive? No. <laughs> no, no, Absolutely no. Absolutely not. What's the Spirit of James Hunt. What's the third to last <laughs> line of every drive credit sequence? Uh, right. I'll give a free t-shirt to the first commenter who, said, who mentions this. In the what is the comment. third to last comment in every Drive episode in the credits? Free t-shirt to someone that actually gets this right. It's really easy. I'm, oh. I'm looking at the comments. Always wear a condom? Was that it? Stop it. <laughs> no? I'll wrap that shit up. I'm wearing one right now. Just in case. Okay. Let's see who... Okay, um, someone almost got it right. They not added, quite. No, Obviously no, it's not got too many diehard drive fans. Nope. Wow, you bastards. Or maybe just people who don't watch the credits, which I totally understand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, got it. How Mine's so slow. So what, what is it? Yeah, I got it. He what? just had caps in it. No 4-speed 91. Drive safe. Okay, no 4-speed 91. Uh, send an email to josh at tangentvector.com. If you don't know how to spell it, then you fail. You lose. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't get your shirt. You're about to get so many emails. I still argue that drive... I get all the emails from, from spam emails from Tangent anyway. Okay, all right. I will still argue that drive safe implies wearing a condom. No four speed 91. You just want a free t-shirt. Free drive shirt for getting that right. Congratulations. We are 11 minutes away from happy hour. Let's start getting excited. I thought we were 11 minutes from done. No. no. How many hours to go? Uh, ten. I'm, I'm done with math. Ten point. hours? About ten hours, right? About. Ten. I don't know what time zone we're on. It's uh, ten hours to go. Okay, four. Yep, you're right. Four, uh, yeah. Uh, ten hours and ten minutes, as a matter of fact. Very okay, good. George is heading out to su for sunrise. We're going to start seeing sunrise over the circuit very shortly. So this is a happy hour for photography, too. Yeah, that's actually get some real glamour all the stuff. photographers are now heading out to the track to get their glamour shots. It's going to be the best part of the day for photos. Should be interesting. You, uh, you walk the track. George yeah. is out there. Where, where do you like photographing race cars at Le Mans? Uh, afternoon, Dunlop Curves. Okay. Um, morning? Um, on which side of the bridge? Like coming over through the bridge or from the back? Uh, if I remember correctly, it was actually before the bridge. Got it. Yeah. Uh, and actually after the bridge. Those little there. S's. Uh, actually, and also onto the Molson Street. Um, that's actually an awesome place with the tree line. Yeah. On the, the that's a fast corner. That's a very fast corner, but that's also a good spot. For photographer's sake, you want to have some slow spots and whatnot. 
Um, how do you capture speed? I mean, I know they're going a ton and a half. photos? Yeah, down the oh. sun, but how do you capture it? Florida, do you hear me? Long exposure. Got to get a long yeah. exposure. But what does that do? Create the blur? Yeah, exactly. You want to have a blur so to show that, but you also want to put it in perspective. You want to have a foreground. We're not going to get into this conversation. It's very boring. No, well, thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. Hey, Alex. Cool. Eight minutes to happy hour. Eight minutes to happy hour. Should I get another coffee? Uh, what happened? You're not. I don't know what he's doing. Hey, Josh, w let's get something ready to go. Okay, hold on. Alex is going to have an announcement. Apparently, it's a red flag session over Alex at Alex Roy, game. everyone. Alex the, Roy, everyone. All right, the game is created. Uh, oh, and um, I need 14 more players to log in now. Uh, the game is called is it hot in here? Uppercase hey, Drive uppercase Space whoa, 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 whoa. LM Space Race. Uh, you can search for it. The first 14 people fill out the grid. We start. Uh, alternatively, if you want to look me up and um, send me a friend message, I'll accept you. Uh, I am uppercase, first word, Pulitzer, P-O-L-I-Z-E-I, -E space, uppercase A, uppercase R, lowercase O-Y. I'm going to go back to the chair and sit and wait for the next 14 M -N -O -P. cowards <laughs> to log in. And I look forward to... Can you, can you, you tell me you're changing something, John? Alex Roy, everyone. Wow. Never heard of it. Why are you going to do off the set. All right. Oh. Up. For some reason, Seth McFarland keeps coming up on my screen. Cool. When do you I don't know why, but it does. There's a car off. We have a crash. It looks like the Porsche serves. Oh, heavy crash. Uh, that's a GT car. Went to George Clooney University. That's a Porsche. Is it? That's a Porsche. I don't know. Oh, safety car. We, we are full course yellow safety car right before happy hour. Any, anyone see why? No, it looked like a Porsche. Don't know who. There aren't, there aren't a lot of them left. The Audi RS5 safety car is out there leading the pack, picked up the top of the GT class. Can you, uh, oh, that's actually the can you identify what optional equipment is on that car? Shut what, up. Which package? Oh, that's the. Uh, Hold on, let's try to identify. This is the Porsche. This looks like coming out of Porsche curves, and that's not the way to do it. Wow. And it's a Porsche. Yeah. Porsche Rear number 75. First. Typical 911. I was not going to say that. They've improved the car so much. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a Porsche. I believe it's number 75. 75? Yes. Right, Pro speed. Wow. Honestly, you lost me. I can't see it. Oh, I see it. What is it? Uh, Pro Am with 75, the black and white one. Okay. I'm trying to figure out who crashed out there. Oh, yeah. The Porsche curves. Who crashed? Uh, oh, it may have been an Aston. Uh, boy, it looked Porsche to me, but if it's the Aston, it's the remaining one because the amateur. Aston is already out. That looked Porsche. It looked Porsche as well. There are your lights. They now glow two colors when they're in pit lane on the front of the uh, Audi. That's so cool. What? The LEDs. I hate everyone. The LED marker lights, they color code them so you can identify oh, yeah, which no, car on the team. That's awesome. Yeah, the ACO is saying that safety car after number 75 Porsche hit wall at the Porsche curves. Where else? That was the remaining Pro uh, GT, no? No, it was this one. Amateur. Oh, am okay. All right. We're whittling down Safety the. Safety workers are cleaning the track. We're uh, whittling down the orange cars little by little. Yeah. That looks like. Up. Help me do the English, the uh, European to English conversion. How big is ninety centimeters? Ninety centimeters. Yeah. Yes. Really? Yeah. Just I under three feet. Inches. How much? Oh, 90? Nine 90. zero. 30 to a foot. Yes. Oh. 35 yes. inches. Yes. That's three feet. That's three feet. So anybody wants to race, tell yeah. them to submit their tags right now. Anybody who would like to race right now on Forza, you must submit your tags at this very moment. Because he's out here, was, uh, we're having trouble with the public forum. Thing. Okay. Public submit forum. your tags right, right now. now. Okay, we are coming to the top of the hour. Happy hour is approaching four minutes. 
Are we do, doing a break type thing? We will be doing a break. By the way, uh, getting to the bottom of this uh, uh, paint scraping story Ooh, is They're holding everyone at pit lane, pit in, pit out. Oh, they're waiting for the safety car. Yeah, yeah. What they're doing. And again, the ACO rules, and I don't know the details, are a little different than ALMS rules, so you just get put in the back of the line, I think. The WEC rules, you mean? Whatever I said, yeah, yeah. 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 Whatever I said versus what I meant. Okay, they're sending out the guys stacked up in pit lane. All right. So it's kind of different at uh, Lamar. There's not one safety car. There's actually three safety cars to pick up the fields in different places because it's so big. So when we say safety car, we actually mean three safety cars pick up the three different different parts of the, the packs. Okay, I think it's time for us to take a break. We are in a safety car period. And we're going to come back to happy hour over uh, at Le Mans as the sun rises. Fastest part of the and while fastest we're on, time around the track. While we're on break, let's filter through the uh, video interview, see if we haven't used anything that... Well, when we come back. We'll that's what I mean. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Be back in 60. This is the 25 hours of the 24 hours of Lama. Welcome to happy hour. Happy hour, of course, is the sunrise over Lama. Lama only gets seven hours of darkness while uh, uh, at this time of year at the track. So um, right now, the cars are breathing heavily. They've got the cold air. They're running fast. The track is rubbered in, and it's happy hour. So cheers to that. Salute everyone. Everyone in the room, congratulations. We are almost three-fourths of the way through this. Right now we're on the safety car period um, because of the Aston Martin, the 97 Aston. Uh, whoops, sorry, it was a Porsche that crashed in the Porsche curves, of course, right. rear end first. Um, we've got the number 97. Uh, 75, I think. Yeah, was 75, it? sorry, I apologize for that. Okay. Right now, Alex Ray is on Forza. If you please would message him so that he will stop annoying us and that you guys can have fun. <laughs> and start racing, for God's sake. <laughs> Oh, okay, there's Alex. We have an awesome grid lining up. It's getting crazy. Let us know how it goes when it's done. And you better win. How many yeah. people you got so far, Alex? Victor or Dow? Yeah, how many people you have so far? Uh, how many do I have? I've got one, two. Did we start stop? I have eight people. I got ready four more. I'm gonna post my gamer tag again. And what car are you? What car are you guys racing? I'm, the, I'm gonna be driving the Audi R18 TDI from last year. So this is a P1 race. So yeah, I've got a Toyota GT1, Orica 908s. I got a Mazda. I got. I got some. These people are not jumping around. How long is this race gonna be, Alex? Four laps. Four laps of Lasard. Four point, hours. Eight point six miles. Well, I guess with the yeah, with, something the, with the chicanes. Yeah, eight With and a half. Canes. All right. By the way, everybody, it's going to be a forced cockpit view because that's what men do. <laughs> and as everybody online just said, hey, you know what, Alex? No. Anything worse than fourth, I get to call you a coward. I, I'm. I'm okay. I think we get out of the. Good luck, by the way. Go get him. Okay. The sun is starting to rise over Lamar. This is when things get interesting. You know, uh, we kind of went through a lull period here in the middle of the race. Well, we're still the, on a lull period right now. Well, full course yellow. Yeah. But uh, right, guys, we're start. 
I think the action is going to pick up. I don't think a lot of these classes are done with, and I really do think they're going to unleash the Audis and let them race heads heads up. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so I'm. Um, uh, so where do you expect action in, uh, in, uh, coming up? Talk, talk us through the, um, uh, the classes. Well, like I just said, I think the Audis are going to uh, be allowed to go at each other to see if uh, McNish or Lotterer get a win. Lotterer to retain McNish to win his third overall. Lama and uh, Christensen, how many would that be? 28? <laughs> this will be nine, right? Something like that. Well, nine would be an insane And then in GT, record. I don't think GT is over. There's a one-lap gap between uh, first, second, and third. I think... Uh, I don't have it right in front of me. Uh, it's think. actually it's a two lap between a first and third. Uh, Ferrari, one lap down Ferrari, two laps down Aston Vantage. And then... Um, so first and second are what, within one lap in GT? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, how's P2 looking? Is that over or is there still competition there for the Star Wars? I haven't. So you the... Guys, uh, you guys know more about the first Orca, I'm sorry. Uh, so the first Orca is just a lap down on uh, the Starworks Motorsports HPD Honda. Um, but it's a long way down before you get to anything else interesting. There's a Zytec Nissan that's um, uh, three laps down. Uh, and the next Morgan is down at 196 laps compared to the 205 of the leading P2 car. So uh, maybe I'm getting a little ambitious. I know we talked about Still double digit hours left, but if we're, I just lost it. If we're sitting at uh, 204, 205 laps, yeah. and the other t cars are deeper behind that, I mean, it may come down to those three or four cars. So, as much as we like to, to talk about um, happy hour being a time on track where, yeah, Alex, I, I, I was purposely ignoring you there if you didn't notice me doing that. It sounds and good. I have two classic, G, I have classic Ferrari F40s. I've got some ancient cars. I've got some 908s. And okay. I think we're about to get started here. He, he had to have announced that. Okay. Anyway, so happy hour. That was exciting. I know. To know. As, as, as. Shouts out to the guy in the Bentley. As Heckman has just texted me, the uh, importance of the happy hour is not only just for fun. Okay. And not only just for the cars running fast, but this is when the teams start figuring out their, they start working back their pit strategy. They try to figure out, okay, how much time do we have? What do we need to get done? This is the time at which they figure out the rest of their race. Sun is rising over the, the Dunlop um, uh, bridge right now. It's getting cool. Track is lighting up. Safety car, this is the time all the drivers are getting to rest. Hey, Alex? Yeah, I hear you. Don't worry, it's cool. Uh, <laughs> Give us the report after you race. No. Wait, the, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if something's happened to the Aston. Yep, it stopped on its outlap. The 97 Aston. Josh, we're up. Oh, they're, oh, that's cool. You actually get to see the, uh, the brake change on this uh, Ferrari. Oh, that's um, awesome. Pu yeah, they're pushing the caliper pistons back, getting that rotor in there. That's a hard job to do. Think of, that, think, of, think of the amount of heat that's, that's going through those corners. What I find insane is... No, don't give him the... Well, he's, been try he's been waiting to set this up for like... He already crashed. So no, let him race and then we'll get a report. All right. This is awesome. <laughs> oh, oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Forza Drive competition has already started. Alex, turn the, <laughs> turn the right. This is going to be so pointless. As he's racing his RO. So There's no point in keeping anything okay. else talking because he's just going to scream through the whole. No, 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 no! Don't, don't enable him, but show the video because oh, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all the oh. so You're getting shunted all over the place. Man. Everyone is just hitting him. <laughs> this is the most worthless. Oh, he's a coward. Uh, Round last. Oh no! <laughs> so something is going on with the Aston. Um, are they out? I don't, I'm, I'm watching. Um, I'm watching the Forza feed right now. Because <laughs> I want to see. Oh, he's in last place. Nope, six of tenth place. place. Okay. Free drive T-shirt to the person who knocks him out. Wow. Let's see if someone actually listens. So this video, if the look at the paint scheme of that that Corvette. Speed is showing two-year-old video from Corvette racing. Hmm? I mean, I'm all for the infomercials, but can we stay at least current, for God's sakes? 
Is this two years old? It's the wrong, it's, it's last year's graphics on the car. Ah, who knows? Who even, no one here is a racing enthusiast. How would you know? I mean, this is cool footage. I guess they're giving you a lap of Le Mans from the point of view of a Corvette race car, which is uh, fun. Yeah. I keep getting reports of Aston. What's going on? Um, uh, let me double check. Looks like that wreck is still being cleared okay. in the Porsche curves. What the hell is its Viper driving in first place? Um, That's what GT1 is fast. Why is, why is my radio Le Mans French? Also, der auf drei liegende Aston Martin Nummer 97 bleibt kurz hinter der Boxenausfahrt der mit technischen Problemen wohl stehen und wäre uh, damit raus. Can we vet the invite list next year? Unbelievable. Who's behind me? Uh oh. Aston Martin, well, I don't believe this. Ran a red light in pit lane, stopped on track to make up for it. That's not the way to make up for it, because they'll still hold you in pit lane. And they'll call you an idiot for doing that. What do they use for safety cars? Audi. Audi RS5s. They had an Audi A1 Quattro Sport, like a concept car that ran as well. What are you talking about? The safety cars this year at Le Mans. Are the, what? Uh, RS5s, RS5s, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I guess you may be reading the same comments. We'll, we'll see. I think the Aston Martin was just falling in line. Yeah. Based on the so rules of the pace car and... Uh, what do you think, Leo? Got it, got it, got it. The Aston was just falling in line based on the p uh, pace car okay. rules. They couldn't make a lap. Ba, ba, ba. Okay. Would be cool to drive them all. Are we on air? Yeah, yeah. we're on air. Yeah. All right, so I'm um, uh, briefly to address something that absolutely no one cares about, even sort of myself. Well, then it's definitely something we should talk about. <laughs> of course we should. So it appears that the uh, the myth that the uh, legend of the uh, uh, of the silver arrows with their paint getting taken off is indeed a myth. Um, there are some pretty conclusive photographs of the cars before the race, and they're definitely painted silver, not white, no paint to be stripped. Do you know there was paint, or did they strip the cars? Well, the first account that is made of it is in 1959 by Neubauer. There are no contemporary reports of it whatsoever. It seems to just be... Did Nordbauer say it was paint or stripped? <laughs> Don't know, It's right? actually... Well, his, his account says they stripped off the, uh, uh, the paint, not for, not for getting the paint off, but for getting the lacquering underneath it off. Um, from a... From a from a statement made by his another man on his team uh, that involved a, a, a play on words by a German joke, which then inspired him to get off the paint, but it seems, it does not seem like it's something that actually happened to me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to dispute you. I'll do my homework. Indeed. And we'll come back and argue. Yeah, we never argue. So, um... How did you and I end up running the, this thing? Where's everyone else, huh? Sorry. I think they all died. Cold pizza. Oh, come back. I need my, my condition. So what was the last article? What was the last article you wrote for Jalopnik? The last one I wrote for Jalopnik was on um, uh, the Delta Wing. Sorry about that. I went to go get a slice of pizza. Oh, this is good. This looks very dorm room. What, uh, so what'd you write about it? I'm uh, sorry I didn't read it. Uh, you, you missed nothing. Um, no, it's on. Uh, it was that. on the Top Gear Delta Wing, which I haven't seen all. Oh, which one? Race. The Top Gear Delta Wing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So um, uh, I believe they were trailering it out to France, uh, but I haven't seen any pictures of it there. Um, uh, they built it in 39 days. 377 man hours. And it's front wheel drive, isn't it? Really? No, it's not front wheel drive. Where's it's the a, engine? Where's it's the a engine? Westfield. Oh, so I get it. So front engine, rear. It's okay. Rear drive, yeah, is the only thing narrow enough. Um, uh, but it's not mid engine like the real Delta. All right, they want to check no, on a Forza update. Yeah, Forza update, they want to. Someone give us a report from the field. What lap is he on and how's he doing? He's on uh, lap uh, two. 
Oh, I can see the screen. I'm sorry. I'll give you the update. All right. Um, Alex Roy in his R18 fighting against some other P1 competition is in fourth place. I can see that. You just drive. Fourth place out of 10. He's halfway through his race. Two laps out of the four. His last lap was a four minute 14. <laughs> Big shots. Big shots. And he's currently on a six minute 56 lap. Yeah, I got a wheel. I have a wheel. <laughs> So but again, seems, it seems there are some retirements. Front part of the grid, he's in, and you can see now, it's on the screen. Fourth place out of tenth. Oh no. Coming toward Indianapolis, am I right? Am I guessing? Where am I on this? We'll check with him again in the last lap. If he makes it. You, you, should, you should be embarrassed to say that. That's overall time, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's the Q. Okay, good. Sunrise over Lasarth. Safety car period at this point. Waiting for an accident to be cleared in the Porsche oh. curves. Until then, uh, two gonna... retirements. Right now? Uh, yeah. Uh, two Lolas are out. P two Lolas. Which? Oh, okay. Things you don't really have to care about. Did they just drop out, or were they out before? Uh, I guess they were in the pits before and are now done for. Okay. That Mike, is the Mike Spinelli is still here, yes. He's yes. sitting back there. They're just asking where man boob is. Yeah, we need, uh, we need man boob here. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, the 29 and 31 Lolas are out. 2-9 uh, and 3-1. 2-9. one is the Lotus painted P2 Lola, and 2.9 is uh, Some Lola the Golf time. one with Ihara. I think they went out a while ago. They crashed a long time ago. Okay. I don't mean to make light of that, but... No, 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 no. It's all good. Too bad we can't call in. Yeah, that would be perfect. Lag on the controller? What does that mean? Alex. Oh, really? Yeah. And thank you. That's overall time, proving that I don't play these sims as much as you think I do. Or it was uh, me passing judgment on Alex's driving ability, assuming that he was doing nine-minute, seven-minute laps. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Is he on his white flag lap yet? <clears throat> Alex is in fourth out of tenth place. The spotter's guide, someone asked. It's real easy. Andy Blackmore designs. It actually is on the Sim Raceway blog. I'm not doing a, a plug, although I guess I am for Sim Raceway, but that's the best place to find the download. <laughs> no, you were explaining if you were doing a plug, you plugged again. I know that. I know that. Sure, you know, I know that. But that's what this is, and uh, it's oh. very helpful. Lamar right now is beautiful. Look at this. Beautiful. It's sad that we're still under a... Uh, JF is showing me the picture of the dawn sunrise as the car passed under the Dunlop Bridge. It's beautiful right Pretty now. Pretty damn elegant. Welcome to happy hour at the 25 hours of the 24 hours of Le Mans right here on Drive. YouTube.com slash drive as well as YouTube.com's front page at this very moment. Good morning. Yes, good morning. We are uh, 4.15 <laughs> in the... Uh, sorry. 5.15 in the morning over at La Sarthe, the Le Mans circuit, west of Paris, France. And we are coming up on 11.20 um, p.m. Oh, my God, we've got... Don't, don't, oh, my God, I'm having fun. Got like seven hours more of this crap. How, uh, how old I'm are having a great time. What we've car got a lot of time left. Nine hours left of this. What kind of car do I drive? I live in the Manhattan. I drive a Metro card in the New York subway system. Hey, Leo, what's I actually your, don't own a heart car. What's your favorite Le Mans car? Wow. I, mean, I know it, mine. Well, then answer it for me. 
I hate that, but go ahead. Answer it for me. I know my, what's my, he asked me a question, then he's going to tell me his answer. So just tell me your answer. Don't ask me. No, I want to know your answer. I want to hear you first now, smart All right, ass. the Mirage M1. The Mirage M1? What truth just uh, came the out? The John Wire um, uh, car he ran in 67. So it, it was the Ford GT smooth side with the, the smaller top. Exactly. The one they ran while um, uh, Shelby was busy running the 7 liter whatever thing. Why do you like that car? Because uh, it's weird. Weird? It's weird. It's like a you know you know the bread van GTO. Uh, Ferrari. Yeah, the Ferrari GTO. The bread one, van. the one off. Yeah. Yeah. The, it, it it was like the GT40 bread van, because it it ended up becoming the '68 and '69 winning car. They took they took what they learned off the Mirage. Wire took what he learned off the car. Then built a GT40 for it the next year, and that car is the one that won two years the same chassis twice in a row. So never done again. So I I think and you can fix what I'm about to say. I think that that Mirage body was the planned evolution for the GT40. Exactly. And he ran it as they moved on to the Mark IVs. Yes. And the reason why they Because he got fired. And the reason why they went back to the classic GT40 bodywork was when they changed the rules, Yes. it was a homologation issue. Yes, they changed the rules so that prototypes could only be three liters uh, but sports cars could be five liters. And so um, since they'd built so many GT40s, they classified as sports cars. Um, uh, so they went back to John Wire and said, hey, can you actually build us so what a size, GT40 that'll run? So what size motor were the Porsches running when they were fighting the Gulf Wire? The 908s were three liter sixes. Okay. And uh, they were running with uh, Ferrari 312 uh, Bs. Those were gorgeous, in case you're wondering. Um, uh, really, one, I'm of the, yeah, okay, I'm one of the prettiest cars to run. Um, uh, but oh, no, no, they weren't. They were those were those long noses, long flat nose, the three one two. They had oh, a coupe and an open cockpit. Is that beautiful. the one? Beautiful. No, I'm. Uh, no, they ran open t co cockpit and Can Am. Those are pretty too. Uh, no, these was these were the ones that were like extremely low. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, horribly ugly. Love it. Proportions were all wrong. Worse than Nothing beautiful. like a three thirty P three or P four. Really. Uh, All right. Yeah, I just said that out loud. All right. Looks well, what's your if, favorite? What's your looks favorite? as if McNish is back out in front Good. under the and, safety car period. And who uh, was it earlier of our hosts who uh, uh, was calling Toyota Aston? Is that Alex? Really? Really? Or Morgan Aston? Someone said something Aston. No, no, no. Well, Aston's in P is in P two right now. So. Really? Yeah. What? Yay! They jumped no, the, uh, they jumped the Ferrari? No, no P3. Uh -huh. Oh, maybe they will be because the 59 is in the pits right now. They're on the same lap. Lap are 196. Are you talking about GT Pro? GT. Yeah, GT Pro. Oh, they, so someone thought Sorry, Aston was going the way of Toyota? No. Um, in answer to your question, no, favorite no, cars, no, no, no. It, it's, it's tough. I liked the white Peugeots when they won, Everybody I thought does. they were... The 905. Uh, yeah. Last of the group C's. But at the end of the day, I, I cannot not like the uh, 917LH. Oh, man. I love the Ford GT Which is your Mark favorite Ford. livery? The, the hippie one or the... Um, uh... No, I actually liked the Gulf long tail that had the orange cab. I did not know they ran a Gulf long tail, actually. I thought they only ran 917Ks in Gulf. That was a big controversy yeah. because... He did, Wired did not want to run the long tail, but they felt he felt or was convinced by someone that that was a big enough advantage, and the car failed. Yeah. And the, the short tails won the race. The magnesium short tail, if I recall, won the race. The I really like John Wire. Uh, apparently, he was a terrible man to work with. Um, uh, very uh, overbearing. Um, welcome to racing. Who isn't? Uh, you got to be demanding. But he uh, he actually joined racing reluctantly. His wife encouraged him to do it. He was, just, uh, he was just an engineer, and his wife said, uh, you should try it. And uh, You know trivia things I have no knowledge I of. I watched a documentary on him, that's all there. It's on, it's on Google Video, it's not on YouTube. I watch a PBS special about it, I'm an expert. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> um, current cars, which do I like? Yeah, let's talk. Do you really like the, um, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the Aston, or are you not that crazy the about GT? it? The GT? I like, I like the Ferrari as a GT, and to be honest, now I start to get into the current cars. Performance matters. We have big news. Alex Roy, will you please approach the set and explain what just happened? No, 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 no. 
video doesn't translate well when you don't actually hey guys, provide vocal. Uh, I'm going to change in the race timer. Did he make the podium? I don't know. He won't tell me. Well, but I'm looking at the. Uh, hey, Alex. The you want to come talk about what just happened? I'm with you. I'm, 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 I'm buying into this. Does he need a mic? All right. <clears throat> he can sit next to Raphael. No, the other way. The other way. The, the guest gets closer to the MC. You, you go down the couch. <laughs> I'm on a talk show now. We okay. just had a very interesting race. What just happened? Um, that was very interesting. Yeah. Uh, Jason Bordeaux, old friend of Team Pulitzer. Of course. Um, was in the lead at one point with an 11,000 feet foot lead, so it's a whole lap or something, right? Anyway, um, Bordeaux, uh, very good job. And um, it was tough. I didn't really come in fourth, I came in like sixth because everyone lined up at the finish to wait for the slow stragglers before the race timer kicked in. So it was set at 30 seconds, so I rolled across unfairly because I was panicking, I wouldn't hit the finish line. So and it was just, I just accidental. Uh, and we had huge, the opening grid was like F1. It was, a sh I think we lost a third of the grid in the first 50 feet, huh. um, all destroyed. Uh, then we had, um, I had some, a lot of aero damage, some steering damage, suspension damage before I entered the first turn. However, um, I, I really enjoyed it. And I would have to say that the uh, guys are very professional and serious. And after I've relaxed and calmed down and wiped my head, we're gonna go back into the game, baby. And we're going to open it up to other classes, GT cars, and... Um, Can you race multiple classes yes, in one race? you can race wow. multiple classes, so I hope to see some GT cars, and um, I'll be going back in with something a little more interesting, probably uh, a 2010 Aston Lola, which is a very fun, very bad handling, but very quick car. Okay. Um, I trust me, it's a really fun car. Aston and, Lola. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. You'll, you'll see it. Um, so I'm going to be back in about two minutes. And oh, I remember the Aston go, Lola. It's get, awesome. It's a great car. We're going to get back in the game. Uh, <laughs> so we have a couple open slots. So um, if you would like to join us, then send me a, um, a message at uh, Pulitzei. That's capitalized P-O-L-I-Z-E-I -E space capital A, capital R, lowercase O-Y. What are you going to do different this race to improve your performance? <laughs> uh, I am going to let, um, I'm going to slow down at the start, let the other cars crack up and get destroyed. Oh and then I want to drive around them. And I'm going to get back in the game, baby. <laughs> and um, yeah, but I really enjoyed it. And I look forward to doing some more races uh, in quick succession. Um, Did your lap times, were they consistent? No, my, I started out at like a 4.10. Okay. And then I brought it down to a three, I think forty-eight. Okay. Um, that was not consistent. No, no, got, but that's okay. I first, got better. First lap was a the first lap, b a bunch of traffic and, yeah, well, and banging. So. Yeah. And I was heavily damaged. So. Um, <laughs> Are you talking about the car or the driver? Both. <laughs> I'm sober at this point. Okay. Sober with victory. So yeah. after the three four eight, I'm not busting your balls. I'm just trying to figure out for after the three four eight. Do you recall what you did lap? Three? It might be in mid three fifty. I don't know. Okay. That was my fastest. Uh, okay. I dropped seven seconds, um, then I dropped like one second, then I dropped like a, a few tenths of a second, and that was it. <laughs> okay. uh, I couldn't get out nearly into sixth gear, and okay. it was stuck at like 175 miles an hour on the straight. Um, but you didn't give back time. No, uh, okay, and uh, I believe, I'm going to double check that Jason Bordeaux, whose, uh, <laughs> whose gamer tag is the driver 144, which is really nice, <laughs> uh, was driving, I think, a, to a Toyota GT1. Oh, wow. Yeah, and was uh, killing it. So. You know, um, yeah. I'm wondering if there isn't a future in racing for cars with greater armoring, so that can withstand uh, damage and stay in the game, baby. You know, that's the difference between light infantry reconnaissance and the night. When is your next race? Uh, I'm going to get back in the seat in about three minutes. Um, so, again, if you want to join, we have a few open spots in the grid. Send me a message. Pulitzei, P O L I Z E I, all capitalized. Um, space. Uh, capital A, capital R, lowercase o, lowercase y. Um, and you, you'll receive a um, response back or in the game invitation within five minutes and we get, we're going to get it started. So. Cool. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Perfect timing. The safety car. Thank you, Alex. Good luck with that. This will be the, the punch. The safety car is in on this lap. By the way, this will be the punchline of the moment. The uh, Pro-Am leader is now the Chevy Corvette Labra Racing. Oh. So...
There still could be a Chevrolet win ad out of this race. Yeah. <laughs> Passed for the lead and then lost it. Yeah. All right. What the hell was that? Dang. You're out? I'll be back. Okay. No, no, you do your thing. Excuse me. <laughs> it's happy hour. Get out of here. Perfect. Good night, man. Here comes Davis in this accident. Yeah. Speed is recapping the race. Oh, no, they're, they're going lights out on the safety car, the Audi RS5. We're going green, going green. Happy hour at Lassar. Look at that. Beautiful shots coming in from the world feed. Are they going oh, for pit? McNish, McNish is P1. No, they don't. Starworks is P2 winner, for uh, leader Ferrari. Bruni. In GT Pro and uh, the Fer the port. God, I got nothing right. The and the Corvette in Pro Am. Yeah. And you're right. Green flag. Here we go. So McNish is leading nice. the race at this point. Let's see how well this goes for him. Okay, Alex, Alex, um, so, um, We now are tuning into the world feed. Oh, it's Don over the track. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I tell you that. It's cool, right? It's really cool. Okay. Double off curve. Oh, hey, that looks awesome. Okay. How goes? One off the tires. Crone racing. I'm going to set the end of race timer. They're everywhere. Yeah. How long should I set the race timer to, guys? They literally are. Crone is literally every race. Yeah, every race, I've seen. Um, well, he's at all the big events. He uh, seems to be doing kind of a marquee yeah. season. Yeah. Sebring, Daytona, yeah. Le Mans. We won't see him at Lime Rock. Sorry, Lime Rock. It's OK. <laughs> hey, Josh. Hey, man. Josh has joined Finally, the, on the couch. couch. Well, you know, I'm, uh, uh, the shots at night were really wonderful, but this is... This oh, is the, the sunrise shots. This is awesome. Guys, if you cannot, if, you, you gotta, if you're not watching, go to the feed. This yeah, is we, the time to be watching. Don't watch them all, dudes. Cars are the fastest, beautiful light, no one's out. It's awesome. I love, what, I, I love how the headlights uh, overlap over each other. Just looks cool. So Jeff, as you were saying before, happy hour is the fastest time on the track. Um, find out. Now is when we see, is it truly the fastest lap times of the race so far? Let's see, so let's hope so. So my point is yeah, yeah. this proven. <laughs> and I look like a fool. Um, but yeah, let's start looking, let's start looking at the lap times. You're saying no? No, I know I'm saying you don't look like a fool. You're, you're not a fool. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Aww. But it's it's Aww. early. There's still time to go. <laughs> might be the nicest thing you've ever said to JS. <laughs> you might not be. Was, a was the camera running, Gavin? <laughs> yeah. Really? We've got you. We've got you documented saying something nice. Did your timing yeah. scoring just zero everything out? <laughs> yeah, the timing scoring is not playing along very well. How's it going, Ian? Okay. Good. Yeah. Are there any uh, videos we want to run? Not right now. Okay. Glad we discussed that. <laughs> I'd rather save them when we're dying right now. Oh, man. The guys clock's going to tick off quicker than you know. I don't know. It couldn't be ticking any slower right now. No, I keep looking over, and it's not midnight yet. I'm, like, punching myself. So timing and scoring is back. Just to give you some context here, and I'm losing... I'm actually losing cars off this lineup, but... The Aston Martin's P2. Interesting. So for what it's worth, I think... The e-tron quattro audi has turned the best lap of the race so far to 326.3 i thought i saw one of the toyotas at a 326.8 and mcnish just got passed by andre lauder wow mcnish is in the pit right now yeah oh that's how they got passed okay and to oh, your point dude, i haven't seen that the, the, the audi lights? headlights when they the, the startup sequence yeah. of the Audi headlights, yeah. badass. Yeah. Very badass. Now, it'll be interesting to watch when Lotterer comes in, or if he already did, because according to this, now they're all on 20, lap, 20 oh, pit uh, stops. 
Rebellion Toyota has spawned. No, not the Rebellion Toyota. I'm trying to figure out where this is. Looks like Porsche Curvish. But I may be wrong. No, that's oh. and green flag. No, it is. They're like, go, wait, no. Yeah, wait, don't go. We uh, lied. That front, left front is not at the right angle. Um, get that guy a yellow flag. What up? Uh, that the game is full, we'll start in five minutes, and everyone is waiting, and we'll be getting the next one. Uh, game is full. Uh, this is Roy. Game is full, gonna be running in five minutes. That's so. a bad move. Something else. Oh, what was <laughs> that? Who wasn't paying attention? Yeah, that was a bad Okay, this is definitely, uh, uh, lessons in how not to recover your car after spinning. Don't drive across the, the track. I would've just dropped the clutch and spun it. What, we have um, the, uh, what corner what do you think that is? I think that's... Up. Now, I don't understand. This is like a car backing out of a space. Go, go, do it now. Do it now. You gotta do it now. You have to do it now. Leo, no, okay. yeah. it's up to the driver... Oh, Jesus. In a situation like this, it's up to the driver to decide when it's safest to go back on track? Actually, or is there a track worker somewhere a, signaling him? Actually, the track workers are supposed to give some guidance, but this guy is busy doing the banned flag program. Because here. honestly, oh, there's a group of track workers on the side. Go, go, he's oh, got, okay, go, okay. go, 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 but he's not, the guy's not listening. So maybe he's got some wrong with the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at the guy's like nine. I gotta give him a push now. I'm just gonna fucking push him now. I'm sorry. In fairness, he may not. Oh, he may have trouble so getting tired. in gear, but that's to yeah, your man. point. He's got to drop the clutch. because We're just going to do more of it right now. It's all pro drivers, obviously, driving this. Uh, in the rebellion, yeah, it is. That was nineteen. No, twelve. Thirteen. Thirteen. Oh, it's really, really. Harold unsafe. Tremont, <laughs> Malik Molin. That Things right that look safe, in. not that. That's so, right after the Porsche curves. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, he's that was the end of the Porsche curves. Better oh, here's the, the, here's the action. Either. And a little sideways. Yep. All right, so what are we watching right now? Well, this is the 25 hours of the 24 hours of Le Mans. This is happy hour. Dawn at La Sarth at the 80th running of the 24 hours of Le Mans. Right now, you're joined uh, by myself, Jeff Musial, Leo Parente, Orlov, Raphael Orlov, Gordon Morgan, and Josh Pizza. Morgan. Good to Morgan. We're all German. It's yeah. Is Spinelli coming back? Hi. 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 Hey, Mike. I don't have a microphone, so. Uh, yeah, take mine. Really? Yeah. Look at this. Guy. I don't have a microphone. I'm probably. Why don't you just why touching don't you board up? Why don't you man boob it up right here? In the Can I man boob it up yeah. right there? Yeah. Please. Please stay over there. Like, uh, why don't we board him in? Get that Mike, pillow. Mike looks a little rough there. Well, no, he can go. I feel a little... I no, he should go. I look a little rough. No, here. We're gonna... We're gonna just, just I like join that in the middle. Uh, this is happy hour we actually, at Le Mans. We haven't done three guys on the couch yet. This is gonna be a first. Oh, this is oh, gonna be luckily really Luckily, we have only one cup. Three we, we, guys, uh, one cup. Uh, oh, look at this uh, guy. That's some vintage YouTube humor. So, uh, I'm not even gonna forge you in. I thought we thought we had three guys. You got the thing. Is this microphone? Look at this. Look at this. It looks like a team picture. Really? Here, you take it. It should be, though. Shouldn't it be? Oh, it's yeah, so cool middle, watching so Sunrise over Le Mans. Yes. All right. Uh, All right, so check it out. Does it, is anybody, uh, oh, this is, there's liquid in here now. So do I need to That's check, fine. is the Aston Martin in P2? Yes. So yes, can you guys is. fill me in on what's going on? Uh, there's some racing stuff. Not important. I've been sleeping. <laughs> uh, so I'm, uh, the, uh, the A, of course, uh, Ferrari is, uh, up. Is this guy driving? And a lap down is the cool. Aston, Aston Martin uh -huh. Vantage. Um, popping up the things that are uh, less dynamic, it is uh, LMP1, e-tron quattro of Lauderer and uh, Audi Team Sport Just um, uh, is up, and on the same lap just behind him is the e-tron quattro of uh, um, also Team Just with uh, Dinda Capello. Audi Sport is uh, down to third. Uh, fourth is the Rebellion. P2, uh, HPD Honda, um, uh, one lap down is the Auric uh, Nissan, and then just a bunch more Nissans and Zytex. And all the way down in GTAM is uh, there's a Corvette sitting happy, uh, but just behind him on the same lap is a Porsche 911 RSR, and then three laps down is a 458. And uh, that's what's going on.
I missed it. Can you repeat that? Yeah, say it again, man. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. So, 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 the, um, the so Aston we... Martin's uh, chances, Leo. As good as any right now. They're one lap from the lead. They're in P2. How did they crawl back GT up? Is now they've down. just been fighting. They've been fighting like mad. They're down like six. GT something? is now the battle we want to be paying attention to, as it usually is. The thing also to note with Happy Hour, though, if we consider it the fastest time on track, the most beautiful, it is also the time at which the uh, team managers and the, um, the strategists are figuring out their pitch strategy for the remainder of the race. So at this point, they're, they're working their way back. Okay, how many laps can we go? How, how many laps have we been figuring we could go on a tank? How are its tires and working their way back from the checkered flag? Okay, guys, everybody ready? Hmm. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this is where, I, this is where I wish we had. No, I just, I've just been helping drink it. You know, that's yeah. time. <laughs> yes. Who's talking to you? I need some apple juice. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna get a cup of apple juice. Oh my gosh, I love apple juice. I know. I really like it. For the GT Pro, can this you get is, Grandpa some apple juice? Yeah, the heck with it. Thank you very We're having much. Having a food network moment over there. Apple juice. Grandpa so needs his apple juice. <laughs> all right, all right. Are there any comments that we should uh, yeah, talk about? Um, what time is it? Uh, it's uh, midnight. So midnight here in New York. Well, coming up on midnight. Is that all? In twenty up minutes. Up, yeah. I mean, that's not exactly yes. coming up on midnight. Twenty-two. All right, so Maybe coming up on midnight. I should just get my work on. I've got so much to do. Midnight apple juice. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Midnight apple juice. It's a it's a tradition around here. That's right. No. Uh, Rebellion Racing can now get third place. What am I missing with the uh, third place out? Sixteen. Oh, I don't See, we are reading the comments, and apparently you're keeping us up to speed on this race. Uh, no, that's no, not true. What, what, what are we talking about, guys? 224 laps and 219 for the Rebellion. I guess with the DNF, but uh, I wouldn't count on it. 219. Um, the Rebellion, Rebellion is at 219 laps. The third place Audi is at 224 laps. Wait, Rebellion is at. What? Wow. Is that? When did that happen? Well, Rebellion has been hovering there. Fourth. Fifth and sixth for the entire race. Right. Quite frankly. But when did they pass? I mean, I, I guess I've been away a, a fair amount of time. But when did they pass? The entire race. Right. Quite frankly. But when did they pass? Well, actually, the last Audi Ultra is catching up. Remember, it was the one of the first cars well, to stop. Right. So he's fighting his way so back. He's fighting his way he's back. So, so we'll, we'll we'll probably see those two square off pretty yeah, soon. Yeah. My argument is, it's not the rebellion that's going to get a spot. It's the rebellion that's going to lose, lose spot a spot before the end of the race. Well, yeah. I mean. Audi's average speed is already seven kilometers per hour faster. And it's yes. probably been that for a while. Could we see a top four? Great race. Great yeah, we race. could. So there's a good race in LMP <laughs> one, <laughs> but that's not the great beautiful race. Beautiful light. And now we're Alex watching the feed at live at lamar-tv.com. In car this footage. This is the best race I've ever done. Alex Roy is on Forza, as you can hear him in the background. I said the same thing just before I hit the oh, wall. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't want to watch points on Please go away. At least I can actually get in sixth gear. That was from last year. <laughs> oh. oh. Moving fast. <clears throat> JF, we're, we're, when you were in Le Mans um, last year, did you ride the first wheel? <coughs> no. You didn't? What's Why the lap time of the first wheel? Yeah, what the is first? The, Other than the first wheel. What? Yeah, what's the lap time of the first wheel? I don't know. How would I know? Is Leo, it, do you know what that record is? <laughs> Hell, heck no. <laughs> I remember I can this, make something up. I remember this being the uh, most appealing time to be at the track. I went up to the top of the grandstands. It was beautiful. It would have been nice at the top of the first wheel, I'm sure. I'm sure it would have been. Oh, yeah. They closed the Ferris wheel down after a certain point. What? Like, you, they don't want people puking off the edge? Oh, yeah, right now it's a crap show in there. There are drunks everywhere. Oh, really? Everywhere. Yeah. I know you guys before were talking about the, the similarities between, or rather the differences between 
this and the Nurburgring as far as... Well, Nurburgring, the guys are drunk. Party. Yeah, the, they're drunk before the race starts. Is that just know. Germans and, and French? Well, the Germans, the, well, no. The, the Germans at the Nurburgring, it's, it's, it's Mecca. They, they, they travel there in masses a week, two weeks before. But is this not, is this not I the same for the French? Uh, to be honest with you, I, no, because it's more, more Brits that go right, to, to Le Mans than anything right, else in the Danes. Says something about the French. Maybe. Ah, the French. Well, who are the, ah, big, the French Who champagne. are the big French drivers going? Uh, Sarazan. Were they all driving Dumas. from uh, Peugeot? Or no, were they all driving for Toyota this year? Well, well Sarazan was. No, Sarazan was, was. Well, wait a minute. Wait Peugeot does right. have. Did, did have almost all French drivers. Yeah. Which I actually think is kind of cool. Who's that? Peugeot? Peugeot, yeah. I was also into that. Yeah. Um, there's some, uh, yeah, there, I mean, there's very few teams that are that are so nationalistic, right? Yes, yeah, the French and the Americans. Right. Well, well, well the Americans though. We've uh, got some. Flying Lizard. I mean, we, we've got some teams that are. All Flying right. Lizard has plenty. Of, or I mean, American it, teams a, are not nationalistic. Not at all. Far we got from it. tons of Germans uh, on the American. Well, there's also the fact that they're driving Porsches. Well, it's a Flying a, Lizard. Okay, but it's, it's no, a, I hear you. It's yeah, a, yeah it's an American team. Yeah. And, yeah. Sorry, Alan God. McNish uh, on speed being interviewed right now, looking really peppy, actually. Hey, Matt Pastrami, uh, Matt Pastrami, I'm about to come up on you. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Alex? Yeah. That's can you guys said. hear Alex while he's playing? Matt Pastrami, I'm right behind yeah, you. Yeah, can you guys hear Alex? Because uh, he just his grunts and, and uh, he was grunting and making. saying things and he's going nuts over there. Yeah, but I don't know if any mics are close enough to him. I don't know. I think somebody's probably. It'd be great if, it, if, if we're the only ones that can hear him. No, his do not. The lob's not working. Ooh. Actually, if we had a lob on us right now, Why not? Right now, it would be Why not? That would be a really bad yeah, idea. I, I, I'm, I'm actually surprised that you're surprised for that. It's incredible. I mean, they train, their, they train hard. Yeah. You're, you're in the moment. And he's Alan McNish. Have you ever seen him quiet? No, that's true. Yeah. No. No. Thank you for the Scottish... Never, uh, never heard him quiet. Fort man boobs hath fallen. <laughs> Fart man boobs will live on. I can't believe this, this live stream is going to be remembered for Fort man boobs. For <laughs> Thanks, Mike. No problem. Take Anytime. Him off, take him off to 2013. No, but wait a minute. But that's what happens when the race starts to get, you know, I, I a little bit... Low, a low. A little bit of a low. We got we to... Gotta, keep ourselves entertained. I, I think if you were not here doing that, we would not have a, a great show. We would not have fart man boobs. He's <laughs> calling Alex. I'm going to fart, fart man boobs. And you know, and that's what Braveheart was lacking. Yes. That's what sent uh, uh, Mel Gibson Too many push-ups. Too many push-ups? <laughs> well, there were... <laughs> oh, I thought you meant that the, the movie itself was, was missing too many man boobs. <laughs> It was missing Fort Well, awkward moment here on the couch. I got a mic. Fort Man oh Wolves my God, forever. Now we're in for it. Leo, haven't you been? I mean, haven't you been waiting for me all evening? I have, um, but not in that way. <laughs> That's just not appropriate. Uh, for just a chat. That's not appropriate. <laughs> where did we? Um, where were we at a race together? Right. Me and you? No, no. Sebring. No, no. no, you weren't. <laughs> Yes, we were two years ago. Where were we? Where were we two yeah, years ago? Yeah, of course, two years ago. We were at Seymour. We races together, including... Including? Last year's 24 Hours of Mama. Oh, here. That's at right. At Alex's house. That's right. No, <laughs> yeah. we, we did... Um, We've been to Sebring this year. That's right. We were at Laguna this year. Did you come? You came to the test as well, right? The, the Sebring Audi test? The test, yeah, yeah. I was there. Yep. Um, so, yeah, and we're, we're hopefully... Don't quote me on this, uh, JF... Want me to say oh, I know where you're going. Anyway. Yeah. We're supposed to be going to spa this year. Yeah, I, I, spa I said no, that no, under my breath earlier. You're going to a spa this year. <laughs> yeah. That could be. That could be. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I uh, meant to tell you. The uh, the one with the neon glowing lights that says <laughs> massage <laughs> spa. <laughs> exactly. You're getting a seaweed rub <laughs> minus the seaweed. How about the one where the guys beat you with the with the branches. Oh, I've yeah, never heard of that place. That. <laughs> I don't want to go to that place. <laughs> 
So, uh, were you a race fan before this, or, or what happened? No, nah, man. I don't know if you remember this. The first time I met you, actually, was at the New York Auto Show. Like, three or four years ago. <laughs> okay. And I was... <laughs> that was the first year that I, I really started watching F1, where I, like, I, wanted, like, I wanted to watch every race. And I was sitting, waiting for the race to come on, and I was like, I don't know really what did it. Actually, I do know what did it. It was, it was Shakedown, when JF and you started doing Shakedown on uh, FLB. Uh. Um, and I, I went up to him. I'm an F1 fan now because of you, Leo, and uh, and that's that was the first time I met you. And that's really when I started started watching racing. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And then I started hanging out with Alex, who became uh, a Forza nightmare. Well, I was watching you running the uh, the Porsche. L L huh. So much for that chicane. I was watching you run the Porsche LMP. You're no slouch behind the wheel. No, no. I like and on Nurburgring. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much all I all I drive in. Uh, I just drive that Porsche on Nurburgring, and uh, I love it. I'm, I'm good about 10 miles in, and then I get <laughs> lost. Yeah. And then I start driving by just reaction, that's not good. Honestly, um, with Alex's Forza setups at his house, I've sat for two and three hour, not getting up at all, just driving Nurburgring on that track. And it's unbelievable how tiring it is. You start sweating in the chair, and it's like, it's really not even. Um, but my, my driving experience is, is pretty much sim similar. My car is a, uh, I have a Metro car for a matter of vehicles. There you go. You're hey, hey yeah. Leo, any insight on what the drivers do when they're off, right? Is there is there a quiet room where they can actually get a little bit of sleep? Do they, are they just too wired to sleep? No, 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 no. You, you want to get away from it. Yeah. So there is, there, whether it's motorhome or just in the corner. Motorhome, that, right. There's right, that. Exactly. That's good. Yeah. Um, get some food, get some energy, something you can take, not Red Bulls, some type of rejuvenating drink. There's usually the team providing uh, a masseuse for kind of muscle relaxation and staying limber. And if you can get a couple hours of sleep, it's, it's a good thing. So some drivers can't do that, turn it on and off. Others, I think I saw Alonso falling asleep in the car before a race. So and there's whatever you guys are laughing about, you'll tell me in a minute. No, 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 no. I was listening to you. I just, I was laughing at some of the comments about fart man boobs. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you try to kind of get away from it. Um, I've, I've always imagined, and especially with someone like McNish, you can't turn your brain off. Right, right. Well, just seeing him on TV just now, he was wild. Yeah, I can't imagine him taking a nap no, no, at this point. No, he was totally energetic and enthused. I think he, had, he just got out of the car. Yeah. Um, but I've seen other, I mean, I've seen drivers get out of the car and look totally haggard. Like, they look like zombies. They're pale. Yeah. Their eyes are, and their like, skin is kind of droopy. That was me when I did lemons. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Haggard, pale, skin's droopy. It's terrible. I mean, no, no, but seriously, they Just looked, like now, actually. They, was, they uh, just look I different. was just reading on the, about the, earlier about the 91 race. Apparently, when they took the driver out, they had to carry him out, and he was hospitalized before he went to the podium. Oh, so uh, sometimes yeah. these guys are, you know, That's really like over, overexertion, yeah. 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 I mean, sometimes these guys are just, like, done. But, uh. Well, the biggest, about, the oh. biggest enemy, honestly, is heat. And yeah. I know they've got and cool de suits. Dehydration. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I mean, everyone has a story about losing weight, and I gotta tell you, it was interesting for me to get in shape for a racing season, but literally midway through the season, I was just dropping pounds even after I was in shape. It just happens. But if you can get out of the car and still look cool and crisp, then you know you're in good condition. Yeah. And never show your age, guys. Never show your age. My, uh... Sentiments exactly. I gotta tell you, uh, Weber before the race was insane. He was doing like huge jumping jacks and like. Uh, Where was this? This is at Montreal. Mm. Uh, uh, that guy is not so fit. He's got muscles that I didn't know human beings had. Well, actually, drivers are really to totally fit. Well, he cycles yeah. like mad. I mean, that the th Weber, is Weber cycles like, like not hundreds so fit. and hundreds of I mean, miles. And it's a beyond week. aerobic. You, you yeah. have to have, you have, to have a good too. core. Yeah. Okay, for the G's, shoulders, forearms to turn, and your legs. Yeah. You have to have strong strong thighs. Well, that's what I'm thinking about is the G's is having to hold on, you know, for a two-hour stint or a four-hour stint, you know, getting getting thrown around like well, that. Well, you're, you're, you know, when it's right, you're, you're plugged into the car, and there's not a lot of movement. But that doesn't mean you don't feel the oh, G's no. and your stomach tightens. For sure. Side yeah. of your, and you're, you're, for me, anyway, it was always um, feeling your thighs, your upper thighs. Because you're in that car, and, and we used to have some foam that would kind of hold your legs there. 
But you have to have good leg muscles so you can kind of still be in control and on your toes. Well, if you ever notice when even just doing a track day, if you haven't been on a track day for a while, right? I mean, the muscles that hurt the next day, you know, you don't realize when you're doing it, but you know, it's just a dopey track day in whatever car you've got. You know, you, it hurts the next day. I used to love getting out of the car, racing against the sperm, and they're all kind of sweaty and haggard and like, guys, what's the problem here? <laughs> but, button does triathlons. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tony Kanan is a major league triathlon <laughs> athlete. Uh, Gavin for Corvette Racing does marathons. Yeah. These guys, these guys have to these work These guys out. are serious athletes, no, there's yeah. no doubt. Yeah. And, and it's moved from just being aerobic to having muscle and tone. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't, I, I, and they're coordinated. I mean, the eye-hand coordination has to be there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't fight these guys. No, no, yeah, and they're small, but you know, they're pretty tough. Wiry. Small but wiry. 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 They're small what but wiry. What movie was that from? Uh, it's like Popeye, I think, right? Is no, this? the replacements, remember? Oh. The kicker, the field goal kicker. I was at a, a Keanu was? Reeves movie with oh, uh, Gene Hackman as the coach yeah. at the football strike. <laughs> Is that what that was called? They find the bar guy. Yeah, yeah he was the kid. Any given ball. Thursday. Wiry. <laughs> okay, enough of that joke. Hey, small but wiry. Kimmy Power Drinks. Yeah. <laughs> so comment. Kimmy Power Drinks. That's excellent. He does power drink, by the way. I, you know, I've, I've even taken the shot, and that's not fair. I, I, I have to believe that Kimmy may know how to party hard, but he's in shape. He's yeah. in condition. Right. Well, Rossberg. Right. Well, Rossberg. Rossberg bikes up and down the hills and... Uh, oh, you mean Leonardo DiCaprio? For <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio for a shoot. Uh, yeah. He takes a nice bike ride up the, uh, up the hill. What's the matter, What do you Josh? got? I just can't believe how many fart man boobs comments there are. <laughs> uh, I think, you know what? Spinelli, you went from man boobs to fart man boobs. <laughs> fart, fart man boobs. Well, We've it, actually... It we have, fort. Well, yeah, I know, but, but it's, it's, spell, because, you know, it's fart it's, man It's it's fort man if, boobs. If, 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 okay. if okay. fort man you know boobs what? were in Scotland, it would sound sort of like you know what? fart man as boobs. As great as the drive t-shirt, you want to make a killing? Uh, <laughs> listen, I, I have to say, we are very, we at Drive are very, very proud of our demographic. Okay, we have an older demographic. We just ruined that. We just, we, we just, <laughs> we, put, just we just put that, that to sleep. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, just, we just proved that we found all the old juvenile delinquents. Yeah. Well, immaturity, look, immaturity makes you appear so much younger. I agree with that. Right? I, that's how I live my uh, my entire existence. It's on my yeah. resume. <laughs> immaturity. Happy 48th birthday to Dindo oh. Capello, by the way. Always a class oh, act. Like <laughs> stay at Audi Sports since the okay, early days. So right. so, uh, uh, I need to go tip off N my... Uh, FS. Oh, I can't leave everything. Can you get me a coffee? Wait, where's everybody yeah. going? I, we have to close out the hour. Oh, what happened? Yeah, we got five minutes for... Uh... All right, I'll close oh, out the sure? hour. are you sure? How nice. Thank uh, you. Uh, Thank you. So. Yeah. Here we are that's, at the couch. That's too nice. Fourteen hours. Okay, I get it. Into the race. <laughs> We're fucking fourteen okay, hours into we, the uh, race. Um, uh, Mr. Man boobs. Yes. I want. I want some predictions now. Okay. Okay. So. I'd like to hear it. No, I mean, I'd not, like to hear me mine. say. Not mine. I'd no, like I, to hear you predict. Okay. In P one. Thank you. P one. Pick one. Lotterer to repeat. McNish to win his fourth. I. Or I cannot bet against McNish. I okay. think McNish is gonna is gonna. He's gonna put. He's gonna put it. Uh, raw, raw on the on the. No, I, I had I had nothing because I I was looking for a colloquialism that I couldn't find. But cool. no, I think I, I don't think betting. But I think betting against McNish, with how wired. I mean, he's got one more stint in him, right? I th at least. Yeah. Um, and they're both and, on the same lap. And they're both on the same lap. There is a minute twenty three oh, gap, but I think that's down. a little. Bit he's of, a lap down. That's that that's even better. He's a lap down. Yeah. yeah. On mine, it doesn't show that. That's yet, but okay. That's even just updated. Well, that's right. even better. I, 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 if if he's a lap down, he's gonna take it. I'm, I'm, that's my prediction. And Paco Grande, what's your prediction on P1? Paco Grande, <laughs> that's you. That's you. Uh, I have news. Obviously, uh, on, we'll get um, uh, <laughs> Prost in the uh, Rebellion level. <laughs> you know, By the I'm way, he's like a mall cop right now. Answers <laughs> like that. 
So you're definitely going to happen. Um, uh, I, I anticipate uh, hour number 23. Uh, All three Audis are going to go away. <laughs> no, uh, it's, it's going to be the number one, number two Audi. Do they train you people at Jalopnik to just say sensational things? Yes, no they're going to yes, crash into each other, uh, spin out, and the third Audi is going to crash <laughs> into the their crash. Into their crash. No, at, at which point? Hold on, hold on, hold on. At which no, point? No, 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 no. You're gonna fly over the edge of the couch, and I'm gonna make it happen. Now you see, what's gonna happen is uh, it's gonna be an impassable wreck. All the cars are gonna be stopped except for the Rebellion Lola, which is gonna come up, catch go air off of the turned around Audi, which is gonna be facing the direction. Yes. Cross the finish line, Victor. So by, I hear it. by 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 result of that answer, your favorite movie was Speed Racer. Didn't see. You're kidding. Didn't see. That would have been a fantastic movie for you. Well, and that, was, that, by the way, was an insult. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I'm going to go with that, too. No, all right, so wait okay, a minute. Let's, I know I'm already, let's wrap up let's for Let's wrap break. it up. Uh, GT, and when we come back. GT, I'm, I'm really watching Aston Martin very closely. Very cool. And when we come back, we're going to get a report from Alex Roy, P1 race car driver, in his second stint against uh, some very stout competition. But we're going to break. Right about maybe now. That was, um, that was the best sim racing I've ever done. That was almost as fun as the 24 Hours of Lemons, and let me tell you, it was awesome. Uh, the guys, this was exactly the kind of sim racing I want to see more of. I would do this every night if I could get 15 guys that awesome to do it again. Cool. Uh, I came in, I think, oh, it says third, but maybe a legitimate fourth, uh, and amazingly, the grid had um, 14 LMP1 cars, it would appear to be a 2,000 horsepower uh, Mercedes E-Class and a NASCAR car. And on the grid, as soon as the green light uh, uh, lit up, um, the Mercedes appeared and began spinning like <laughs> as if a carousel had a Mercedes logo on, on, on opposite ends, just spinning around. <laughs> then the NASCAR car was vibrating so much it looked like it was going to take off. And then I waited for the damage to be done, and then I made my way through the wreckage. And, had an excellent, excellent time of it. Um, really great gentlemen. Probably better gentlemen drivers than we have on the real course today in GTE M. Were your lap times quicker than first session? Uh, I did, I, my best was a 346. And so yes, it was. So a little bit better. Um, and uh, that was really, 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 love. I loved it. Hey, this guy said I patted myself on the back. Yeah, I did because I'm not that good at this and I shouldn't have placed that high. I'm not gonna lie. But it was all about damage management. And I would utterly, absolutely uh, love to see the next race start in 10 minutes. All the same guys, a couple of new guys. It was really awesome. Alice, I said, said, said to Leo that the chatter uh, over the intercom that you guys know as it's probably more than I do about racing. And it was just really great to hear you guys talking and uh, about the race, about what we were doing, and about um, what's going on in Le Mans. So, um, you wouldn't find that you don't find that distracting having all that talking while you're trying to. Focus? No, I find it really entertaining because it's really fun. One guy said to me, "I just bumped you, so I'm gonna let you pass me." Like, imagine if real drivers did that. <laughs> I mean, that would be, that's really gentlemanly and it's really nice. And then uh, he hit me for real, so then I passed him. So, but um, it was awesome, and it, it it was really great. And I'm so sweaty, I'm such a mess. I can't wait to get back out there. Um, you know. Well, thank you for that report. Um, but uh, let me for the guy who's making fun of me. Um, I just came in lucky and not good. Who's making funny? Sure, Juggle said you came in oh. third. I was surprised I got into fifth gear with my car. Didn't want to turn. I like um, that. Leo was like, 
Who's making fun and of you? Checkered Flag Podcast says that was my Mercedes. I yes, want to send him yes, a thank you card. Uh, and GHS Media Center says he met me three years ago and I was cool. Thank you. I think maybe I was drunk then. All right, I'm going to uh, drink some water. Okay. And um, get back in the seat. We're going to resume in about uh, seven minutes, I think. Uh, if you have any rule requests, um, then um, you know I'm going to ask you in the in the uh, in the um, chat room in a couple of minutes. Now I think I've got about six or seven people who want to race. So after this race, I'm going to restart the room so we can get the people in who haven't had a chance to race yet. But anybody who uh, enjoyed this wants to race with me again later tonight, send me another message saying you were in an early race, and we'll get back to you later. Great. Have you landed the plane on that one? No, I'm just. I just wanted to mention that this if, is called building loyalty and friendship. If all we did, if all we did today was was, was you know, Alex met great people online and raced them, and I came up with Farty McMahon boobs. I'm I'm telling you, we came up with uh, with with uh, with some stuff that's going to last. <laughs> with this. So all that preparation I did meant nothing. No, no, no. Leo, I think, you were made my favorite the, race commentator. Any network, any time in my life. Absolutely. I learned more from watching from anyone okay, else. Okay, okay. You, 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 you are the foundation of this inebriated was, house. Now, do you want to touch my man boobs? <laughs> no. No, far from it. <laughs> do you like Creed? Uh, A thousand. What? Yes, I am. Who <laughs> turns four? All right. Have a good third race. Weird. So you it's us wait. three? I back guess. All right, I'm jumping up back up here. Bailed. Since since you seem to like the couch. Oh my God, it's the Italian American hour. Now. I do like the couch. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you? What are, you are you holding your lap? Uh, I you know I, I don't want to drop uh, it. Hello, internet. Uh, <laughs> oh brother. <laughs> what happened to you? He was just going to be here for a couple hours. I don't know. He now just ended up staying guy. here. It's like the uh, New York bus cool, man. Call. I like this guy. He's all right. He's all right. Don't, don't encourage. Don't what do you guys think about this guy over here? Yeah, we need we need comments. He knows his stuff. He definitely knows his but stuff. Then he, but then he finishes it with this ridiculous platitudinal comment opinion. Like, well, that's his Steve. I like <laughs> Mapo. Who cares? I like Mapo. Oh, no. <laughs> Is that the... <laughs> no, by the way, I, didn't, I did not say a... Uh, I didn't say the, uh, the F word. I didn't. No, I just a, a commenter you know, thought my, I said the F word. My little Verizon thing is so far behind, so I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, do we? Oi, Leo! Oi, oh, oh my God! I still can't believe they're showing the accident again. No, that crash is seriously gnarly. I, that, that was that. I gotta say, really, like, they're showing Davidson's Davis, crash. Uh, Anthony Davidson's uh, crash with uh, Farty McMahon boobs over here in the in the Ferrari. So you guys are going? I, no, I just want to say that is the scariest crash in Le Mans I've seen. Well, I guess since last year. <laughs> Sometimes here. I thought that that no, was going to be you, very what, profound. What all you viewers should do is profound. you should go out and you should look up uh, what the um, uh, what those bare chassis look like because uh, it's nuts. Um, uh, Which one? Uh, just you, you should look up on. Uh, uh, you know, I wish I had some of the latest. Which chassis? I didn't hear what you oh, said. Oh, you should look up what the um, uh, the carbon chassis look like on uh, on LMP1 cars just to sort of see what sort of protection those guys do or do not have uh, in terms of carbon fiber around where they are sitting, and uh, it's just crazy. Um, uh, Crazy good. It's well. It's, it's uh, yeah. No. It's 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 strong, but it's it's insane thing about them taking these crashes with so little space, and yet so much strong protection of carbon fiber. Oh boy! You know these comments are way way behind. Who's is this? Uh, Jeff's laptop. I think it is. All right. I gotta get way. I gotta, refresh. I gotta refresh, and I gotta get all the way up to the top. So I, uh, someone is asking me to talk in that accent for the remaining nine hours, and I really, I would, because that's how this starts. You want to be a hero? No, I just Off don't want to offend Scottish people with my horrible Scottish accent, because I really do. Yeah, Dario's on the phone. I love the, I love da the Scottish. <laughs> Dario's on the phone. Says, Dario. Uh, yeah, Dario says, hey, he's gonna kill you. can we take back our interview? I'll kill you. You bastards. I will find you, <laughs> and I will kill you. Is it my imagination, or this race, there have been a lot of ops? By a lot of cars. It seems, I, you know, I would, I would love to see, and maybe somebody should do it, uh, a, a, a comparison between of offs between this year and last and year. No offense. Someone says Mike interference. What do we got going on? That means on me. Again? He's talking about my. He's talking about Mike okay, M I K E. And I'm getting, I'm getting some broadcast here. You're hearing something. 
Yeah, is it over there or here? Just put on your tinfoil hat, you'll be fine. No, that's not the answer. What, <laughs> what I have is a very specialized set of skills. I will hunt you down. <laughs> I will find you. Are you going to help? And I will kill you. <laughs> Leave right. me. Now, I wish I could remember some good lines of, from, like, game, from recent Game, game of, of Thrones, Thrones episodes. What is it? Uh, a man keeps his word. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you need to do? Put on a balaclava and, and, and say those. Like, like it's chain mail. I think we have one around somewhere. I don't know if that's going to I think it should Do have. we have a balaclava? Can I, put I have one in my... It, it's in my bag. If you, want, you want to put it on? Where is it? Yeah. Dude, put it on and, and, and recite... Game of, Game of Thrones references. Friends? Sure. Yeah, it's in the main you, section of my bag. You've got a racing. You've got a racing. I've got a bottle of bottle with me. Yeah. No, why, I was I was in Monticello. I was in Monticello on Friday, so it's still in my bag. Yeah. Bring it over. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that's right. So did I'm you have to look up Game of Thrones lenses? Yeah, I'm a little jealous of this, by the way. You. So you were driving GTRs around Monticello. Yeah, I went to the GTR experience. Um, here it is. I'm so happy to be putting on Mike's sweaty. Don't worry, it's not that sweaty. It's all right. In fact, I actually didn't even wear that Thank one. You. That one's clean. Don't this worry one about smells it. Smells fine. I don't know if it's good. Um, I think you did. I can't. Tell you <laughs> so, uh, Raphael. Actually, you muted everything. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Oh my God! You know what? You want it? <laughs> yeah, this one a little bit. So, <laughs> I, I just have this uncomfortable feeling we're on some terrorist watch list right about well, now. Well, now you, yeah. Day. I'm having way too much fun. This is definitely not allowed. Um, <coughs> all right, all right. Wait a minute. So, so S Ford O one wants to wants me to ex elaborate on my Aston V twelve Vantage experience. What? What was that? No, really. I no. I, I said it. What I said in um, in the last road testament we did, the best fast cars that drive slow. Oh yeah. That the right. Aston V twelve makes you feel like like a superhero or a, a super spy. Yeah. Like you could just, you know, yeah, I'm going to, you know, Archer. I'm showing up and... You feel Archer? You feel like Archer, except not like as drunk, maybe, and not, and not <laughs> as much of a dick. I don't like, I don't know. Like sort of, no, you feel so, like what Archer would feel like if he wasn't such a dick. So why, I, I was kind of buying in, the V12 Vantage may not be the quickest of all cars, but it's got... 12. It's got it's Aston got, Martin. It's got 12. It's got Aston Martin. It's got Aston Martin. It has it's that got look. 12 cylinders. How is it not cool? It's not it's it's the most freaking cool thing. It, it just gives you this feel. It's like putting on a great suit. Okay. And I know that if you've never put on a great suit in your life, and I actually don't own a great suit. I've had a great suit on. I've rented one. <laughs> and it was great. It was great. No, the Delta Wing is not still running. It DNF'd after that accident, that yeah. contact oh, from the Toyota. Yeah. So go ahead. Anyway, so uh, driving around in an Aston Martin V12 makes you feel like you like you're just looking for trouble that you can you can write. You can, you're looking for wrongs to write. You just drive around, hey, waiting for someone to do something wrong so I could kill him. <laughs> it's like you're just Liam Neeson all day long. I will find you. You mean you want to ask people about the <laughs> I will find you. How did this and come up? I will up? kill you. How did this just come up? Someone else. Someone is asked, and, and just because I guess somebody who um, who watched the show. Hey, Ian. Last yeah. Can last we week. dial that down a little bit? My my fault for asking you to turn it up. What, what is in there? Not <laughs> fireproof. No fireproof. Not to be used in racing. All right. Well. Good thing you have it. That's why I have. Tell Leo John the intern from FAA I actually, something. That, that's why I didn't wear that one. I wore the fireproof one. That's, no, that was wise. That's why it's clean. I am gay. Uh, <laughs> you messing that with my sounds AM, way less my AM Of course, Archie. Strange in German. Porsche equals athletic. So I, all I remember in college, I, was, I went to Boston College, and I remember some kid had a Porsche, and he would troll around campus in like first gear. Right, you right. Know, There's always that 3, dip. 3,000 RPM, yeah, yeah, yeah. four miles an hour, just to be cool. Was that cool to do things like that? Um, you know what? That's one of those things that if you, like, there, for some reason, some people have a, there's a disconnect between what's cool and what they think is cool. Right, right, right. So it's that, it's like in 1988, if you, uh, let's say if you queued up your cassette deck to uh, You Give Love a Bad Name before rolling up to the club, <laughs> you know, yeah, you, you are a dick, but you think that you're cool. I love you say that. Say that from experience? Yes. Yeah, By say. the way, yeah. So Here's if you, if you knew that, that I did that, uh, it's, uh, I apologize for being such a dick. 
No, I, I also, yeah, it's just one of those things. And really, and, and honestly, like, like the, the V12 Vantage, it's about the sound, it's about the feeling of it, but ultimately, you're really not doing anything. I mean, you're, you're, kind of a, you're kind of a poser in it. And while that's fun for a while, you don't want to kind of live with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I'm going to so say. So what became the, before we drop this topic, what became the ultimate fast car slow? Of your discussion, uh, with for me it was it was a hundred percent Porsche 911 GT3, oh. and that's because even driving it slow, it feels like it does when it's fast. Okay. The steering is great, um, the the sound is great, it shifts okay. great, it feels good. Joshua Tree, do you have a a, a contribution to this? I'm just gonna pick any name I want. <laughs> You're just you making really up should. stuff now. I'm just making up names. Uh, Danger zone. Fast car slow. Fast car slow. I don't know. I don't drive fast cars. Slow car fast definitely was with you on the uh, first gen Honda Accord. Awesome car. So here's the point. We were talking about one topic. I wasn't asking you to change the topic. Give me a fast car slow. Fast car slow? Uh, I don't know. I've never driven one. Pick one. Um, uh, the, the only uh, uh, um, only two fast cars I've ever driven, driven was uh, uh, X6M through Manhattan. And uh, the the SUV um, and uh, an XKR oh, BMW yeah uh, and an XKR around Jersey which was actually really nice so I'll go with that one okay uh, it was uh, uh, enormously smooth um, uh, just felt like every car should be would yeah. your list change if I asked you about a fast car that you haven't driven but would want to drive slow you think it would be a good experience oh. Um, uh, yeah, you know what car I'd really like to drive slow? I just asked you, so te please tell me. Um, <laughs> um, oh, what do they call them? Uh, Carrera GT. Oh, the... the because oh. I hear they're the absurdly ten? difficult, and I want They're to not. You know what? The first... I, I, so what I've choice. heard is... yeah, they, I hear the clutch is... The clutch is not as bad as it... No, here, here's what happened. They, they, they have a replaced... It? They revised it. Well, I don't want to drive the revised one. The I want to drive the unrevised one. No, the unrevised <laughs> one, it's just, it's a really light flywheel, so you have to, it's really about... So that I wonderful. swear to God, everyone over at Jalopnik is middle name Richard, and you know where <laughs> I'm going with this. Why, everybody's a dick? <laughs> I didn't. Do you have to go look, literally I, every time? Look, I, you know... My I'm, favorite car? Fast car to drive slow? Yeah. Yeah. Ford Cobra. Not oh. Ford Cobra Mustang. Shelby Cobra, I should say. Oh. They marketed that, them as... They were just... Fun. Okay. They All were right. Just, I, I, I understand, I've never driven one, but I understand they're a bear to run quick. I mean, they really are a handful. Yeah. But trolling around in one of those has to be cool. We gotta ask Matt Farah, because he's, he's the only one I know who's driven Matt one. Matt Farah has not driven a genuine car. Well, not yet. a, <laughs> <laughs> he drove a, a 7,000 horsepower Cobra. <laughs> yeah, and he drove a, a, a Ferrari. Uh, oh, I will say, I did once see a replica um, uh, uh, Cobra Day Daytona Cobra. Yeah, those are great. The super and, performance ones. Uh, I don't even know if it was a if it was super performance one because this must have been like you know two thousand. Oh wow. Bother, replicas bother me. Even the the number extension. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know why I'm like that, but you you like the car. It enough. looked. I saw it for half a second. Yeah. In a parking lot in downtown Sacramento, I just saw oval, half white, half blue. No idea what it was. It took me years to figure out what it is because no one ever talks about them. And, you know, I wasn't on the internet. And, this uh, sentence doesn't end. The car is going to appreciate another $10,000. <laughs> Your point is, yeah. Uh, it looked awesome, and I, I want to drive. Yes. <laughs> so, by the way, just want to end. Uh, S401, who asked me about that, um, said, uh, is it something you'd want to drive daily? Mm -hmm. That meaning the Vantage V12. Yes. And is the power adequate? Yeah, the power's adequate. Power's adequate. Adequate. Um, it sounds phenomenal, but I don't think I could pull off driving a daily. I think I, I don't know if I could actually pull off driving the B12. So, so is uh, JF Fusil around here? I don't know where he went. He went around. So here comes my question. Okay. And, and really, I'm just channeling some of our viewers. Where is Chris? Chris Harris. Chris was really busy today. So unfortunately, is he on a shoot? He's is on a it? shoot. He's on a ah. photo shoot, and right now it's like six. Well, hours yep. from this, so it's th so it's like dawn. So he's maybe just waking up. So yeah. maybe he'll. So he'll maybe catch him still later. before we're done. And uh, where is Matt Farah? Well, Matt Farah is probably out partying. Is it? I don't know what happened to Farah. Yeah. I, I thought Farah was supposed to uh, supposed to call in. Yeah. Sorry about the Chris Harris thing. Um, I yeah. think I was under the delusion he was going to be available too. I was too. He probably got held up at the shoot, and hopefully he'll when he wakes up this morning he'll uh, he'll Skype in. 
uh, I need to ask Alex Roy. So the question from his last road testament, he being Mike Spinelli, what fast car would you enjoy, enjoy driving slow around town? Where, where is he coming? He's, he's got a... Oh, Alex. Here he is. Uh, 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 what fast car would I enjoy driving slow? Yeah. Uh, well, I have the answer to that because I just drove it. This is amazing. I ask a question and then they proudly tell me I have he, an answer. A few months ago, <laughs> I was hanging out with uh, Andrew Comrie Picard. Oh, yeah, ACP. Rally, Canadian rally guy? Canadian rally guy, mm. and a um, good guy. And, uh, and and I don't say that because for any reason other than when I was doing the Baja 1000 last year, he was as well, and he was in a top class truck, and I wasn't. And when he came into the pit for his driver swapping, he got out. He Instead of getting in his van and sleeping, he waited, stayed awake for me to arrive at the pit and see how I was and give me some pointers. And he was just a really helpful, nice guy. Cool. So he owns a... Porsche 930. Oh, okay. and yeah, which is like track prepped and barely street legal. Yeah, and I gave him the keys to my Citroen SM. Yeah, and I he gave me the keys to that 930, which I was so terrified to drive because my old buddy Dave Maher had one which he cracked up, and you know with uh, you know summer tires on icy road. Those are first gen uh, Porsche turbos, right? and you know four speed turbo, and you know the uh, you know, crazy long gear. Just, Were the uh, turbos really an on-off switch? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. I was I never got out of second gear um, yeah. on the PCH. And that was just, it was just. So that was the just, car. That, for me, I mean, I haven't dri I've driven a lot of cars, but that was something really, really special. What, what color was Andrew's uh, 930? I can't remember. You, know, you can't remember what color it was? I can't remember. But uh, wow. I can barely get into it because he had the racing seats are so tight. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I own a um, an 87 911. Uh, and that, I wouldn't say it's a fast car, it's a quick car. It weighs like 2,200 pounds, got 250 horsepower, uh, air-cooled, 3.2 liters, and that car, loafing along, is just a wild blast. The power-to-weight ratio is really great, and that feels faster at any speed than modern 911s that I've driven and owned, and I prefer those cars. In fact, and I, and I completely agree with the concept of that road testament episode you did, because it makes you realize how wonderful driving can be. Cars don't need a gazillion horsepower, right. and um, Chris Harris has shown us you don't need big tires. And that was the point, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, by, the way, I, I my by the way, I just want to, you know, <laughs> again, ahead. you know, um, the, the uh, S Ford O One asked wanted me to clarify. And when I said I couldn't pull off driving a, uh, a Vantage V12, yeah, it's me. Like, I can't, I don't think I, I could be that guy pulling up somewhere. Sunglasses. If you had sunglasses. You gotta have sun. Well, yeah, it's a sunglasses thing. No, I, I would I not no feel, idea. I would not feel comfortable pulling up somewhere in a Vantage V12. It's too much responsibility as a personality. I have uh, actually a comment and a question for you guys. When I was in AGS F1 school a couple years ago, and that's the fastest car I ever drove slow. Uh, <laughs> and, but the most fascinating thing about it, I would not say it was fun, I'd say it was terrifying because the envelope was performance was so beyond, beyond. You know, if you hit the gas, the car like just, you know, ran away from you. If you let go, it just hunkered down and dropped. And it was really amazing to see the aero do all the work. Yeah. And the physics do all the work um, so far beyond my ability to anticipate what the car would do. Um, but you should do a road testament where you ask this question. What slow cars are really fun to drive fast? Well, that was the one we did before that. I didn't see that one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was the verdict? The verdict was, um, oh, man. No, you know what the, the, the cool thing about that was? There were so, much, so many that people listed in the comments. It was just gigantic. There are so many cars that you can, um, you can have fun with that are... Um, that are fun to drive, even if you're not uh, completely, well, even if you don't have 500 horsepower to play with. Well, I have a, a, an addition to that list. Okay. And I think you know what it is. Uh, the Citroen SM. And I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because you okay? No, because it is the definition of a car intended to go fast. That by both design, marketing, and politics does not. 5,000 pounds, 170 horsepower. And it's five thousand pounds. Yes, and it's no, it, where? Maybe where? forty six hundred pounds. Wow! You smuggling, you smuggling cocaine in that car? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, everything, <laughs> including the interior, is made of steel, which is a leather overlay. Nice. But 
the great thing about that car is that it literally handles like a gondola. <laughs> is there an Italian man on the, on the roof? I have, wheel is like I have no idea whether that was a compliment. It, it, I think in a good way. It, it does feel like you're sailing the high seas. So you're just kind of floating through things? Yeah. Yeah. Um, How do you turn it? Use the oar. Very gently. 1.1 1. 1 turns lock to lock at the, at the lowest ratio. In that, in that hydro suspension, yeah. does the car pitch and roll? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Can you stiffen it up like... The Cadillac Magna Rock. Well, an Magna interesting Magna. thing about that design was, uh, have you ever read anything by A.K. Setright? I think so, yeah. Oh, so, okay, so, right. The great intellectual, the great, he's the, um, Did you he's say the JK? Is Thomas JK? Pynchon of automotive journalism, wrote a book called Drive On, which I learned about from Jalopnik, which is the most fascinating book I've ever read about, about cars. It's a really great book. It's, and it's a social, cultural history of, of, of cars. And in that book, he was talked about Citroen DS and some of the early designs mm -hmm. in the hydronomatic system. And he explains to me that I didn't know about Citroen, um, which is a tragedy. You know, they purchased Maserati in uh, 69 or 70. Okay. And their hope was to compete with Porsche, and the SM was intended to compete with the 911. And the idea was that they would put a big engine in the car because uh, the, it, the hoped for four liter V8 a Maserati engine, the, the suspension stiffness, the steering and the handling and the braking is all hydrodynamic was intended to be made into a, an engine of great power, which would deliver pressure into the suspension on braking, which would be very interesting. Okay. And the engine never materialized, and instead it was underpowered, therefore making the handling entertaining, <laughs> the braking um, uh, dreamlike. <laughs> so there's just not enough vacuum pressure? Is that, is that really the issue? Uh, if, if you... By throttle, the system generates more pressure mm -hmm. and stiffens up the suspension, in theory, but okay. with not enough output. That's, I, I, okay, I, well, I Alex, I've got to ask you a question about my favorite car in the world of all time ever, which I, is the Maserati Come Scene. It's cool. Car. Which one? It was uh, the Maserati Come Scene, so the, uh, the relationship went both ways. Uh, um, uh, the relationship went both ways. So um, uh, when Maserati replaced the Ghibli, the very beautiful front engine, right. um, uh, uh, big V8 uh, engine car they had. They, known as the Grave Digger. <laughs> <laughs> they replaced it with a car that had um, uh, Citroen, hydro, uh, Citroen hydro pneumatics in it. So it's um, uh, the clutch is hydro pneumatic. Uh, I guess the brakes were. Um, uh, I don't think the su suspension was. Um, uh, and I think that I guess I think the steering was. Um, uh, I've never driven one of them. Oh, I I I would I would murder people to drive. I, one. I saw one of the Greenwich Concorde for sale a couple of years ago. It is a beautiful car. Um, hey, did anyone go to the Greenwich Concourse this year? I did. I was, oh, was, you was there. It was cool. Yeah. What made it cool? I was also there. Uh, well, that's what, uh, what car caught your attention? And then we're going to get uh, back to the race in a second. And uh, by the way, I'm going to get back to the racing in the uh, Porsche. Porsche, like, you know, Audi. Porsche. Yeah, 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 yeah. A Porsche. Yeah, Porsche. Uh, there was a Porsche there. There was a really, uh, there was a, a, a quite controversial pair of. Uh, there's a quite controversial Bugatti 57. Yeah. Wait, it's Peugeot and Bugatti. I like that coming. It's nice. Yeah. That's how you roll? Did you say Bugatti? Sorry. You, I, I thought you said Bugatti. Bugatti? He did. Oh, yeah. Bugatti. Yeah. Isn't that how you say it? That's how the Brits say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Um, Leo, there's a, there's a uh, Porsche Cayenne. Uh, Porsche Cayenne. Uh, Porsche Cayenne. Uh, Porsche Cayenne. Question for us oh, from uh, commenter. Cool. This, the, uh, Should there be an all-wheel drive uh, class inside GT uh, in Le Mans? For, 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 I mean, for obviously what Porsche Turbo and uh, and GTR, of course. Yeah, it reeks of GTR. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, why not? If uh, if the, 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 the challenge would be to balance the performance of an all-wheel drive with something else. And if they were asking should there be an all-wheel drive only class, I'm not sure there are enough all-wheel drives to fill that out. Um, was, was that the question? Right, that is the question. I mean, what, okay, what cars would be in that class? Obviously, Porsche Turbo. If they chose, If yes. they chose. GT5, a uh, GT5, GTR, GTR. Something, GTR, something Audi. Something Audi, okay, what? Uh, I mean, you could do the, I mean, R I guess R8. R well, you could do the R8 would be, you know, the real car. R8 as a yeah. race car. Um, what are we talking about? Four-wheel drive cars four, to run? All-wheel drive, all drive race, cars. race cars to run in a fictitious uh, GT class for all-wheel drive cars. Mm. 
I mean, those are the, the obvious, obvious ones. ones I'm sure. Probably worrying, Evo, but yeah. Yeah, without worrying about the logistics. I mean, and Subaru the Evo. I would say yes. Yeah. That's, if, if we're going to build stuff, you can race it. So let's find a way to race okay. it. Because as someone said, I much, like that much attitude, later, by the way. Wow. If you're going to build a car, find a way to race it. And not, you know, I, we love rally, but it would be kind of cool to have a GT class with Subarus and Evos and. I remember a Toyota. Uh, executive, Japanese executive, in a meeting as we were discussing marketing, and the uh, discussion was where to spend money on motorsport or on some other marketing. And he said, "We build cars, so we should race cars." Right, Lambo. By the way, a uh, few people pointed it out. Just wanted to throw that out there. Yes, I think it would be cool. All-wheel drive. Let's go for it. So hopefully, I answered your question. That would be cool. Um, would, would it be redundant? Would it feel redundant watching a? A, uh, uh, a Le Mans or an ALMS. You know, if you if there were, if you're watching a GT class with two wheel drive and four wheel drive, would it feel like hey, there's a little too many cars on the get a little crowded and? No, no. Okay, I, I, good. I, like that. I think the challenge would be either balance the cars in one class, because I remember when the Audi Quattros ran in what used to be GTO and then GTU and even Trans Am before that. Right. And they just ran away. Right. I and mean, they had such a distinct advantage. And if you balance the car, does that take away some of the the the, the, the challenge of uh, the gravitas of, of yeah. coolness of being all wheel drive? If you're running two separate classes, okay. So I'm dismissing all that logistical reality. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying if you can build it and you want to race it, you should be able to do it. Yeah, I agree. Because the authenticity of a GTI race car and GT three being a V eight with a rear drive only. It's not a GTR. You're right. No, you can't. See, that's the thing. I mean, I, I had earlier I had mentioned that you would we, we should see GTRs in GT. No, 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 and I agree. I mean, I think that's if you see a two wheel drive GTR, it's not a GTR. Right. Exactly. That being said, yeah. in the 90s, and then I'll let you go. In the 90s, uh, Toyota with Sard ran at Le Mans an MR2. Right. However, right. it was a V8. Twin turbo, <laughs> longitudinally mounted engine. Exactly. It had very little except for the initial tub unibody mm -hmm. to be with an MR2. Great yeah, car. Yeah. It wasn't an MR2. Uh, right. You were going to say. I totally forgot about that car existing. Isn't that awesome? I'm super excited about go, that. Go Google that one up. There was a great shape. Yeah. By the way, uh, some of the best G GTRs ever made were two wheel drive. It's just FYA. You know, before they went to four-wheel drive, I mean, that's they were, true. They were awesome the for many cars, years. The yeah. Well, ones. they were awesome I've got to tell you, my absolute looking. favorite uh, GTR is the R31. I think that was two-wheel drive. You guys in these numbers, between BMWs and, and Nissan, I can never keep up. But yes. no, the, the, the Ken Mary Skylines and the Hakusuka Skylines, the first and second uh, gen, were just stay amazing. Well, well, the Hakusuka is such a cool-looking car. Yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah, like that, exactly. the... Um, Anybody who hasn't, there's a depth of speed video not that long ago of a guy driving around his first gen Skyline yeah. around some track in the in the southwest. So, and, and I yeah. agree awesome. with that. I agree with that. But that was the car. It was a two wheel drive, big horsepower car. Yeah. If the current generation is all wheel drive V6 twin turbo. Yeah. Then then that should be the basis of the race car. Oh, uh, by yeah. the way, a commenter that uh, scrolled by. And, um, and, and I can't even begin to tell you what a super GT. GTR oh. means to me because it's right, just right. Right. Well, that's true too. But don't forget, we've got a new NSX coming up, and that'll be all-wheel drive. Yes. You guys want that's a good car. Right. So there's, you know, there's enough that I, I mean, maybe we're, maybe we're talking about a new class to make it just to keep it relevant. Well, and honestly, the way they dealt with all-wheel drive. Bentley Continental, another one. The Is that Super Sports. Drive? Yeah. I mean, granted, it's 85 million pounds, but. <clears throat> I, I wonder if the rumor is true that Bentley is going to come back to Le Mans. And I wonder if it is true, which class? Prototype for the brand or some type of GT? I would say prototype for the brand. Really? That's my guess. It, it, Aston Martin, prototype. Uh, no, no, no. You know what I mean? Aston Martin, prototype. Uh, uh, Bentley, prototype. I don't okay. think you'll see a GT Bentley. I wish you would. I, you know, I think I that would, would look great on the... On I'd, the rather, uh, I'd rather see the GT Bentley. I, I would, too. I would, too. I think that would be a really good look. Um, you know, maybe maybe they'll race the V8. Maybe you know, maybe that's part of the V8 thing. Maybe they're going to go GT, <clears throat> homologate the new V8. Is the V8 the same V8 that's in, in things like the Aston Martin? Or, or am I confusing brands now? You're confusing brands. It's the uh, 
They've all broken up. Bentley is a BMW. Ben, no, Rolls Royce no. is a BMW. Rolls Royce is a BMW. <clears throat> Bentley's a Volkswagen. Bentley's a Volkswagen. And it's Aston a Martin Phaeton. is who? They're Aston Martin they're is. They're hot. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Pro Drive uh, ended a while ago. They're owned key, by uh, some. Uh, it's it's a no, Kuwaiti. It's a Kuwaiti uh, wealth fund, and David Richards from Pro Drive. For Aston Martin. For Aston Martin. Yeah, and and uh, uh, there's a new. Are we starting over? I guess it's still uh, Ulrich Betts, who's who's the CEO. Okay. <clears throat> wow, I'm starting to lose the and voice. Jaguar is Tata. Jaguar is Tata. 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 Ta yeah. Okay. So did Milwaukee for IndyCar already finish? And that was today, Saturday. Well, Saturday already went by, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> We've been here all day. Milwaukee was uh, today. God, I hope there were more people in the stands. I believe so. Um, Milwaukee. All right. You guys hear? You guys hear me? It's a whole other discussion. Do we like the look of that car? Which one? Oh, there you Indy go. Cars. It's hideous. <clears throat> Everyone knows. I don't like the look of it. I think it's. Pr I hate to say it. It's starting, starting to grow. Starting to grow. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And the racing's been good. The racing's been good. All right, back to our race. Do we have anything going on here that's any different oh, yeah, as we start results. to wind down? Um, uh, so we've got um, uh, the number one Audi is still in the lead uh, on the same lap as the, right, the, is the number two, so Capel and Christensen. Uh, then it's an R18 Ultra, but, but five laps down from the next one, uh, seven laps down from the leader, is still the uh, Lola Toyota. You are still hoping to suck that car in. You think yes. well, you think Rebellion has any chance? Sure. To do what? I, I think mathematically they don't at this moment. There's another car. And by the way, the, the fourth Ultra is only two laps back from the Rebellion. Right. And it's turning laps six seconds, seven seconds quicker than the Rebellion. These are all true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it has another pit stop. That's fine. That's all you right. You know, maybe it'll blow up. Great. Maybe you know, you'll get shot by lightning bolts. You have a career on Fox TV with that <laughs> attitude. Um, but what if it works? How about um, GTE Pro? Where are we GTE here? GTE Pro, the other one that we care about. Um, uh, so, uh, with 209 laps is the AF Corsa uh, 458. That's the number 51 car. Uh, then there's the number 59 car, the luxury racing Ferrari 458, at 208 laps. And on the same lap is uh, the uh, Aston Martin Racing uh, 97 Aston Martin. And, and you've made this comment before. At the shocking part of this is the lead Ferrari has made 13 pit stops. Mm -hmm. P2 has made 14 pit stops. Aston has made 17. And they're on the, the same lap as the P2 car. Right. How, how, what is going on? There's some weird tire, Commenters, there's help some me understand. weird strategy stuff going on that we have been that we've been missing, I can only assume. And the lap times, I mean the best lap times, they're within a second of each other. So. It's not that the Aston seems to be kicking butt on the track. I mean, the Aston well, did. It, it's hard to know. I, I don't know if at this moment in time, um, it's the Aston, which is like doing crazy speed and making up for all these pit stops, or if it's the if it's the Ferraris who are managing their tires so much better, or managing their stops so much better that they're running with fewer stops. I don't know who has the advantage. A lot, uh, three extra, four extra pit stops. I mean, they. I think Aston Martin took advantage of that yellow flag. Remember the full course yellow? Mm, and they right. found themselves in, a, in an okay position, but... And a car that can pretty keep impressive. up and not have to pit as often is definitely going to be the win. It's definitely going to be the happier car. Well, we shall see. Um, uh, going back to LMP2, it's still the uh, Starworks uh, number 44 Honda, uh, followed by, again, a brace of Arca Nissans. And down in GTE uh, AM, it's still the Corvette, followed by the Ferrari, followed by the Ferrari. Or, uh, no, Corvette, Porsche, Ferrari, Porsche. Porsche. Um, yeah. Is that true? 2013 is the final year of the GTR in its current iteration? Um, they wouldn't comment. When I talk to them. Well, that's right. So you did an interview. Is this going to be a... Uh, uh, JF, JF actually interviewed... Uh, is this a driven or a... Uh, he's going to do a, a driven. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what did you think of the GTR? Well, the, for 2013, they've upped the power. They've been upping the power in increment, right? How are they doing that? 
odd software, I believe. A little intake maneuvering, but I think ultimately they're, they're, they want, they're, they're looking at what, what that engine can take. And it's, it's in the mid, well, it's at, at 540 or something now. now. Can, you, can you feel the upgrade yes. year to year? Yes, it just feels sharper. So we, we started out driving the 12s. Oh, they did do that? Yes. They did? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And? And when you get, you get out of the 12, first of all, we were at Monticello. And I have never, I mean, I've always liked the GTR somewhat, just because it's got so much grip, but I've always been a little tentative with it. This time, you know, I was more comfortable with the track, more comfortable with the car, started out with the 12s, um, got a pretty good pace going on the track, got, got comfortable with the track, and then they put us in the 13s. And you can really, really feel the sharpness of the extra horsepower and extra torque. So um, using all of that grip, it, it's got a, an amazing amount of grip, but it's still heavy. So it's really, you gotta be really, really, really uh, judicious about where your brake, you know, you gotta nail your braking zones. You've got to, you can't carry that, you know, all that speed into a corner, because it will push. But if you carry, a, if you get the speed right, it feels so good, you're in race mode, and the, and the, the diffs just start working together. If you get that speed right, you can carry a lot of speed in the corner, get to the next corner. I mean, it's really, it's a fantastic car. It's, I, I, I like it. It's, I still, I feel it, it, you know, people accuse it of being clinical. Um, it's, it's not as much clinical as it is, it's a tool for going really, really fast. It's not something you're gonna slide around the track on and just kind of, you know, oppo your way through it. It, but it is amazing. I mean, it's such an amazingly capable car. Did it feel more alive? Or yes, it felt more. There's a little chassis? bit more sparkle. Sparkle. Okay. Yes, and 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 really, um, and and you know what? Part of it, I can't, I can't really discount the part of, of it where it's just me getting better at the GTR. You know, because I mean, I've this has now been going. I mean, it's been out since what 2008. I've been driving it here and there, and you know, you when you don't own one, right? Yeah, yeah. You only get to drive it when you get to drive it. So um, I think part of it is just I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to get the GTR. Did you have any feeling? And there goes the Aston Martin shot. Oh, sorry to interrupt. That's all right. Just turned fastest lap, by the way. Oh my that God! Oh, it's a shame. Done. And that's a hard hit, sideways. Yeah, that car's done. In the kitty litter. Oh my God! So uh, you know you applaud them for going for it, and you said they just turned their fastest lap or the fastest lap. Fastest of the... lap of GT Pro. Really? What was the What's the time on it? Uh, three fifty nine two or something. Nine two or something like that. Oh my God! Uh, three fifty six. Wait a minute! I have here that they were in second in GT at the. Did, did they pass Makowicki? <laughs> Apparently, I thought, they were in, I thought they were in second before. I, I no, they were in third when last right. time I checked. It's only like me who's reading the results anyway. And no, no, they, they, come up. They, they went went a ton faster, 356. Yeah, two. he was pushing just a yeah, little bit too hard. <laughs> Which uh, beat the best lap that was a Corvette at 356.8. Yep. So... That's a real serious shame. All of our favorite cars are going to be That's not a good deal. Should we start liking cars that we really don't like? We're going to have oh, to... Oh, man, those Audis are awesome. Well, <laughs> you realize we, we just we just have created a Ferrari 123. Yeah. Oh, they're going to be happy about that in Maranello. And Corvette is now back in fourth. Corvette doesn't have the pace, back. and they don't have the pace to, to bring it up. Well... That doesn't look like it. I mean, here's a 356.6. For the Corvette, so I, I, to your point, I'm not sure there's enough of a differential yeah. for them to make up that without problems from the Ferraris. But that doesn't mean that one, two, you know, it doesn't mean the Corvette can't end up on the podium. However, at this juncture, the Ferraris deserve to win this race. Ah, uh, they do. There's no doubt. Yeah. There really is no doubt. They're they're doing because they've had their problems. They've recovered. They've done extremely well. And this is where I'm the most boring race car viewer. At some point in time, the race turns to a point where you just say, 
okay, the upset will be cool, but these guys deserve to win the race. Yes. And I would argue that, that obviously Audi e-tron Quattro is probably going to win it, but deserves to win it. But I would say that it has not been conclusive whether it should be a lateral repeat or a McNish Christensen win. Right. In P2, I'm starting to get the feeling that the Starworks team may get my vote of they deserve to win this because they've kind of sorted through all this mess and have been most consistently in P1 for a good part of these later hours. Yeah. In Pro-Am, uh, Porsche has been fighting, but if this Corvette thing holds true, you know, that, that starts to get that vote. vote. Yeah. And I would have voted for uh, a great finish by Aston Martin, but yeah. sometimes you can try too hard. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and you know, they do have, like what, five, how, how many hours left? Yeah, it was... Uh, no, they I, have a... I'm sorry, go ahead. Wait, how many hours left do they have? So nine... Uh, eight, eight, eight hours left. Yeah. I mean, or now wouldn't eight, have been the time... Hours. I guess now would be the time to take ahead. second and, and yeah, to, and hang in there. Now, they've pushed the car out of the, uh, the tire wall and the kitty litter, and it's making its way back to pit lane. So well, it, it was it. less worse than we thought, but I think it's kind of... Um, run away a chance for the win. Um, what's the weather like? Did it start to rain? Is it raining? It's not raining at no, all. No, no. It's, it's fine. Uh, according to the um, 10 degrees Celsius, humidity, they say 93%. Really? We could have rain. But sun. They're showing a lot of sun, so we're not sure. Where are you getting your weather reports? From the uh, live timing and scoring. Where is that? Lamont.org, or Lamont-TV.com. Oh, there it is. I see what it is. Interesting. Um, uh, do, you have, do you have time to entertain a not totally track related question? What? Depends. What do you got? Well, I'm wondering why um, I'm getting getting so little of a sense that the Honda car is actually a Honda. I'm wondering why. Because it's not branded a Honda. It, it, it really is HBD Honda Performance Development. They're so the, explain to me what that is they are and the, why they, I have not seen a thousand Honda ads of like, we're in Le Mans, we're going to win. Somewhere along the line, out of respect to Honda, the Honda Racing Development Department became a cost center. And their job is to make money with racing, selling racing performance. Okay. And for whatever reason, Honda has not really overtly branded these, these engines or marketed it as a Honda. Because they did get a few moments when uh, um, Acura came to ALMS for the first time. That was there a was few some years fanfare, ago. and actually, for whatever reason, they felt like they weren't getting their return on investment, and walked away from it. But didn't right. want to close HPD, so they said to HPD, "You can continue, and you can put those motors and your chassis work with with Worth Engineering out into the marketplace, but we're not going to market it as an Acura anymore." And we're not sure we're going to market it as a Honda, but you can promote HPD. Mm -hmm. Now, there are a couple of Honda racing decals out there, and I kind of follow the country lineage of which teams are running those. By the way, I, I just want to break in. I, I think, you know, I, I saw that Aston crash again. I don't think it was as hard as it looked at first. And, and now they're in the pits, and it looks like they're getting the car together. So nine hours they're going to have to try to claw their way back up through the field. They don't have a long way to go, but they do need to. They could finish. Things. Well, they'll finish. I, you know, uh, in order to get a podium, I think they're probably podium chances are are pretty much shot. I would. Um, I hear what you're saying. I don't disagree. Right. I mean, I, depends you know, on how many laps they give up. Th right that's now. the thing. And you know what? We can't can't rule out the Ferraris breaking at this point. No. No. So. Oh wait, they they rolled in the garage. It doesn't look too bad. I don't, it's... Well, you never know. Well, now they're just getting junk out of the radiator. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, oh, yeah, yeah, look at that, the ki kitty litter. They're, they're actually just frantically scooping away at parts. They're just, what are they dogs. doing? I don't <laughs> it's know what they're scooping doing. things. I'm amazed that, you know, the cars can get as high-tech as they want, and people will still be hitting them with hammers. And it, it, there will still always be a low-tech element in it. In just wrenching on these cars. 
Yeah, Honda, to your, to your question, yeah, keep Honda, going Honda, in quite... Europe, Honda in Europe seems to be promoting their world touring car, or British touring car? Is that what um, you get the uh, Civics? The s they were big uh, in British uh, BTCC, but I think they're in, I wish I knew if they were in And I, I, I think they are going to bring a world touring car back. Obviously, IndyCar here in America. Um, they're, they're, they've still been running the, uh, the... Japan Super GT. The HSV 10 or whatever it is. In Japan Super GT. Yeah. Which is an awesome car, but isn't really anything. So for whatever reason, they really haven't gone Honda branding. Which seems insane to me, because the, the cars are fast. Uh, I don't want to sound all marketing business 101. I think it comes no, down should. to investing their marketing money, and they've chosen not to promote Honda with racing right now that way. Even though they know they have a winning team with their engines who might conceivably be happy to run there. And, and maybe you guys, can, you commenters can help. Do they promote their Le Mans participation in Europe with advertising and marketing? Because I don't, I don't feel like there are a lot of Honda fanboys who are thinking like, oh man, so happy, like, so juiced for the uh, LMP2 win. I don't think that's happening. Corvette, Leo. Yes. So they've had some misfortune. Two really, really long pit, yeah. Yeah. pit stops that, that, that put them behind in what was before a very, very close GT field. Um, where do you think? I mean, what, what does this mean we for, back for, uh, for, I mean, because I, I had predicted a, uh, a Corvette victory, so I'm feeling a little uh, chastened. Well, the team, first of all, will turn their attention to winning the LMS championship, mm -hmm. and that'll be the face-saving move for making the 2012 season a success. Right. But there will be a lot of uh, Pratt & Miller introspection into what went wrong here and what can be improved in terms of process and preparation. Uh, because to your point, some of the events seem to be a little bit self-inflicted and a little bit operational from trying to catch up or make up for that initial mistake with the wheel nut. Right. Whatever mechanical things happen, whether they were failures or just kind of misses, uh, we know enough about Pratt & Miller that they will dive into that too and, yeah. and, and fix whatever. Uh, Le Mans is, is the focal point of this program. Even though it's an American brand, they like to promote the fact that they are a global winner and that they are not getting this job done with a P1. Right. It's big. It'll, it'll be a lot of... Heads will roll. You, you know, think heads will roll? I wish I could say that, and I'm not sure I'm... Of yeah. the, the heads will roll philosophy. Right, sure. I think that Pratt & Miller has a great relationship with the GM executives, and whether it is uh, a relationship that will beg forgiveness or some great PowerPoints to justify what happened. Right. Well, great power. There will be some PowerPoints flying. <laughs> there will be some PowerPoints flying. <laughs> um, I don't think anyone's going to chop anyone's head off from the GM side. Right. Having said that, Pratt & Miller is thorough enough that they will look within themselves and be honest with themselves, as they used to be, I hope, and fix whatever needs to be fixed. Here's a question. All right, so... so Honda may not be promoting themselves in Le Mans to the extent that maybe they could be, but they are promoting themselves in Indy. Yes. So it's a matter of demo it's it's a matter of geographics, right? So it really is about America with Honda. I, I I guess I guess so. I feel like they're conceding Europe somewhat. Yeah, I mean I Honda. I don't know how to argue against that statement because I can't think of Honda racing advertising and marketing right here. Uh, yeah I mean that's I haven't you know last time I was there I didn't specifically look but <laughs> so I have to pick up my I'll, auto, I'll have to pick up my autosport and see what's out there you know that's true you know I don't remember seeing them in autosport or in uh, motor in motorsport or yeah. octane or Evo or yeah. whatever the magazine I'm not leaving I'm just gonna clean okay. my glasses wow look at that it's it's winding down. You want to get us to break here? We're going to get to break in a couple of minutes. You're going to do it. Look at that. I'm going to get us to break? Yes, you are. Man. Man, oh man. Josh, just give me the countdown. So we're doing okay. Um, Honda uh, a commenter uh, 
Yeah, any ROB, Rob Herbert, MK, Mark 1, MK1. Honda doesn't currently have directly related road cards, cars which link into the race cars. People can't relate. That's, an, that's never really stopped um, companies like them and Toyota before. What bothers me about that statement, and I'm sure it's true, that commenter, I thought Honda used to be an engineering company that prided themselves in their engine performance and yes. engineering discipline, which I thought was a transferable skill. And you know what we're forgetting? What's that? Honda's kicking A in MotoGP. Yes. You know, you're right. I, you know, uh, Honda is, is dot well, but although... There is no well, though. Yeah, all right. Casey Stoner and the boys. Yeah, but I mean, Lorenzo is putting up putting up a hell of a fight in, 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 with Priyama. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. But you're right. No, you're right. I mean, they right have now the it's bike. Been a Honda year. They have the bike. They do. And I wonder if that's where they're doing the hey, look, we still know how to win and race and engineer things. You know, they did do that um, we engineer dreams kind of thing. Yeah, what was that? Yeah. You know, wh but they do they do consider themselves an engineering company. So so when they do promote themselves as a racing brand. They do it in the context of being an engineering company. Having said that, I hope the 2014 rules in the NSX kind of come together in some type of GT for Le Mans that gets out and out branded Honda or Acura or whatever the heck it's supposed to be. Exactly. Um, also, break? well, pretty soon. Oh, okay. um, also, uh, Alex Roy is still racing, so and, we don't uh, have any updates. By the updates. way, the um, uh, uh, 59 Luxury Racing 458 got a rear puncture. Wow. Look at this. So the the Ferrari, um, they were number two. They were running number two. Now, number, I'm not oh, are they? Yes, yes, yes. What are you gonna do? Go ahead. No, I'm not gonna do. It. Uh, so they were number two. Um, uh, now they are in the pits. Uh, 29 laps. Still two laps down. I'm looking at my most recent live timing. Um, uh, uh, they're still two laps ahead of uh, uh, the Aston. Um, but. It, it, go, it just goes to show things could go wrong for you never Ferrari, know. and uh, there are plenty of hours to go. Yeah, there are. Crazier things have happened, as I want to say. As you are. Um, Ferrari's tire down is great news. You, you. <laughs> great news. <laughs> um, How close great news, you? everyone. The Daisy Santo. Great news. How are we still awake? <laughs> you don't want to know. Actually, you don't. It doesn't matter. Are we? We three got some. Minutes. We got three oh, minutes. Stretch. So, so Stretch. Um, uh, Honda put their MotoGP guys on their F1 program and loused it up big time. Says C Pandy one. C P A N D one. What was that again? I'm sorry. Honda put their MotoGP guys on their F1 program and loused it up big time. They take committee-based decisions now, not with racing IQ, which. This sounds to me like a lot of armchair. Um, uh, well, armchair I don't know anybody on the work. inside of the old Honda. That world, that 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 connection between Honda F1 and Honda Jeep Moto Motor GP. That I don't know. I can't. Uh, but now Moto GP is doing well. Right, but Moto GP is doing well, and F1's gone. I I I don't know. I don't know it. Not sure what to say about that either. Um. So Let's why see. don't we uh, why don't we pick up the the brake pace here and get you uh, refreshed get us refreshed? Uh, well, wait a minute. We got another oh, question. Oh. Uh, Leo, uh, you noticed that Chevy has seemingly thrown away all the big races. What is that? Is there something oh, bigger? Oh, what would be the implications of that? Well, that's the question. What would be the implications of that if there are any? Are there any? Thro thrown away the big races? Yeah. Um, They've 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 passed up opportunities. They they've they Miss, messed up yeah. missed opportunities. Missed opportunities. Is the politest way to say it. Well, the, I think there's a the other thing that we talked about earlier in the year. I guess at Sebring was I heard from a few different people about BMW not passing up races, but sandbag. There's a whole. Are we allowed to talk about that? Sure, and we'll do it after the break. Okay.
We are back from the break. So you were making a comment about the GT class, was it? Or did I get confused during our break? Um, I don't remember making a comment, but okay. um, I'll, I'll see your, your uh, misunderstanding. misunderstanding and, and raise I'll raise you a, uh, an, an, a misinformation, a oh. bit of infamous, misinformation. Wonderful. No, I mean... And then we'll just lie to the audience. <laughs> we'll just lie to everyone. Have the trifecta. I, the, um, the, 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 oh, wait a minute. We've got to spin out. Um, and that is the Audi, the one, uh, one, the Audi? Audi 1 car. Are you kidding? Oh, no way. Yep. By the way, I'm uh, the... Uh, that looks too dark. Is that a replay? Yeah. Yeah, that was too dark. That's a replay. Yeah. But wait a minute. When did that happen? That yeah, was, yeah, that was... That's old. That's when that Porsche crashed. Oh, this uh, is... But I will tell you that the forget. number three Audi has indeed passed... The Rebellion? Did yeah. that hurt for you to say that? I don't know what you're talking about. There Leo. you go. There I'm you just... Go. Stick with me. <laughs> so, uh, um, I think Michael. something will happen. So, yes. wait a minute, wait a minute. To put that in perspective, not busting your chops, we now have Audi 1, 2, 3, 4? No, we have Audi 1, 2, 3, 5. Well, Rebellion is still 4. So... So which Rebellion are you talking about? Wait, no, no. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Please disregard me. Wow, entirely. wow, what happened? <laughs> I've been doing that since the third hour, but what's your point? <laughs> so, wait a minute, what just happened? <laughs> Nothing happened. Are you kidding? Yeah, Are you I'm serious? Kidding. Nothing? Yeah. Not a single <laughs> thing has sure happened? Nothing has happened. I love, I love <laughs> the dramatic voice inflection and uh, nothing happened. I got I really confused. I, uh, I thought the No, I thought the Lola was higher a minute ago. Uh, okay, so you were going to say coffee. something, Michael. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say that I think it's possible that Aston actually has a chance in GT of coming back and getting on the podium. Have I, and to that point, have you refreshed yet? Because I have a feeling that it's showing Aston now on the same lap as the... Yes, third. And they're back in third. And they're back true? in third, yes. And that's... Unbelievable. See? <laughs> I told you. Unbelievable. So, so the tire drop... I told you. When the second Darn place... Darn it. <laughs> Aren't they still two laps down on the next car and four laps down? They're three the laps down from second place, but they passed the fourth place car yeah. to get onto the podium. Yeah, there are 218 laps compared to 222 for the number 51 and 220 for the 59 car. Yeah, the Aston will not die. Tire. All right, so does, does, here's another question. Does the Corvette have a chance to get into podium plus one? Well, there's enough hours. You sure. There's onto the hours. rostrum. Can he get on the rostrum? I never knew it was called that. The rostrum. I don't know what you're talking about. That's in the points, I believe, right? In the points, it's the rostrum. But that's... Uh, I have the internet. You have the internet? Why? We have a problem with the internet? No, I can do. Type in Rostrum. Well, the Ferrari, the Ferrari is, is running two plus seconds slower than the Corvette, the P4 Ferrari. And uh, the two quickest cars in the class, I'm, I take that back. The P1 Ferrari is running 356s. The Aston's running 356s. The Corvette's running 356s. So. Fisichella in the AF Corsa mm -hmm. is not going to uh, concede anything, even though he's two laps up. And they're just running paces that I think... Oh, who's the fag with the MacBook? Oh, what's up? Is that what they said, commenter? Yeah, you know, it's just... <laughs> oh, man. Oh, not 18, LM13. You so cool. Yeah, <laughs> he's always your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what? Nice. I don't even know what happened. To them. I'm sorry. I'm we sorry, like not them. 13 M. We third, like all of our not 18. Yeah, except we, I don't like not 18 L M. 13. Nice guy. No, 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 no. I, you know what? I've heard that. We've heard that all day, and I, you know, I just I, screw it. What are we? What are you gonna do? You gonna come and get us? Honestly, but, our, our MacBooks eat their PCs, PCs of shit for practice. Whoa! Oh. What? All right. Yeah, anyway, back to the race that we're watching. <laughs> um, so, are, um, are, do you guys agree that the Nürburgring 24 is more relevant to the auto industry than Le Mans? No. Why? It's awesome, but I don't see how it's any bit more relevant. It's well, all GT cars. It's just a bunch of people with money having a good time at the Nürburgring. Well, they're more class of the cars. They're more cars that are close to, how wait a minute. How do you jump to these conclusions? <laughs> that's, that's the only reason that I, I get turned off sometimes when you make these candy ass comments yes. that are just purely opinion. It's like, I like black, so that's the best color. 
<laughs> first of all, it is, and you're wrong. Say, say it in German, and then Vettel and I will both hate you. Okay. Okay. Why do you think, seriously, yes. it, even though Nürburgring is all GT, why do you think it's not as important not as, 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 as relevant? Roman? Yeah. Um, well, it's definitely getting a lot more publicity, and everyone likes it more. And there's definitely a chance that it will become, you know, the yep. big, the big race. That but, people, but the relevant that word is watch. not the relevant word is not a marketing word. The relevant word is something more. Well, no, the, rel the relevant word is a, is a marketing word because when you put in your ad, Nürburgring winner or Le Mans winner, what has more cachet with people? What do you think? I still think it's Le Mans. I, Le Mans has more cachet. But I would be very happy if it was Nürburgring because the race is more awesome. Well, you know what's interesting? The, the race is more what? Awesome. Awesome. In that hard to define, totally overused sense. <laughs> you could write ad copy, you know that? But but the thing There's I like the thing I like about Le Mans, uh, the thing I like about Nurburgring 24 is that there are a lot more uh, there's a, a wider range of cars. There are cars that are much closer to what you have on the dealership floor racing in that race. And for good measure, you have some old BMWs, you know, you got some E, you know, E36 uh, you know, 3 series running. It is a little, that's where the awesomeness comes in, but I think it's more relevant because it is, there are more cars that you can actually buy in it. From a, so, so watch me actually try to play both sides against. I think that you could argue Nürburgring is more relevant for the grassroots enthusiast. Right. Because of the connection to the cars, as you said. And connection to video games. From a, good point. From a corporate standpoint, I think the gravitas and the formality and the longer tradition yeah. of Le Mans makes it a better marketing campaign. And I, and I hope that the WEC, FIA, ACO rules make it more relevant as a technical exercise for both GT and, and overall. Would you be happy if everyone threw all the money that they had, if, if, if sort of the Nürburgring 24 and the Le Mans 24 switched budgets? Promotion-wise, well, you know TV coverage-wise, wouldn't that be amazing? I think Porsche told me they spend more money on hospitality at the Nurburgring 24 than they do at Le Mans. That does not surprise me. Yeah. Well, then you're a smarter guy than me. It surprised the hell out of me. But but it tells you something about how those races. They're in Germany. Work. You know, people are going to care. They've got their home market to defend. Who won more Le Mans than than Porsche? They own Le Mans. They owned Le Mans, and then they Audi owned. won everything for it. And okay. Okay. But Porsche owned uh, the Nurburgring, and, and uh, you know they had Aston Martin to fight for quite some time. Aston Martin, that was a real battle. Aston Martin really wanted to claim the Nurburgring for their own. They built their own test set thing over there. They had Ulrich Benz, who was like you know racing everything. They were racing all those Vantage cars and giving them out as press cars to every magazine that would take them. And, they were really trying to champion the Nurburgring. As, and Porsche was still winning with all their Manthe cars. In their racing? Yeah, in the racing. That was how they did were going to Did we answer the question, or did we just beat it like a baby seal on a Palin family outing? I love that line. Wow. I, I love think, that line. I think that's exactly what we did. Um, no, I think you you surrounded the issue and flooded the zone. I don't know. I don't know what the hell happened. Why don't we move I on? I wasn't even listening. Someone asked who are the top three cars in uh, the race and it besides the obvious it's the Audis we have Lotterer in P1 mm -hmm. he won last year so this could be That's a repeat yep. the kids we have Capello in the uh, Dindo Capello in That's the number two car which is Christensen and McNish the gentleman the mature team and the number three we have the uh, R18 the Ultra car? I'm rooting for the old guys and uh, we have Rockefeller in the car the regular Ultra is in P3 your rebellion, Lola, is sitting in four, two thirty-four, la two forty-three laps, yep. and the other R eighteen Ultra is now only one lap behind, and still turning significantly faster laps. Why am I not surprised? So hang in there, boys. You'll be able to announce to me that your Lola will be passed by that Audi, and it'll be one, two, three Audi anytime soon. By the way, who's in last place? Who's who gets last? The, last place? Yeah, who's like the in the last? All right, I'm going to overall. Last overall. Now the Delta's not still running. Well, the Delta wing. 
So, can you please update us on the up, uh, the Delta Wing and its, its uh, current status on the Le Mans circuit? Uh, uh, yeah, it, 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 it DNF'd about six hours ago. But not... Oh, no, it can't possibly be. No, wait a minute. I'm going to check on uh, uh, FastLaneDaily.com. <laughs> Derek D knows. <laughs> Sorry, what was he saying? No, it's okay. Did you it's have an actual good. answer for this question? Yeah, no, no, I gave up long ago. <laughs> no, what's the last car overall? I can't tell which ones are. You can't tell what this timing which is. Which is the last one that actually DNF the, the live. Just look at the AM. Showing. Look at the last AM. <laughs> That's probably it. No, actually, I have a feeling it was the Pescarella. With the oh. DNF pretty early in this race, but I may be wrong because it so, kind of came back. Wait a minute. The last still running. Last still the running. Last still running. Yeah, I can't tell in this live timing which one is actually. All right, so still wait a minute. Running. Okay, look at the amp, look the at the pro lap speed, count. The pro speed Porsche 911 did is did 180 laps. That's pretty far down there. That's pretty far down. There. So let's see. You know, is, that, I think is that the last amateur car? No, there's a there's a 458 that did 146, but that must have retired, right? So it should say on the left hand side whether it's running or pit. Oh yeah, pit pit. Running looks like the last running car is the uh, Pro Speed uh, Porsche with 180 laps, a no. mere 71 laps down. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. That may be it. I think that's probably it. Well, what's P? We're in Hold P2. On, wait. Yeah, wait, P2. Wait, 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 wait. No, is, this, uh, is this a uh, uh, position of uh, fight for position? Four? No, that's an Etron Quattro, so it was oh, uh, right. passing. Grumble. <laughs> grumble, grumble, groan. Grumble, mumble, groan. Oh, I didn't mean to own Derek D. That was a prop. That was a prop. That was props to Derek D. Why did I? Did I really? It was great. I, we're uh, we're one I'm big. I'm sorry, Derek D. I, I meant that as a uh, as like a uh, compliment. We're one big happy family. Yeah, it's just are. it's just a coincidence. Right now Derek. Wait, wait a minute. Well, how could you possibly wait a minute? Derek D is better than every single one of you jerks. Is that what on they said? the television right now. Did they say that? No, I made that up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't encourage these people. They will actually type that. So, wait a minute. Somebody claims to have pulled the engine out of his car while listening to us. I wonder if he meant to pull the engine out <laughs> or he just sort of had to listen. Hi. You know what I'm really so scared of? Mad. I'm so mad. Ah. Just, I will rip the engine from this vehicle. So that's what the kids are calling. My point is, maybe, oh. <laughs> maybe what he pulled out is not really. Oh, his engine. His engine. He pulled out his engine? He pulled out his engine. That's what they're calling these days. what's the stroke on your engine? Uh, oh, my God. Smoking tires apparently watching. So yeah, well, OK, fine. Smoking tires apparently watching. Derek D is the best. Smoking tires watching? Where, by the way, is Chris Harris and Matt Farah calling in? I don't know is a good answer. I, I sound like Kimmy Another leadership Herman. comment. <laughs> <laughs> My, <laughs> my, uh, ah! What is that? No, 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 I used to. Are you doing a chip mine? Ah, no, I have something stuck in my throat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah! Yeah, that's Dom Pescarello is last because our commenters are actually paying attention. Really? The Dom Pescarello is last? That's what I the guy that says. Car. Ask, well, okay, I gotta read this. Ask Leo what it would be like to have a. New Can-Am series with today's tech but old rules. Oh, you know, I forgot to ask you that question before. I think Big, yeah, Rock, Big Rigger 78 asked that before. It would be like seven Gs cornering in 300 <laughs> miles an hour. Right, and, and every driver's just corneas would just pop right out of their <laughs> eyes. They'd be like, I can't see anymore. I, I'm wondering, you know, I read this somewhere that, that we're getting close to having to wear G suits in the F1 cars. You know, that would be interesting. Imagine if they, if they had Oxygen and pressurized suits. Well, they have to wear, wait, when you say G suits, you mean well, for your legs. pressurized? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for your legs. You know how they, the G suits have compression? No, you have to explain Compression, this. yeah, they're actually in pushing the, this way. Right, to keep the blood mm -hmm. not from going where it shouldn't be? Yeah. No. So way. I wonder. Because it is bonkers. It's like, was it five or six it, uh, in um, uh, turn, whatever it is, in Turkey? I haven't That's heard the, it that high. The, but um, it could be. Yeah, what's that called? The, not, the parabola yeah, is, at, is at Monza, I don't think right? That's true. You know? Five or six Gs? I don't no, think no, it's no. that high. So with the pilots, they put them in the legs when they do loops. It's up and down. Actually. It's up and down? And also, it's sustained Gs. Yeah, they'll, they'll hold five Gs for 
six seconds. Well, and to his point, though, that, that four apex turkey turn is whatever. It's, yeah, but it's, it's, it's wild. So you can't prevent the blood from going to one side of the body. What if I raised my leg? <laughs> so I don't know what I'm talking about again. Damn it, don't call me out on that. What if they put a compression on your head? <laughs> well, no, it's going to go closed cockpit, and it's going to be—it's going to be a whole pressurized zone, like a spaceship. So I, you know, I feel like I'm in a spaceship right now. I just want to say I, I love this, but um, I'm going to miss the last train. Right now. If I don't, if I don't um, switch yeah. places with JF yeah. or somebody. I'm, I'm oh, Diabolica. That's what you're talking about, right? Is, Dia called? is that what it's called? That's what. <laughs> that's not what it's called. <laughs> No, no, the per, the uh, parabolica yeah. is Monza. That's yeah. Monza. Yeah. The so, diabolica is, <laughs> is Turkey. I, want, I like that track. Yeah. I love it. Is that <laughs> Pinkerton Motorsports? Says. That's uh, diabolica. The diabolica. Rah! That is an Archer line. The diabolica. I raced the, uh, I raced I raced the, the diabolica. diabolica. I pulled eight Gs on the diabolica. What? what is the train? Uh, 140. I'm going to get a cab. Don't worry. Go close. See, uh, now here's, so here's my challenge no, it, back it, to you. It, it here's Eau Rouge, which is a compression and high G's. Yeah, but it's not long enough. Not, not long enough? It's just that So if you had, yeah, if there was like, if you were going down and then slamming straight up, that would be nuts. Okay. I'm all with it. It would be like, it would be like flying the Vomit Comet. Stay, Spinelli, stay. I know. I wish I could. What would you rather have, GT3 spec cars and jet instead of GTE? Um, I like GTE, but Parabolica, I think wait a minute. No, no, I think these guys are right. I think Parabolica is the... No, the nickname for the turkey corner is Diabolica. Is Diabolica. That's the nickname. The nickname. It's the nickname. Right, it's what they it's call it. It's officially called Turn 8, I think. Turn 8, yeah, yeah, thank you very much. All right, cool, just straightening that out. Yeah, uh... Train Leo. to where? <laughs> train to hell. Train to hell. So, Leo, obviously so at some point these regulations between, um, uh... The series are going to uh, coordinate, and GT3 and GTE are going to be pretty much the exact same thing. But would you rather go towards GTE, or would you rather hedge towards GT3? How about this? I kind of don't think it matters, because here they went from GT1 to this GT2, which became GTE, to slow the cars down. Right. And guess what happened? They're still going quick. Yes. So I think the GTE spec gives you this restart. But I kind of don't care because they're going to be quick eventually yeah. again. Yeah. And, and things like the McLaren and the Audi R8. All right, gentlemen, please hold down. So this is it? Hold down fart my man wolves while I'm gone. I cannot do that. You must. I'm you must do it. Leave your lot there. Come in. Fart man wolves needs you. Needs you. Don't miss a train. I don't want to miss me train. And that's not Long Island, uh, Ms. Bond. Thank you for sticking around. Yes, thanks for, I'm, thanks for being here, uh, Leo. And thanks for me being here. <laughs> Jeff. Pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Um, I wish I could stay longer. Damn you, transit system. I, I didn't realize they turned off the trains. Say, uh, what's that? Yeah, 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 yeah they, yeah. Stopped, they stopped running them for a couple hours at night? They stopped, yeah. yeah. To clean them? To get the homeless people out of Hello, everyone. Hi, JF. All right, JF. Are you awake? Two. I have a link. Good job. Oh, um, my. Give me my bag. My balaclava. There you go. I like it very much. All right, see you guys later. So long. Here's the coolest bag. Oh, God. That's what Thaddeus says. Oh, that had Thaddeus on there? Hi, Thad. Thaddeus is one of the best shooters and How much time uh, left in the race? Videographers I know in LA with Tom Morningstar. Uh, what is our time to go in the race? Too, um, fucking, uh, too long. Please, too long. Be, a, be a fan. Um, well, not when Audi is winning at all, and I'm kind of upset by that. You should be happy. So it's just coming Seven up hours? 7.30? I wish there was more of a, uh, an event happening, like a, a race. Yeah, no, I agree. At this point, it's a parade. But I'll be positive. Guten Morgen. We're all German. Okay, I've got my oh. Dunkin' Donuts. Je suis française. Uh, what? Est-ce que c'est go? Uh, I don't know.
You're not allowed to say that. So here's how things turn quick in GT Amateur. That green Crone 458 is now in P1. Really? The Corvette has fallen back. Oh, uh, God, Leo, do the math. Six laps, seven laps, eight laps. And uh, the Porsche 911 from Feldmar, the amateur, is in second place two laps back. So Ferrari, Porsche, Corvette. Corvette cannot hold a lead this, this year. Wait, what are you saying about Chrome? I'm seeing them in third. All right, the Aston. Am I reading uh, this wrong? I can read this wrong. You know what? I need to scroll up. I apologize. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, it's Porsche, Corvette, Ferrari, Porsche. Yeah, sorry, my my complete bad. I didn't scroll up to the top of the amateur grid. No four speed ninety one. Please email Josh for your T shirt. How is everyone? Well, it looks like the battery on the HVX is about to die. Ian, let's cut to the wide camera. Yes. Okay. There we go. I'm producing while China has. Do everything. Are these fresh batteries? Yes, those are fresh batteries, yeah. Um, so why don't you guys chit-chat? I'm going to go get a fresh coffee and... Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'm, I'm looking at the uh, live timing and scoring at, at live.lamar-tv.com. Beautiful in-car footage with the sun now, I guess, an hour over the... Uh, it is seriously gorgeous. It's beautiful out there going the, down the Mulsanne straight through the, uh, the shadows of the trees in the number three Audi R18 TDI Ultra into the first chicane. Fast, where that's where Romain Dumas knocked up the tire wall behind the number 79 Flying Lizard. And then got out and proceeded to beat the crap out of his R18 Ultra to make sure it got back to the pit. It was actually a full on karate chop, I do believe I saw. Just wanted to maybe confirm that with someone, but yes, Karate. No, that shot. was a great moment in the race. That was a him tearing that was off a great, the front of his car. Well, well, it was a great moment in motorsports. Fast, get it right. It was a great moment for mankind. <laughs> one small leap for man, one giant leap for an Audi R8. Ah, the French champagne. Thing. Okay, we are back with the HVX. Panasonic makes some of the best cameras there are on the market. Panasonic. That's what you need. Um, uh, let's uh, let's sure, run through the, uh, the GT uh, the G fifty cars again. It's still um, uh, it's still the no, uh, four five eight lead four five eight uh, leading. It's the fifty one car is still up with uh, two hundred twenty six laps. The fifty nine luxury racing Ferraris down at, at um, uh, two twenty five. And then it is the uh, Aston, uh, just behind him on, uh, well, not just behind him. Hey, uh, uh, 222 laps. No for Speed 91, please post your email address or email Josh at tangentvector.com to get your t shirt. What's that? No, I'm coming back. Or email, oh, or, I don't know. So JF, did you start watching um, uh, Le Mans when uh, Audi start, start showing up? Uh, uh, the first time I watched Le Mans was actually when Bentley was. Oh, okay. Like full fudge, like the full 24 hours. Right. That was the first time I watched it through as much as I could. This is the first time. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, huh. well, it was technically Audi, the Bentley team. It was an Audi team. So we have Andre Lauder in the number uh, one, leading the race right now. Last lap time was a four minutes, 14 seconds. One lap ahead of uh, Dindo Capello in the number two. So Lauder is kicking butt. He won last year's race. Yeah. He won pole position this year. Yeah. He's winning the race right now. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to think he's making a name for himself at Audi. It's awesome. Yeah. It's good, and he's young. He's young. And Rockenfauer is number three. And then number four, R18 Ultra, 
Are you proud of Audi for sticking with uh, Rockefeller? I mean, he made a couple of errors early in his Audi career. Remember those crashes? Yeah, he made, he wrecked out in the first two hours on, uh, in the R10. I think so, yeah. Yeah. But they stuck with him. Yeah. Uh, I think he's proven himself in DTM, and I think that's where uh, most of the season is. And, uh, you know, Rocky is a great person. He's great on camera. He's very good with the PR element of the business. And at the end of the day, this is a business. And if you can't communicate the message uh, and you're a good driver, you're not as good as the guy who can communicate better and is an all right driver. Is he uh, German? Yes, he's German. I'm, and I'm not making a big deal about it, just curious. Yeah, okay. but Rocky is very good on camera and Rocky is very good behind the wheel. So, Oh, and then there's uh, uh, Miss Gade on camera right there. Oh, look at the. Rocks coming That's out. what happens when you go off track and. Awesome. Uh, so, if you haven't been watching the feed from Le Mans this year, some amazing footage, uh, 200 frames per second across the track. Um, we've seen a lot of this at uh, Formula One races, but now finally, uh, we're starting to see it here at Le Mans. Look at that. And there's Seth in the Flying Wizard 79 car. Oh, the LED lights flickering. And that's because um, the frame rate so and the, the LED? Exactly. The LED lights are actually, um, they're not consistent. They're not. Beautiful footage from the track right now. I think it's probably a phantom or red camera. Playback, 200, 300 frames per second. Really tight in there. That's like, it's like 800 mil. That's up there. Drivers are fully awake. The track is coming to life. You have the stands still kind of empty. You'll st the stands will start packing back in in about two hours. Um, if you look through the grandstands, not many people there. Uh, everyone is pretty much hungover, drunk. Um, you know how these things go. Which camera is out of focus? I don't see any camera out of focus. So which race car was the glamour car of the race? Which one do you think looked most attractive? Which would you most like to photograph of all of them? Lizards. Why? The, the chrome is great. The chrome vinyl. Oh, that, that polish in yeah. the front? Just okay. like the McLarens on, in F1. Um, everyone's asking me about Kimi now, about his lack of communication skills. Oh, Kimmy Raikkonen? Yeah, Kimmy, um, from what I understand, is actually a very cool guy. He just hates the press. And I don't blame him, because we suck. Um, what? Yeah, the journalists kind of suck, so. He, he just hasn't been exposed to drive yet, though. He might actually like drive. I yeah. actually think, I actually think maybe, he's maybe very. Maybe he will like that. I actually Drinking think, games. OK. Yeah. Sorry. No, I actually think he's very good at communicating. He's just to very. The point. To the point and very efficient with his words. And it's a style thing he's now chosen. Every, everything I've heard about Raikkonen is just that he has no interest in doing anything other than being in a car and being fast. That's what all the people who are behind the scenes have told me. He's just not interested in, okay. in just chatting around and, and being a guy or being a celebrity or being a personality. He's just the guy who wants to go fast. Is uh, Thaddeus still watching us? Interesting, and then seeing if the guys from the smoking tire are watching from their LA place. Kimi's, Number two, Etron is in pit. Kimmy seems like one bad mofo. Make me want to get a Lotus. <laughs> I like, I like Kimmy. So there are those bottles again, the uh, patent pending bottles uh, that go into the. There they are. The drink fluid, washer fluid. They are the same size. They right? are the same size. One, one is washer fluid and one is drink fluid. Uh, water, I, I guess, that they have to interchange during every, almost every pit stop. And it looks like they're all the same size, so we're all very curious as to whether or not, ooh, look at that nice Sideways. little slide with the Ferrari. That's the so now we know one. where Chris is. Uh, ah, no? Found him. Yeah. Found Chris Harris. In a, in a Ferrari. Number four. This lot is very uncomfortable. What's happening? Okay. Um, 
guys. Delta looks like it would be something to sit on or in or whatever. Kimmy's interests are racing, drinking alcohol, and sleeping. That's not fair. He, you forgot eating ice cream. Wish Lotus would get his shitty together. Yeah, I wish Lotus would do that too. Well, well they're the, making the right steps with Danny Bahar no longer involved. Yeah, I mean, my, my snarky comment when we interviewed him, when yeah. we asked about the funding, it was the time he did not look us in the eye. Yeah. And that's, if there's a tell, that's a tell. He might as well just not look at you in the eye ever. That would have been better. That's a whole other story, yeah. So what car was, uh, is or was Heidfeld running in? I haven't really played it Black Lotus Lola Rebellion Toyota. Oh, the number 12. Uh, okay. Your Mac car is... So if you notice, there aren't as many people in pit lane, the crew guys, as there were, say, five years ago. Uh, it's one air hose now. That's true, yes. Uh, a few years ago, you were able to change multiple tires at once. Now it's only one air hose over the, over the quote-unquote wall. So, and if I'm, if I'm right, and maybe other teams do it now, the way Corvette did it, to speed up that rule, yeah. they had two air hose and guns. Yeah. But uh, but one would go to the front of the car, yeah. then they'd throw it back, bring the second one for it. Instead of having to walk it around. Right, right. And by the way, I'm going to do the uh, the thing here. I just saw it a minute ago. A shout out from. Uh, oh, I just lost it. I hate this chat thing. You're talking about Korea. Bear with me. I think I think that was it. You got it. What the comment about Korea? Hi guys, watching you from U.S. Army. I just scrolled by it. Garrison, Yong Sang, Korea. Great job. Thank you. Yeah, great job for you guys. Thank you. Korea, awesome. Cheers to that. Korea, U.S. Army. Thank you. Hey, if we're entertaining you guys for what you do, okay, it was worth it. Hey, it's Alex Roy is back with us. We're approaching uh, 1.30 in the morning here in New York. Again, the sun has risen at La Sarth. It is 7.30 in the morning over there. Alex Roy is back in the game. If you've seen the Chappelle video, Chicken or Fish, you'll recall when David says, back in the game, baby. Well. Sorry. Do you like turtles? I do. Are you asking me? Or is that a commenter? What the heck are you guys watching? Type the link. Well, we won't type the link. We're watching, right now, we're watching Speed TV. And uh, is it Lamar.com? Live.lamar-tv.com. Get the live feed and timing and scoring. In car footage. If you go to Audi.tv, you've got live in car footage and telemetry from the Audi RT. And how, did the, way. The, oh, how did the Delta Wing end up? Um, it got pushed off track by the Toyota on a restart, what, six, eight hours into the race? Yeah. Before sunset. And it had terminal suspension damage, both front and rear. So it, it, it did the target times, P2 type times. It was running. And it got taken out by a non-mechanical event. A lot of people asking us what cars we drive. Leo? I drive whatever car someone loans me in a, in a rent a car out of Hertz Station right around the corner from my New York apartment. So. Okay, Alex. Well, you, everyone knows your collection of cars. Hold on, hold on. I, I love your car, Jeff. Please talk about it. I was trying to avoid my car. No, you have a very cool car. I have a 12-year-old Audi A4 with 200,000 miles on it. Did, and no air conditioning and a broken first gear. Don't you have A8 brakes on that thing? I, how did you know that? <laughs> I know a lot of things. That's interesting, yes. I have a JF the Rube cars. Goldberg of Audi uh, fans. <laughs> Was that the first car that you bought? Yeah. That's a sweet story, Jay. I've jumped it. I've driven it across the country. And, um, and ex by the way, except for the first part of your post, uh, VFA 154 Black Knights, who ought to you guys if that's an, a military thing? Navy is better. He was doing a comparison to the last. Ooh. To the last call out. Navy's great too. Love the Navy. Is 
Yeah. I like geckos, by the way. I have a pet turtle named Corregidor. It's a 2000 Audi A4. Uh, Corregidor is cooler than you, I think. And I just learned to save money in my car insurance by switching to Geico. <laughs> and someone's Can telling us that, that uh, Duval just did a 325 in the Audi, so they're stepping up the pace. Yep, I guess so. Let's see. Uh, lap times in the 26 point Whoa. Got a refresh? No. Yeah, there it is. 325.6 Duval, the P5 car, chasing down your rebellion. Fisichella in the AF course of 458 Italia is leading the GT Pro section. Lap 229. Um, and he is. 13 seconds ahead of the other Ferrari 458 Italia of Luxury Racing, number 59. And the Aston Martin Vantage V8 is number, nine, uh, number 97. Well, number 97 is a lap down from P2. Something going on in the Toyota pit. In the Toyota pit? The Rebellion Toyota? No. In the Toyota Toyota. Toyota Toyota Hybrid. Are they going to pull the car back out? Oh my God. This Something's going on. Fun. What are they showing? Just uh, interviews, interviewing people. Oh. Which is weird. Hi. What, what's going on? Nothing. Nothing like two straight guys on a black leather couch. Hi, -o. Hey, half my head's on straight. Hey, half my head. So what are the odds that Spinelli got to his train right now? How much time did he have? 15 minutes. That would have been tough. Can he make it a little wider, Ian? That's what they're asking. There you go. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Opinions on Corvette racing. <laughs> I'm impressed, but I feel bad for them this week. Fucking job, the guy. Corvette racing. They, they had it. Well, they were they were up there. Double the beat, everything. I think they beat themselves, and that's that's unfortunate. The number 01 Audi R18 is running very fast. That's the cord of what everyone is saying. The one ultra? The one? It's running 27.2 on the last lap. Whoa, here we go. The number four Audi Ultra just ran a 26.2. Fastest lap yet. Last lap, fastest ever. Rock and Feller in the car. Faster than the two hybrids, Etron Quattros. He is two laps back behind Christensen, Mr. Lamont. Look at that. That's fast the fastest one of the day. Fastest lap of the day. Oh, uh, We're talking about automotive journalists we like. Yep. Uh, the commenters want to know what we're uh, whispering about. I was saying how much I enjoy Orlo's writing and Hard Agree, who is now editor in chief of Jalopnik. Yep. And of course, Jack Baruth over at Truth About Cars, who's a genius. And um, I'm a big fan, even though he comes over and yells at our commenters all the time. But you know, honesty is the best policy. And you know, uh, Baruth wrote a nasty here, critique of my book five years ago, which was so good and brilliant. I called him up, we became friends. <laughs> and he told me I should get on the track a little bit, and he was right. And because of him, I went off and did lemons. So it's good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he used to do really great writing for, um, what was that site called? Um, uh, Lieberman wrote for for like 10 days. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah? Well, the commenters were saying they heard everything we said. Thankfully, it was all cool. <laughs> that is good. Yeah. I'm happy about that. <laughs> um, I'm blanking on whatever site it was, but uh, he reposted all of his stuff on uh, Truth About Cars. Um, what 
what do they call avoidable contacts. Those are all yeah, good stuff. His old stuff's great. I think he's the, the this, this generation's AK set right. And if you don't know who AK set right is, go on look. LJK set right. Whatever. <laughs> uh, if you don't know who set right is, look up his book. Um, uh, he drive on. Really likes that guy. Yeah, Drive On's very expensive, out of print, and really, it's a dense read, but it's but a really great read. available at the New York Public Library. Check it out. Great stuff. Uh, while uh, Leo and Jeff are catching up, and yes, you're all right, Leo never sleeps, and he's unbelievable. He should be doing Lamar himself driving. Uh, how do you get a job at Drive? And I'm asked this question a lot, and the answer would be, well, obviously, send a resume, uh, but most importantly, uh, send a, make, Bring money. make sure you've done something, like, really interesting where you have a skill or, you know, that you're willing to work a lot for not much money <laughs> and, or in my case, for many years for no money. But uh, an interesting true story is that I met JF five, six years ago at a car show and he was getting an engineering degree. He was in college and we became friends and I asked him to help me out uh, with a cross-country run and uh, never paid him a cent and made introduced him to some interesting people I knew and as a result, he was the one of the founding members, the original producer of Fast Lane Daily, and today JF is my boss. And it's it's just you know you never know what's going to happen. It's We're going to meet, warm in here. but yeah, it no, is warm. it's true. And you know it really pays a dusty to treat everybody <laughs> the same. You don't know who you're talking to, and they may do great things. And Josh Vitsa, who's doing tech and is a, a part of the Drive team, later um, he was Josh, uh, JF's uh, high school friend. Uh, Josh went on to become uh, my an employee of mine become the Polizzi webmaster, designer of our clothes, and a great friend. And um, and now is part of the drive team as well, and another project. So, Thank you. I mean, and, you know, and that's... Um, that was some nice words. You know, it's all true. Thank you. Um, Spinelli, in fact, the crazy thing is Spinelli came to my house six years ago. I didn't know who he was, and he said he really wanted to start a site called Jalopnik. <laughs> and I'm like, you're nuts, but I, hey, good for you. And he did. Yep. So, here we are. You knew Spinelli before Jalopnik. Yes. It's insane. He was writing for music with I don't know what he was doing. Uh, he looked exactly the same. <laughs> and well, um, fastest time just got trumped by Duval. Duval was. Are you talking about Duval's three twenty five? I don't know. Rockenfeld. Oh, are they going at it? He's gone. Uh, uh, yes, I'm talking about uh, Duval at the three twenty five seven. Sorry. No, no. Uh, three twenty five six. Three twenty five six. So the ultras now have fastest laps above the e-trons. There, it is all, this is all uh, it's engine mapping at this point, right? Yeah, and I also am waiting for the uh, vanity lap from the e-trons before the race is over. You know how yeah. Vettel always turns that fastest yeah. lap right at the end? Well, you, you know oh, they all have, they the have, fastest they, lap at the end of they have different, they all have different engine maps and fuel maps and whatnot, and you know, they don't get to the fastest bit until the very end of the race, they don't push the limits of the mm -hmm. luck. And uh, again, I'm sorry to interrupt, no, no. but Duval is chasing down the Rebellion to get the last out in, in P4. Oh, they got one more lap to catch him? No, the Rebellion is uh, it's uh, going to start pulling out um, oh, probably 12 second faster I'm laps. sorry, it's it's the fantasy comment from our, our Jalopnik friend. Well, what I was going to say about the Ultras being faster now, you were alluding to earlier about new technologies. You know, two things are happening with the e-tron and the new technologies. A, the Audi is learning exactly how to deploy them and additionally, they have to learn how to deploy them within the restrictions. Uh -huh. There's two conflicting dynamics running simultaneous with the prior gen car where they already know exactly how to run it. Yeah. And you know, the restrictions and the technology uh, both, uh, it's not one variable, it's two variables plus uh, stress. So, you know, it's... Um, stress, uh, technical it's, stress it's like, or stress on the driver? Uh, both. Yeah. And okay. of course, it's, it's similar to saying you're on a diet, which I've been on for years, and eating aggressively and enjoying it, and then feeling guiltless and being a hypocrite, which is on a whole other topic. But uh, uh, there's a lot of questions about 3207, which I don't really want to talk about well, because I want to do race coverage. Lindsay wanna... Chen is watching now. Old Next to Network's Fastlane Daily. Oh, well, Hi, shout Lindsay out to Lindsay Chen. Chen. Um, the answer to 3207 is that although I own a, major a, a strong minority, I don't control it. Really? And I'm disappointed and frustrated in it not having come out. But there will be big news soon, and it's not what it's not an announcement that's coming out, but it is an announcement that will be entertaining for everyone who would like to see it. Um, everyone in this office has pretty much seen it, and JF in fact edited a recent version. Uh, but I can tell you this: when it does come out, it will be awesome. Uh, if only I didn't have to struggle with mm, 
trying to get it to come out, which is not up to me. Uh, and if it was, it would be already. I've watched it. It's great. By the way, anyone who, who's wanting to get more technical info, um, the place to go is definitely Race Car Engineering. Uh, that's racecar-engineering.com. You can do a slash Lamar, but there's a tab. We'll show right up. Some of this stuff is, uh, you know, you have to pay to get to it, but uh, it's a good, good starting point to see interesting stuff on the technical side. I have a question for Leo, which uh, I'm going to ask because of a question asked of me. Uh, I, one of the commenters is asking whether my record cross country is beatable, 31 hours, 4 minutes. And I'm going to turn that question to Leo in a different way. Uh, before I went to break the cross country record, I read a book called The Perfect Mile about the struggle for decades for a runner to break the 4 minute mile. And for many years it was considered impossible to break the 5 minute mile. Then it was 4. Roger Bannister, and you should Google him if you don't know who he is, broke that record. And after he broke it, hundreds of people broke it. He said it was a psychological barrier. Mm -hmm. But there was, tech I wouldn't say technology, but there was physical training of a different sort was required to break it. Different from what Olympic athletes were doing for years. In Le Mans, obviously over time, we're seeing the record laps come down. Is there a wall, be at, was there ever a wall that engineers felt could not be crossed? And, or, and is the, and whatever the, obviously, I don't know if there was one, but is there a wall that in the future can never be crossed? So the best way I can answer that is, is two pieces. One, I have a feeling that engineers never think in terms of limitations. They always think in terms of what if. So I'm not sure they think of, of walls. Um, hell, they look at rules as challenges, not as a limitation. And I hate to do it with a personal example, but in terms of driving, I, I will tell you this. Uh, again, I'm disclaiming, I don't pretend to be a great racer. But there were times when I was on track, and to find the limits of a corner, I would get behind the acknowledged fast guy. And once I could physically, visually see that car go through that corner at speed and follow them through, I passed that mental wall of, OK, this is capable to do it this quick in this gear breaking, turning in this hard. And whether it was me not having the confidence in the ground effects technology, or not having the imagination, or not having the, the ignorance or confidence to go that fast, once I saw it done, the wall was broken. And then it was easy to not only do that speed, but push and go faster. That's the only thing that comes to mind from your question. OK, well, that's a good answer. Um, I mean, it seems to me that with the restrictions that evolve over time, that the ultimate limit, whatever it is, we're nowhere near close to it. Because it's both physical, human body, as well as the cars. And well, well look, at the F, look at the F1 cars as, as the example. Adrian Newey, for, for decades, has always found a way to find more speed in the next design and, and, and push performance that much farther. Whether it's a certain dynamic, or whether it's an overall lap time, or higher Gs in cornering. All of it seems to be possible in their minds. And uh, engineering is a mathematical exercise anyway, so I'm sure if they crunch the numbers and come up with a creative idea, they can find a way to move that bar. Will, <laughs> I, I, I know the answer, but I want to hear it from someone who knows more than I do. No, no, no. Stop saying that. Will there be? I mean, obviously, there are limitations on, on, on movable arrow, obviously. Will, how long before we see a race series of literally, the, the, a military has RPVs and remotely controlled aircraft and drones. How long before the human body cannot withstand the forces that a car is capable of, before re, there is a race series of, they're, they're piloted, but remotely? I think other things, well, besides RC racing. Well, no, but I mean, you know, a full-size car series are remotely piloted cars and where the human body is taken out of the equation. So for me, for me, there would have to be something happen in civilization to negate the importance of humanity. Because right now, I think for all the technology, people still think of racing Got as a car. human experience. It's the driver not the car, the car is the tool to do these things. To take the driver out of the equation, I think you lose something, and as much as it sounds dark, I think that danger and risk is part of the allure of racing. And it's part of what attracts certain gentlemen drivers to it 
know feeling full well that the risk of death makes them attract to women who would not otherwise ever speak to them. That's one way to put it. But let's move on. Uh, speaking of moving on, <laughs> the inevitable has happened. What? Oh, the pass right there? Yeah. There you uh, go. You're watching it now. Here we go. The number three out. Oh! Don't do it. Has gone past no. The, no. The, the, the subtle golf clap. No. Time to go back to sleep. That's right. No, not uh, my rebellion. No. There we go. Nick Heidfeld, he was an awesome dude and has an amazing man bag. I have a nomination for the new best comment of, this, of the show. How long before Alex spins out of orbit and collects a sun? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And then the second best comment, Alex, that'll happen when they put guns in F1 cars. <laughs> so now where are we in terms of what Audi has to do next to get one, two, three, four, five? They'll say, okay, guys, go at it. Yeah. Who's going 240? <laughs> Wait, what do you mean one, two, three, four, five? They have, they have five cars. One, two, three, four. I'm sorry. They already oh. are one, two, three, four. Oh, so they've got all, <laughs> that's right. They've got all their cars <laughs> in the league. Yeah, I love our commenters. Wow, what? Why, why am I missing? they're just they're just they're just wonderful. They're great. Yeah. So Audi, they can't really. What do they do? They've got their Le Mans winner from last year in P1. They've got Mr. Le Mans, Tom Christensen in P2. They've got their DTM. I don't know what you call them. They're, they have his. They have their DTM champion, Rock and Power in third, and Duval in fourth. I actually think this is going to be a real test of the, the ethic of this team. Do they hold, do they hold station? Wow, look at this. That's Park sad. Ferme for broken cars. <laughs> I never understood why they park all the cars out away from everyone. I, 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 I'd have to ask. I couldn't tell you either. I recognize that last year. They put them all in the same spot. They wouldn't let the team stake their cars. <laughs> and speed is back to their typical crap. Alex, why did so you I, buy half-shell toes uh, and not full-shell toes? Uh, Those are limited editions, by the way. Um, I, I fractured my ankle. I needed to wear something that was comfortable. And I've had these for almost 20 years. All right. Okay. So uh, I, I guess I want to ask the group here and the, and the viewers. Audi has their cars in top four positions. The two e-tron Quattros are one and two. They're very happy right now. Are they going to, I know we would all want them to race, but if you were running the team, yeah. would you hold station? Or would this be a, a, a signature moment for the, the ethic of the team and you'd let them race trusting that the drivers won't screw this up you need that. You need one Etron Quattro to win. Okay. For the press byline. Right. For the headline, rather. So, what do you think the spirit of the team is? So the what? Lauder. Do you want to get paid the, no, next no, no. year? No, 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 no. So who's the closest right now? Lauder to Christensen. Yeah, pretty much. They'll let those two just chill out. I think the battle will be between. The two ultras, if Rock and Fowers maybe, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <gasps> well, they'll have Rock and Fowler and Christensen go at it. Yeah, so you've got one successive lap from P1 to the P2 e-tron. Yeah. And with pit stops, they've been kind of sneaking themselves onto the same lap, yep. kind of. Yep. And then you've got another lap back. We have a fire ultra. in pit lane, fire in pit lane. Fire on fire. Oh, my gosh. Number Sorry. 61. Stop cheering for stuff like that. Uh. Okay. No, no, no. It's just a. Uh, you, really? Should I cool it? The audience's respect is yours to lose or fire love. Fire on fire, <laughs> not the fire actual. To lose it. Um, I, I guess it was Driver's a brake okay. brake okay. rotor or a brake disc fire. Yeah. So I'm 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 still looking for the answer. Would you let the Audis race, or are no. they just going to run in, in succession? Definitely not. Let them succession. Race. Really? It's theirs to lose. They've done this before. They yep. know better. It's a corporate decision. Each yep. run is the future yep. of the company strategically road yeah, cars. They're, they're not kidding around. This is, they've invested so much into this program. They have to get the head on. Audi hybrid sweeps podium Le Mans. Guess what we'll see in the dealerships in four months? 
e-tron r10 and does that depress you that racing just became really really corporate not at all no, they're here for a reason some racing they made Le Mans interesting and improved the road cars for the people who want better fuel economy, which is better for everybody. The number one Audi is in. We have Lauder out. Not sure who's getting into the car. Got to wait until he plugs in his helmet. Everyone is asking for you to destroy the set again. Please do not. And we're not asking for you to do that. <laughs> right let now. Him, let him race to see if the e-tron is worth it. It's Look an emotional that. call. It's not going to happen. Screen. Oh, there was a big yeah, enough yeah. fire. Save, save the Italias. New that, shirt. That's the wall trip car. Their posts. Who's looking for the wow, that is more than a brake fire. That was intense. Yeah. That is... That's an ego fire. That's a rubber on front. Brian Vickers, the ex NASCAR guy. Well, Ferrari again pulls out a demonstration of their fire suppression technology. No, the wrong end of the that car is the, on fire. That was the wall chip racing yeah. car. Someone's getting a lead tonight. And wall trip did a partnership with whom here? With A, of course. Uh, that fire is so bad, it looks like a Lamborghini spec series in Eastern Europe. <laughs> <laughs> angry Uncle Leo. Did I, I get angry? That bad since what? I was they're last actually going to push the Ferrari, Ferrari back to the pistol and try to fix it. Because I think, the, I think the, the tire caught on fire. Yeah. Probably a lot of clag in there. Oh, he actually got it running again. Wow. I don't know how he's going to stop. He's like, barely, he's like Berlusconi on the way to a bunga bunga party. Look Nothing can stop him. <laughs> Whoa, okay. so oh, someone the, just the said that. The tire burned off. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Really. That is gnarly. That is pretty cool, though. You must admit. Yep. No, Very it's awesome. Cool. Look at that. If you're not sure what we're watching, we're watching the speed coverage uh, of the uh, formerly on fire front left smoke out Watch barbecue crazy. party in the Ferrari pit, which is literally a Ferrari pit. Yeah, if you're looking for good streams, there's always some. Um, uh, there's a couple good links on. I, I was gonna say here's some, here's a brilliant I move. Yeah. I think there are rules against that. If something's on fire, oh, awesome 200 frames per second of the wall trip racing. <laughs> they should actually add, add a flame a flame uh, gun, you know, in front of the wheels. So when you're passing and winning, you can yeah. create, these like, shots a, are amazing. That is actually fantastic. So the, the pit lane was not on fire. It was the car on fire, its tire coming into pit lane. All right, someone's oh going to take God. this footage and make some pretty amazing stuff. I'm downloading There's going to be I'm some good footage this later and from make this. A, a friggin' amazing, probably not legally usable clip. Audi number one is still in pit lane. If I was about to win, I would just have a little explosive set my car on fire as I arrived. Looks at the like the uh, front end of that car is pretty much intact. They just, just jump out on the balls on. The car blows up. Get that wheel out of there. And Justin Bell is currently interviewing Ryan Vickers. Is that Jason Bordeaux? So give, uh, what's the Brian Vickers story? Named after the machine gun manufacturer from World War I in England, his career in racing has now become legend. That's awesome footage. Next year's livery is just gonna be flames. Much cooler that way. Well, while you guys are silently watching the interview with him, <laughs> let Sorry. me ask another. I'm going to ask a question which makes no sense, but will entertain those as tired as I am. 
How long before there is a series in a third world country not sanctioned by the ACO that resembles Spy Hunter? What? <laughs> okay, because I would totally watch that. <laughs> like An oil slicks. Oil slicks, mean. smoke, you know, I mean, un unsanctioned, Good like, night, combat racing series. Just gave me death <laughs> because I'd watch like that. Death race. Yeah, it'd be like Death Race, but without no guns, no projectile weapons. I would not watch that. Because yesterday I had a great idea for uh, an animal fighting show, which would be taxidermy <laughs> oh. pit fighting. No, taxidermy pit fighting cool with like RC dogs. Oh my god, no, 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 you make like robot dogs. <laughs> yeah, taxi, tax, tax, <laughs> tax apocalypse. No, because you saw, you saw the cat copter, right? Yeah, of course. So I mean, you have like a robot exactly. taxidermy. Uh, my flamethrowing German Shepherd would be unbeatable. <laughs> would so be, for the person. So horrifying these would be. Like, you know, what do they call it? The Look at the, just the opening, the closing and opening distances that were uh, in the speed uh, feed yeah, we just saw. For the people asking, there's six hours, 58 minutes left, seven hours. And the, the, the uh, fans have spoken. Uh, dude, I would watch a Spy Hunter combat racing series right now. I would not. Too fake. That's um, missing the break zone. But yeah, you know the Uncanny Valley? That would be way in the there. Un, the Uncanny Chicane. <laughs> oh my god. That's my next book. Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love the helicopter shots. It's, um, it's just a shame they don't have the NASCAR type overlay with the data. Like we were talking about you are earlier. So correct. They it's really true. need those overlays. It's true. I mean, in Europe, I had friends in England, and I went to watch F1 there, and the guy, uh, you know, a few years ago, Leo, I'm sure you've seen it. F1 had, a, for a couple of years, and I think it went away, a very expensive subscription service with all kinds of feeds and, and content, and uh, it was really great. Um, really? I didn't know that. Ahead of its time. And it went away. It was too expensive to run, too expensive to subscribe, and it was just a mess. Even for F1? Yeah. So good luck to to number one off track. Oh my god. Really? Uh, yeah. Duvall just said another oh, fast lap, 320 through 25.1. <laughs> so the number one Audi is off track. We're trying to figure out what just happened. Duvall in fourth is fast. Fast lap. Up. Number one's hit a uh, contact with a Back in tire, uh, contact into Mulsanne Corner. Contact into Mulsanne Corner. With a car? With a Corvette. Oh, um, no, 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 a Corvette was stuck, was in the middle of the road. Um, the Audi went into the kitty litter to avoid it. Back end tap tire wall. He's coming into the pits. <sighs> so that will give Tom Christensen Here we go. the lead. Six okay. hours, fifty-five minutes remaining. Okay, this could be interesting. Christensen to get us to get on. Uh, Ninth for him, third for McNish. Yeah, McNish was the one that was struggling to get him for many years. Yeah. Uh, one of the commenters just highlighted that the F1 Sky F1 package ran twelve hundred pounds. That is a lot. I believe it. You get a personal letter from Bernie on that one. Yeah, saying. Thank you. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> 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 yeah, just laughing. Yeah. Just and laughing there goes again. another tire. Tires on the loose. What car is that? Uh, to comment to the life perfect, I've done the Baja 1000, and although it is nuts, uh, it's um, it's not quite. It's not even. It's not even close to the kind of uh, violence that I would be prepared to pay for and watch. <laughs> Four Corvette in the pits. Oh God! Here we go. Here. Oh no no no! Porsche curves. He just. Oh. Oh. That looks a lot like Davison. Uh, is, and the Peugeot. Uh, he, 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 lucky it's just a tap. He could have been much away. worse. Oh, it could have been totally much worse. So wait a minute. So the port, the the Audi did not go off. No no, there was another incident. Wow. All right. Question for Leo again. Uh, the technology of, um, all right, so you have runoff areas, you have gravel, yep. and then you have tire walls. Yep. Uh, obviously, the leap from no tire walls to tire walls was a big one and a good one. But certainly, there must be something beyond tire walls. Because you saw that uh, the Davidson crash, you know, 
The, it, the tire wall was backed up by... Uh, there's, oh, there's, there it is. There's. Hold on, hold on. Ooh. Tap the back end. So the Larbra spun Mulsanne corner, it looks like. Oh, he took pieces off the car. Yep. Oh, a lot of pieces. So he's going to be in pit lane. Uh, so, um, Alex, to answer your question, actually, What's the next generation? Look at, look at what's at Daytona. Look at all the ovals. They've got the foam. Oh, why isn't that here? They've, they've, well, Money. it's uh, on the ovals. They, they, they have the, they have the, the concrete barrier, foam pieces, then the soft. Oh, the safer foam. barrier? Yeah. And then the other part to that, and, and it, it has to do with having the available real estate, the safest thing is just paving the runoff area and letting the tires do their scrub work. off speed and slow the car down and have enough room to do it. Up. Oh, yep. Okay, everyone. We are at 2:05, 2:07 local time in New York. We need to take a 60-second break. Stick with us. We're going into a um, a hybrid zone to recharge. Yep. How about that bad joke? <laughs>